Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku wasn't sarcastic when meeting Sato Mio. If you guys enjoy this movie comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist so let's start the video. Izuku snorts as he watches a villain childishly stick his tongue out at a small time hero, causing the other to scowl and go to attack. A long yawn escapes his mouth, and he has to blink away the tears brought to his eyes. The school bell rings, and he turns his phone off, slipping it into his pocket. He rolls his shoulders back a few times before bringing his arms onto his desk, propping an arm up and placing his chin on his left hand. Woo, good morning, everybody. Ready to start the day. Present Mike slips into the classroom with his usual excited greeting, while Izuku trails his eyes over to his right where one of his classmates sleepily rubbed his own eyes, raising from his hunched-over position. He notes that it seems he isn't the only one not getting a full night's rest lately. Though it seems this guy always has bags under his eyes. Maybe it's a new look. I must look stylish myself then. He lets an amused huff and returns his attention to his homeroom teacher, twisting a green curl with a finger. Whenever present Mike reaches his name on the roster, he answers with a lazy here, slowly spinning his mechanical pencil in his right hand. Unfortunately, he hasn't practiced enough for his movement to not be stiff and awkward, but it's an easy thing to lose attention on regardless. Soon, roll call is over, and present Mike is reassuring the students that the huge clash at the school's training facility, USJ, is not something to be concerned over, and that there shouldn't be any future villain attacks that will take place on the main building. He also mentions how if anyone is feeling any sort of anxiety or panic, they are free to visit UA as counselor, hound dog, or even come to him during the lunch break or after school if they feel comfortable doing so. Us pros are gonna work hard to keep you all safe, so there's nothing you need to worry about. His grin dramatically falls, a grim expression replacing it. Actually, there is. The class of teenagers tense up, though Izuku just narrows his eyes, not finding any reason to start getting nervous just yet. You guys need to worry about the UA. As sports festival, he beams like the sun. And those who were worrying had relaxed, some even smiled back almost like sunflowers, as he goes on about the advantages of getting on the podium. Izuku decides to peek over at the panda cosplaying classmate again, and even he's showing a bit of excitement, his half-lidded purple eyes shining in hope and determination. As for Izuku, he could care less about the festival. He isn't aiming for the hero course, he didn't have any desire to become a pro hero, at least not anymore. All he needs is to graduate and hopefully get into college, so he could somehow get a better job than the one he has at a fast food restaurant. If he has a little side business of helping people with small-time things, who cares? It's not like he has any good reputation at school. If he did, he probably wouldn't be all alone and friendless. People would probably stop looking at his quirkless status before looking at who he is. It's a good thing none of his classmates know about that. He doesn't want to add any type of bullying to the pitiful mixture, even if you ache. Claims that they have a strict policy against it. Being quirkless isn't a fun characteristic to live with. In fact, it is terrible. All because of not having something that 80% of the population has. His former friend decided to bully and basically ostracize him. All because of not having a quirk. Almost everyone that found out, through him or other means, either hated or pitied him. All because he was quirkless. He couldn't save his mother from a stupid villain. But what can he, or anyone, do? Genetics is genetics. Not like anyone can change it so easily. He's lucky that he is somehow able to get away with hiding his defect away from those at work. Quirkless people are often pushed aside for someone with a quirk, leaving many without jobs or college degrees. After all, how could they let someone without a quirk take the place of someone with one? Can't waste potential, right? He shakes his head, sighing, instead of getting lost into thinking about quirks. He thinks about his recent client, an old woman by the name of Sato Mio. One of her friends had shared the news of a kind young teenager who went and found her dog for a fair price, and she came with the quest of looking for her missing cat. Imagine her face when she met a tired, sarcastic teen who asked her to, come into my office. Yes, the restroom. He took the job, for the same fair price as the Ponchai case. And now, after school, he has a calico to search for. He thinks about the places the lost pet could be, the possibility that someone else already found the cat and was waiting for missing pet posters to go up before claiming the cat for themselves. The first thing he will do after school is print posters with the cat's picture and put them up after doing a quick search. If the cat wasn't in any easy or obvious places, then he couldn't find her without a bit of help from neighbors. It was the same process as he did with the angry Ponchai, and the same process he's done for past animals and will continue to use for future ones. He pinches the bridge of his nose, present Mike's loud voice and his running thoughts bringing an irritating headache. He feels the sun shining down on him, 
trying to lull him to a doze, perhaps even a full-on nap, and he lets it, setting his head down in his arms. It's not like his teacher is explaining anything he was interested in, and there is nothing wrong with getting a small nap in, was there? He feels someone's eyes on him, but he brushes the attention off, nestling into his arms more and breathing in deeply through his nose before exhaling, feeling his whole body intense. It is going to be a long day. He stretches, yawning widely. He feels slightly rested, somehow being allowed to sleep through all his classes until lunch. No one tried to wake him up. It's almost like his teachers saw how dark the bags were under his eyes and didn't want to get in the way of lightening them, even just a bit. Jokes on them, they're as dark as his soul, meaning they're never going away. He stands from his desk and takes note of how his sleepy classmate is sleeping once again. His face buried into his arms. Deciding to be nice, Izuku pokes his shoulder a few times, effectively waking him up. The purple-haired guy yawns, his eyes slowly becoming focused and quickly noticing Izuku standing beside him. Izuku tilts his head, you wouldn't know how to find a lost cat. He mostly means the question as a joke, to confuse the guy really, but is open to any suggestions. What can he say? Mr. Sleepy looks to be a cat person. You woke me up to ask how to find a cat. Mr. Sleepy groans, rubbing his face in annoyance. He sets his gaze on the green-haired boy, almost glaring. Nah, Izuku chuckles, shaking his head. He doesn't blame the other for being a little pissed. Most people don't like being woken up for no good reason. Figured you wouldn't want to miss out on lunch. Lunch Rush's food is pretty good. Mr. Sleepy lets up on his irritation slightly, muttering a thanks. He brings a hand to rub the back of his neck, averting his eyes. So, what's your name? I'm Midoriya Izuku. Izuku figures he could try to be polite. The other boy didn't seem to talk to their other classmates, unlike the others in this class, which is why Izuku was slightly curious by him. Humans are naturally social creatures, and this guy seems to be the complete opposite. In fact, it was almost like he was purposely distancing himself from everyone. Izuku wouldn't be surprised if he was though, seeing as how he's not doing any better. I'm not here to make friends. That explains it. I don't remember saying that I wanted to be your friend. Izuku raises a brow before showing a harmless smile. All I asked for was your name. The teen sets another stare on him for a few awkward seconds. Then he averts his eyes again and settles with, Shinsu. Nice to meet you, Shinsu. Izuku allows his smile to widen a bit before moving on, following the last few students out of the classroom and down the hall to the large cafeteria. He angles his head down, his long, curly hair curtaining the front of his face, when he sees All Might walk out of the teacher's lounge with his typical grin on his face. He mostly likely doesn't know that Izuku made it into UA. But he didn't want to take any chances. He is the last person he wants to talk to. He continues down the hall, passing students from all different courses, including a few from 1A and 1B. He makes it to the lunchroom, but instead of getting an oh-so-delicious lunch from Lunch Rush, he goes straight to a deserted table. He can have all the cold French fries and chicken nuggets he wants when he goes to his shift this evening. He always makes sure his hours fall in line with the curfew set out for minors, allowing himself time to get back to his tiny apartment before then. He brings his phone out unlocking it, when he hears the soft sound of a tray being set down. When he looks up, he sees an apathetic male with red and white hair sitting as far away as possible from him. He shrugs before returning to his phone. He didn't really care as long as he doesn't try to start a conversation with him, he wasn't in the mood for one. He scrolls through Twitter, giving a few small smiles to the memes that pop up here and now, even liking a few. He doesn't bother sharing any tweets, seeing as how the few followers he has were random people that he didn't know nor care about. He's never posted about anything, only using his account for memes and to keep up with any news about heroes and villains that is recent, such as the newly debuted League of Villains, or how Endeavor just keeps fucking up. As he's scrolling, he is tapped on the shoulder, causing him to move his eyes away to find one of his classmates looking down at him. He silently inhales before asking, do you need something? The classmate eyes the other male at the opposite end of the table before Loli saying, at the end of school, all of one degrees Celsius is gonna block 1A's doorway just like what other classes in our year are gonna do. And why is that the plan? Izuku sighs, feeling even more tired and doesn't bother hiding it. To declare war, he replies simply, like that answers everything, before adding, you better be there, Midoriya. He walks off, leaving Izuku before he could get another word out. Izuku drops his head into his arms and groans, I have better things to do. He lifts his head up, setting his gaze upon the teen eating his soba quietly. Don't know if you heard that, but I'd get out of your classroom as fast as possible. That is, if you want to avoid getting trapped by a bunch of students for a while. The male doesn't say anything, barely acknowledging Izuku's poor existence, while Izuku goes back to scrolling through his feed until lunch ends. He stands up, putting his phone away and pushing in his chair. He follows the mass of students exiting the room, keeping at the back while attempting to run a hand through the mess he calls his hair. Eventually, he makes it out and is casually walking down the hall, many students hurrying past him. 
There was a few minutes to the bell, and if Izuku cared enough, he'd be speed walking to class too. However, he didn't care, therefore he was taking his sweet time to get back to 1 degrees Celsius. He makes it to the classroom at the same time that the bell rings, shuffling inside and heading to his desk with a yawn. He wonders if he can get away with sleeping in class again. He crosses his arms, putting his head down. Won't know if I don't try, I guess. The next time he wakes up, he's being woken up by a finger poke him. He scrunches up his face before reluctantly rising from his desk. He blearily looks up to see Shinsu, blinking to clear his eyes. Rubbing them when blinking doesn't work, he asks. Is it time to summon the demon that will end my suffering? If not, I might just cry. He hears a snort, and with clearer vision, he looks at Shinsu. Shinsu is already angled away from Izuku, turning to the door. School's over. If you're gonna come to 1A, you better get up. Are you going, Shinsu? Izuku stands, curious, seeing the male give a tiny nod. He decides to follow, speeding up his pace to match the long strides of his classmate. He doesn't talk to Shinsu any further, instead thinking about the cat. More specifically, he was trying to recall what the cat's name was. Is it Yui? No, Yoko. Maybe Yuki. I can't believe I forgot. Jeez. He pulls out his phone, pulling up a picture of the cat. He stares at her, random names running through his brain, before he looks at Shinsu. If you had a calico cat, what would you name her? Shinsu looks at him strangely, furrowing his eyebrows. Why? Izuku shows him the picture. Shinsu squints, looking at something, before requesting, Can I see your phone? Izuku sets his phone in Shinsu's waiting hand, to which the male zooms in the picture. Her name is Yuka. He hands back the phone before narrowing his eyes. Strange that you don't know the cat's name, considering she's on your phone. You can't tell me that you don't save cute cat pictures from the internet on your phone. Only heartless monsters don't. Shinsu only deadpans, and he seems to even speed up slightly. Okay, okay, Izuku attempts to placate. She's not mine. Izuku simply explains, before they see a large crowd of students blocking the doors to what is most likely 1A's classroom. Shinsu pushes past the students, and Izuku follows, using his smaller stature to snake between people. He could hear a familiar voice shout, It's pointless to try, so why don't you just fuck off, you got a mop. Izuku could recognize that voice anywhere, seeing as how he heard it continuously in the past years. He cringes into himself but knows it only looks like he's grimacing. I came to see what you kids are made of, true, but I didn't think you'd be this arrogant. Izuku snorts at Shinsu's words, keeping himself hidden behind him. Probably just Kakin, to be honest. Doubt the other people in there were allowed to bully whoever they saw as weak. I'm a bit disillusioned. So that's it, huh? Shinsu rubs a hand against his neck, and Izuku concludes as a nervous tick. There's lots of kids who wind up in the general education department or other departments because they failed the heroics one. His tone is slightly bitter, like resigned resentment and hurt being drudged up again. Did you know that? And based on the results of the sports festival, people can be even come under review to be transferred to heroics, and the reverse is also a possible outcome. Izuku smirks, Shinsu was gaining his interest, and whether that was a good or bad thing, no one would know. Scoping out the competition, if nothing else, a general ed kid like me is thinking, Hey, why don't I try pulling the rug out from under those heroics kids while they're on their high horses? Consider it a declaration of war. Shinsu turns and walks off, leaving Izuku to be seen by those at the door of Wane. Izuku could see Bakugu tense and then scowl. But before he could say anything, Izuku gives a pretend smile and moves away, being swallowed in the crowd of students as one from 1B shouts. He shoves his hands into his pockets. I have a cat to look for. He smirks, green eyes full of amusement. Yuka, here I come. Izuku staples the last of the missing pet posters with a yawn. He had looked in every place he thought a cat would be but came up empty, meaning he had to print out the flyers at a local convenience store and hang a bunch up. He slips his obnoxiously colored backpack off, opening it and setting the stapler inside, quickly re-zipping the bag after. He puts it back on, turning to head back down the neighborhood. He had to go to his apartment so he could change into his work uniform, but stops when he sees Shinsu staring at him with slight confusion and suspicion. He was already dressed in casual clothing rather than the stiff uniform that Yue, besides, wearing a light blue sweatshirt and dark jeans, didn't know I had an assassin after me, cared to tell who placed the head on me. Izuku tilts his head, tapping his chin. Then he places his fist in the palm of his other hand, hitting it lightly with realization. Actually, I bet I know. Mrs. Suzuki has been eyeballing me ever since I found and gave her daughter's wallet at the police station. Wonder where she got the funds to do this. Shinsu stares at him for a moment before he huffs, shaking his head. Midoriya, you are strange. Izuku blinks. You're not the first to tell me that. Not surprised. Though I am confused why you're hanging up flyers about a missing cat, considering she apparently isn't yours. Ah, Izuku makes a sound of understanding. It's a thing I do. 
I go around finding lost things and pets, along with the few intimidation cases. Shinsu repeats, quirking a brow, intimidation cases, bullies, around the age of 7 to 10. Uh, Shinsu grunts. Izuku pulls out his phone, checking the time. Looks like I gotta go, else I'm gonna be late for my job. Job. Shinsu's eyebrows furrow, and he seems to frown. You already have a job. You know, for someone not looking for friends, you're asking a lot of questions. Izuku smiles in amusement while Shinsu's eyes widen. I have to make a stop at my apartment, but you're free to follow me. He starts walking, going past the purple-haired boy. That is, if you want your questions answered. Is your curiosity strong enough, Shinsu? He mentally laughs at the his weird and cryptic question, imagining the confusion the other must be feeling. He strolls down the street, softly humming the tune of an opening from a random anime he had watched when he couldn't fall asleep. His apartment wasn't too far from Mrs. Sato's neighborhood, so the awkward walk didn't last long, but it was still uncomfortable to go through. Shinsu follows Izuku up the stairs to his crummy apartment, the four-story building being far from appealing but cheap enough to live in with just a small part-time job. Izuku shoves a hand into his pocket, bringing out a key attached to a ring and unlocking the door to his place. He turns the doorknob, pushing open the door, and beckons his new visitor with a passive smile. He kicks his shoes off, and he slips his backpack from his shoulders and tosses it onto the ragged couch. He heads over to his bedroom, calling out to behind him, hang out until I get changed. Won't be long. He makes sure to shut the door after he goes in, and heads straight to his closet where his uniform shirt was on a red hanger while a white undershirt hung on a yellow one. He takes the hangers and sets them on his bed, pulling off his pink shirt that has rose across it. He replaces it with the undershirt and dark blue polo, making sure to put on some more deodorant. He grabs a hair tie and brings his shoulder-length hair back, tying it into a mid-to-low ponytail. A few bunches of curls were left out to frame his slight tan face, and Izuku brushes a few behind his ear. He grabs the shirt he was wearing before and tosses it in his hamper. He pats his pants pockets to make sure he has his phone, key, and wallet. Once sure, he walks back out into the main room, where Shinsu is sitting on his couch, looking down at his phone. Already, Mr. Assassin. Izuku can't stop himself from smiling when he sees the teen jump, tensing up, before relaxing. Shinsu stands up from the couch, putting his phone into his pocket with an eyebrow raised. Not an assassin, last time I checked. Ah, yes, Izuku nods, expressing a faux realization. You wanna be a hero, so I've heard. Shinsu's face sets into a cold, bitter expression. You've heard correctly. He glares, and Izuku can see the walls the teen has built grow taller, stronger. Got a problem with it. Think I'd be better as a villain. Down, boy. Izuku shakes his head and chuckles, heading over to the door where his and Shinsu's shoes were tossed. You love to put words in people's mouth, don't you? First the friend thing, and now, the hero-villain thing. Izuku snorts, slipping his old shoes, the red color not as vivid as the first day he wore them. That was when his mother had bought them for his 14th birthday. Izuku sighs, tying the worn laces. He stands, waiting for Shinsu to quietly put his own shoes back on. He takes a deep breath, hoping he doesn't mess up his words with his lack of eloquence. Just so you know, not everyone thinks the same, even if it seems like it. I don't even know what your quirk is, nor do I give a shit. A quirk is only as good or bad as the user, I thought that was obvious. Shrugging, he opens the door. Anyway, I got a shift to get to, so if you're gonna follow me, hurry up. Shinsu doesn't say anything besides a mumbled apology as he passes the green hair boy to step out of the apartment, to which Izuku clicks his tongue in disapproval. No need to apologize, just remember what I said. Izuku shuts the door behind him, turning to swiftly lock it. He and his foster family have a deal. He can live by himself as long as he shows up for anything important. All he has to do is look happy for the family pictures, make sure he has a beautiful smile, or something bad may happen. Of course, he sometimes likes to show up to spend a bit of time around the younger children. The older kids don't particularly spend a lot of time around the house. Not that Izuku could blame them, but that also includes leaving the youngers three with the guardians. And sometimes, if he has enough money on him, he'll take them out for ice cream. He has a soft spot for children, screw him. And their foster mother is a delusional bitch. It is a miracle that they'd pass any type of checkups sent from the prefecture's ward. They also fortunately take care of any forms he gets, such as from school and his job, just so he stays out of their hair. At the beginning, when he arrived there and saw how messed up his new family was, he wanted to help them. There's nothing he can do now though. He walks down the hallway, an early to mid-spring breeze blowing, and Shinsu follows him, looking like a lost puppy having a small mental crisis. None of them say anything, and the sound of their feet meeting each metal stair was annoyingly loud. Izuku decides to hum again, something soft and relaxing. They don't speak all the way to plus ultra food. Izuku wipes the table with quick movement, knocking off any crumbs that were left with a dish rag, leaving them to be swept up later. He yawns, taking note of the time from the clock on the wall. 
It's past 8, leaving him with less than an hour. It's late, and a weekday, so not many people are eating inside of the restaurant, the majority most likely going through the drive through There are only a few tables taken, one specifically taken by a quiet, and mostly likely bored, Shinsu, who is scrolling through his phone with a blank expression. It's going slow, but there is always work to be done, or at least that's what Kawaguchi said before sending him out to clean the empty tables. The male always tells him to call him by his first name, but Izuku loves to piss people off with the pettiest things he can think of. Kawaguchi Michael is an older teen, though he is almost 20 years old, and he is way taller than Izuku, and maybe even the tallest out of all his present co-workers. He was in college, working on a degree that had something to do with history, and sometimes he'd come into his shift acting like a complete idiot. The blonde was blunt, on the thin line of being a dick, and he never sugarcoats anything. Izuku didn't have any problems with Kawaguchi, often inquiring about the stories he had from America, and the guy mostly argues with Nakajima about the stupidest of things. Of course, the arguments were never serious. Nakajima Yume is an adult who is be considered to be slightly emo. While she may act like a high idiot sometimes, the only drug she smokes is nicotine from the occasional cigarette she lights. The blue-haired woman was the person Izuku went to when he wants to have fun. If either had a bad day, neither spoke about it, the company was enough. Nakajima is smart, she just has her strange and weird moments, which often make Izuku laugh. For some reason, she likes to get Kawaguchi riled up, which explains the arguments they had, but if it ever got to be too much, she or Kawaguchi would apologize. They're good like that, though sometimes Yamamoto would have to mediate. Yamamoto Akari is the person in the group who keeps them from both voluntarily and involuntarily killing themselves. She is the only sane one among the evening employees, the one who mother hens and cares for them, which Izuku, along with Kawaguchi and Nakajima, is always grateful for, considering the fact that they get up to the stupidest activities. She was saving up for a small flower shop, based on her quirk, botany. Her quirk allows her to consciously touch any plant and learn any information about it, as well as its properties. Ah, quirks, something that Izuku loves and didn't have. Kawaguchi's quirk is called paralysis shock. If he touches someone, he could freeze all motor functions for around 5 minutes. He didn't get good traction because of it, mostly because of how weak it is, but Izuku believes that it is cool. Nakajima's quirk was really interesting, being called dream manipulation or dream planter as Izuku calls it. She could change a sleeping person's dreams by planting a good or bad seed, changing a nightmare into a good dream and vice versa. Sometimes, in the dead of night, Izuku wishes she was there to plant a good seed so he didn't have to relive the last memory he had of his mother. Izuku softly sings the English words of the song playing. Music, with clean lyrics, is allowed to be played in the restaurant, and the evening group took turns daily with who gets to play what. Today was Kawaguchi's turn. And he went with an old, popular artist, Sean Mendes, whose voice was way better than the mostly auto-tuned songs of today. There were a few artists and groups who could produce music without sounding like a robot, having the actual talent to do without. Izuku, could you bring another box of hero toys from the storage? I've ran out. Izuku breaks out of the song, calling back, got it, Yamamoto. Izuku, Izuku grimaces at her tone, got it, he amends, Akira. He ignores the fact that some of the patrons chuckle, including the indigo-headed student that he brought along, and makes his way to the storage room, going past the boxes of styrofoam cups and plastic straws. He lifts the brown box of children's toys, each a small figure of random popular heroes, such as the symbol of peace, all might, the fiery bastard, endeavor, and the fast burb, hawks, and carries it out of the room, kicking the door shut on his way out. He takes it over to where Akira was fixing the order of the waiting customer, setting it on a nearby table and swiftly opening. He grabs a random toy, absently noting it was a figure of Edshot, and hands it to Akira, who takes it with a smile, placing it inside of a kid's meal. Izuku moves the box under the table, so it was out of the way, and goes back to the customer area, a thrown glance telling him that he wasn't needed. Izuku continues to clean tables until his shift was over, the clock hitting 9, and the next employee already showing up for the last shift. He clocks out, snags a couple of wrapped burgers and a box of french fries, as well as a few napkins, and saunters over to Shinsu's table. The green-haired teen tosses a burger in front of Shinsu, gaining his attention, and sits down. He puts the box of french fries on the napkins, keeping the longer ones from touching the table. Izuku unwraps his burger, you want a drink, you gotta buy one yourself. He takes a bite out of it, which prompts Shinsu to unwrap his own and start eating it. Izuku uses his free hand to pull the hair tie out of his hair, ruffling his messy, but liberated, curls. After chewing and swallowing another bite, he reaches to take a fry. The two boys eat with an awkward silence, allowing the low-quality food to fill their stomachs. Finally, Shinsu speaks up, thanks. He averts his eyes, looking completely uncomfortable. For the food, he adds. Perks of the job, I guess, Izuku hums, bringing another fry to his mouth. 
Now, are we gonna talk about your angsty past? Or are we going to talk about the cat that's been mentioned multiple times today? Shinsu sighs, sounding slightly drained. The cat? Please. Got it. Izuku takes a deep breath. So, to get a little money on the side, I do little tasks for people. As I said earlier, most of them are to find lost pets, like poor, poor Yuka, or lost items, like Mrs. Suzuki's daughter's wallet. Sometimes a young, innocent boyo, like myself, needs another way to pay the bills. He goes for a joke. Didn't want to go down the path of underage prostitution, you know. He grins when Shinsu snorts, shaking his head. So, you already have a part-time job, and you have to pay bills. Most teens our age don't need to do that yet. Izuku shrugs, guess I'm not like most teens our age then, another thing to add to the list. Also, you haven't leveled up on friendship points yet, so no point in asking about my job and stuff. And from what you said earlier, it seems you won't ever get to find out, seeing as how you don't want any friends. Shinsu frowns slightly, looking down. I'll throw you a bone though. And quirkless, Shinsu winces. Seems he knows the treatment the few quirkless teens of their generation receives just for not having one special thing the majority did. Sorry, no need to apologize. I've been a dick to you this whole time. I've had worse. Another bone, unwanted, tossed. Shinsu changes the subject, weakly mumbling, the cat. Yuka, as I said, Yuka doesn't belong to me. She belongs to an old lady, Sato Mio, who's asked me to find her for a pretty good price. Unfortunately, the cat doesn't have a tag with Mrs. Sato's information on it, which is bad on her part, but can't really do anything about that now. I'm hoping that someone found her and is waiting for missing posters to go up, which is why you saw me putting them up. Izuku wipes his mouth and hands with a napkin, finished with his burger. If I don't find her, or really any pet I'm paid to look for, I refund the full price to the owner. Shinsu chews on a couple of fries, showing that he understood with a single nod. Izuku makes sure to grab the last three, shoving them into his mouth. He chews while he stands and gathers the trash, and Shinsu takes that as a sign to also stand, pushing his phone into his pocket. The taller boy follows the short as he tosses the trash into a trash can that was right beside the door. Izuku calls behind his shoulder, Good night, guys. A series of good nights and see you laters came in different pitches of voices, but all carrying the same fondness for one person, Izuku. It was clear that the evening works of this particular plus ultra food establishment were close, almost like a weird family. A slightly greasy and hardworking one, but a family nonetheless. The breeze from before has picked up, making the temperature a bit cool but bearable. It is strong enough to tangle its invisible fingers through Izuku's curls, bringing a few up into air gently. He and Shinsu make their way down the sidewalk, keeping to one side as to avoid the evening group of people going the opposite way. It will take around 10 to 15 minutes to walk to the station and the train would be showing up at half past nine, the ride lasting about 40 minutes. Luckily, while Izuku's phone is close to dying, he has a classmate to chat with, who just happens to get off at the same stop as him. Izuku yawns, stretching his arms towards the night sky as he turns from Shinsu to head down his street. He had already said a good night, and now he can't wait until he's able to step into the shower and then drop into bed. He shoves his hands into his pockets, rolling his shoulders. He yawns again. Suddenly, there's a shout, Midoriya. H.M. Izuku turns, quickly noticing Shinsu hurrying over to him. He was holding something, something slightly small, in his arm, and Izuku narrows his eyes. What? Shinsu makes it over to him, bringing his top hand down to show a cat's head. Isn't. He sucks in a deep breath. Isn't this the cat you've been asked to find? Yuka, right. Izuku can't help but grin as he tugs out his phone to pull up the picture of Yuka. Quickly, he finds the similarities between the cat in Shinsu's arm and the one in the picture. The final clue is when Izuku finds the collar's tag lifting it up with barely any trouble, despite the cat squirming slightly to get out of the purple-haired boy's arms. There, engraved, was the name Yuka. Well, Shinsu, looks like you're better at the job than I am. Care to drop her off with me? I'm sure Mrs. Sato would like to meet her hero. There's a nice gleam in Shinsu's eyes, unconsciously brightening when he hears the word hero, and he's quickly nodding, shifting the cat to a better position. Yuka stops trying to get out of his arms, and instead she rubs her head against Shinsu's chin, purring softly. Izuku smiles, leading the way to Sato's home. I hope you've texted your guardians before you started following me around, Shinsu. Shinsu is quiet for a moment before he asks, could you take her while? Sure, Izuku chuckles. Don't want to be yelled at for keeping their son away. He carefully takes Yuka away from Shinsu, scratching the happy cat's head, while the other goes to text his guardians. He coos discreetly, if only I had a cat like you. Maybe the apartment wouldn't be as empty if I did. He decides to hum again, the tune random this time. He didn't like the quiet. My mom says it's fine, as long as I get home soon. Curfew's getting close though, it's past 10. Shinsu pushes his phone back into his pocket, looking down at Izuku. Izuku nods. Better make this quick then. Mrs. Sato's place isn't far now, and it really wasn't, being a few buildings down. 
They speed up their pace a bit, and within two minutes, they're standing in front of the nice home of Sato Mio. Izuku transfers Yuka to Shinsu's arms. The cat makes its place with grace. With the hope that the old woman hasn't fallen asleep yet, Izuku rings the doorbell. The boys wait, slightly fidgeting. When the door is opened, an older woman standing with a pink robe adorning her figure. Her mouth is open to ask why there's two random teens at her door, before she sees her cat in Shinsu's arms. Yuka. Izuku smiles as Shinsu gives Sato her cat back. Oh, thank you. I didn't recognize you at first, Midoriya, but now that Yuka's here, I remember. Let me go get your money. Before Izuku can say anything, Sato ducks into her nicer apartment. She comes back in less than a minute, a few bills in her hand, and Yuka purring contently in her arms. She goes to place the money into Izuku's hand, but stops when he interrupts. Actually, I wasn't the one who found Yuka, Mrs. Sato. Your hero isn't me, it's my classmate, Shinsu. He angles his hand at the teen, whose eyes are wide in surprise. If anything, he should get the money. Sato directs her smile at the mentioned male. Thank you, Shinsu. It may not seem like much to you, but you're my hero. My late husband was the one who brought Yuka home, and I would have been heartbroken if I had lost her for good. Thank you. Izuku could see Shinsu's eyes glaze over, shining. He stumbles over his words. I, I, it's not a problem, Mrs. Sasato. He takes the money that is pressed into his hand, almost unnoticeably shaking, but Izuku's eyes catches the small tremble. The students finish up their conversation with Sato, and they turn to go back up the street they came from. Izuku doesn't mention the sniffling that comes from Shinsu, rather remarking, not all heroes are flashy. He shrugs, looking up at the sky, slightly disappointed that light pollution keeps the stars from being seen. A lot of pros may be, but it's part of the job. Even then, there's a lot of pros that are specifically not eye-catching, and I'm sure you know who. He gives a short side glance to the teen walking beside him. True heroes are the people who help others without personal gain. They just save someone because they want to. Even if you don't become a pro hero, Shinsu, you can still be a hero. Just wanted you to know, you're a good person, no matter what your quirk is. Thank you, Shinsu whispers. Now, Izuku moves on to a different subject. You found Yuka, so what do you want in return? Shinsu blinks away his tears, sending a confused look to the green-haired teen. What? What do you want for finding Yuka? Like a favor, I guess. But Mrs. Sato already gave me the money, which I don't need, by the way. Oh, just let me do something good for once. I may not be heading down the hero route, but I still want to be a nice person. Izuku sighs, pushing back strands of wild hair. How about I get you trained up for the sport festival? Can't just go relying on your quirk the whole time. Shinsu averts his gaze sheepishly. That's exactly what you were planning to do, wasn't it? He answers with a shy, almost self-conscious, yes. Izuku places a hand on his chin, thinking. Okay, so that's what I'll do. Then I have to find someone to teach you some basics at least. Yo, you don't have to. I want to. Anyway, give me a few days. I'll try to find someone to toss you around a bit. If I don't find anyone in three days, we can just fight each other. Izuku points his eyes at Shinsu, catching his purple ones. I'll make sure you get a good placement. The tears resurface. I think I can afford to make one friend this year, if you're willing to. I would love to be your friend, Shinsu. Ren, Izuku coos, peeking into a dark alleyway. Here, kitty, kitty. He clicks his tongue, searching behind a filthy dumpster. He knew that it was incredibly stupid to go into an alley at night, especially being out so close to the curfew set for minors. But Izuku wanted to ignore the fact that he was likely to get roughed up when helping Shinsu train. And finding a cute ragdoll cat is a great distraction. The white-furred feline, who luckily has an owner who was smart enough to put a tag with their information on it, has a record of running off to seek more attention. Ren was said to be very affectionate. And often, when their owner was busy or out of the house, would run off to find someone who would pet him. Such a naughty kitty. Izuku sighs when he doesn't see any white fur, straightening his posture. Looking into an empty alley for a people-loving cat was improbable. But Izuku didn't really know where else to search, considering it was nighttime, and he had already put up a handful of posters. There wasn't much he could do, but he didn't want to spend a lot of time in his lonely apartment, so peering into disgusting alleyways was the next best thing. He runs a hand through his messy curls, pushing a few strands from his face. He turns to leave the alley when he hears heavy and quick footfalls becoming louder behind him. He whips around to see a burly man running straight towards him. Damn, I'm gonna die, right after I make a friend. What a cruel, cruel world we live in. Before he could move out of the way, he is forcefully grabbed and yanked into the man's arms. There's a sudden sting at his neck, a rush of heartbeats, and he could feel a trail of warm liquid trail down, which he could safely assume was blood, seeing as how a knife was being held closely at his throat. Not long after he's taken hostage, another figure comes rushing in, who of which Izuku quickly notes to be a racerhead due to his white scarf and gold eyewear. He freezes when he sees Izuku, giving the criminal time to slightly stammer a demand. Stas stay back. 
he shouts, and Izuku loses a bit of breath when the arm holding him tightens. I'm warning ya, I am not afraid to hurt him. While Izuku struggles to get a full breath, he swiftly analyzes the guy's quirk. With a small glance down, he could see that the criminal wasn't holding a knife, rather he was holding a finger turned into a blade to Izuku, and it was only one finger. The rest of his fingers were normal and not sharp, meaning the guy had the ability to change them into knives or was born with a random blade. This also meant that there was a chance that his quirk wasn't exactly a set mutant one, and that eraser head had a chance of erasing the quirk, and in turn, would leave the guy without a weapon. He could still injure Izuku without one, seeing as how large and muscular he is, but he could do more damage with a knife. Taking a deep, or as deep as he was allowed, breath, Izuku calls out to the pro hero, Tryarasi. He's cut off, strangled by a pressure on his airway as he tries to gasp for a good breath, quickly becoming lightheaded. Fortunately, the meaning of his interrupted message makes it, and raven locks of hair rise up into the air, a clear sign of a racer head using his quirk. Izuku, fear claiming his mind, shuts his eyes, hearing an incredulous cry behind him and the weight of the knife disappearing. The arm is soon gone, and Izuku is sent forward, landing on all fours as he sucks in air, coughing a bit. Soon as he has caught his breath, he opens his teary eyes and looks back to see a racer head tying the man up with his capture scarf. Thought Monday was the worst day of the week. The world sure proved me wrong. His voice is raspy, and it didn't feel too nice to talk, but Izuku couldn't help but use sarcastic humor. It was how he coped. The racer head doesn't laugh. Instead, after ensuring the criminal is captured, he turns and asks, How injured are you? Izuku gives a breathy, just my throat, nothing serious. He reaches up to find the cut, smudging the thin blood trail in the process, and he winces when he accidentally grazes it. Should be fine, no need for a hospital or a police report, so I'll be on my way. Hold it, Izuku freezes, peering back at the underground hero with the most innocent expression he could pull off. Who are you, and what are you doing in an alley so late at night? Oh, you know, just a drug dealer doing the usual drug deals a teenager has to do to pay school tuition. Iwe, and cheap. The racer head stares. Okay, okay, no need to stare at me like that. I'm Midoriya Izuku, and I'm in an alley so late at night because of a cat. An eyebrow is raised. I'm being serious, a racer head. I was just looking for a cat. I even have his picture on my phone. Izuku shoves his hand into his pants pocket, pulling out his phone. He turns it on, opens it, and pulls up the picture he has of Ren. See, a cute kitty cat named Ren. Missing. He turns his phone off. Can I go now? Pretty sure it's past curfew for minors, and I don't want to get my foster guardians called. Wouldn't be fun dealing with whatever punishment they'd dish out. He grimaces, pushing the thought of his guardians away. The racer head stares down the teen, a low groan erupting from the man on the ground, and he flicks his chin, signaling Izuku to leave. Said male gives a mocking smile, his mood ruined by the thought of his guardians and the fact that he came close to being killed. He takes in a deep breath, attempting to calm down and mostly failing. As he walks down the sidewalk, past slightly dim lampposts, he presses a finger under the cut to see if he could wipe away the majority of the blood. However, when he meets a sticky and dry trail, he lets out a loud grumble. Dry blood was not a nice feeling. Izuku thanks his luck that at least he doesn't have to take a train to get home. He had started out as far as he thought was enough, and he made his way back slowly, getting closer and closer to the way home. With another sigh, he runs a hand through his hair, stressed, and he goes down the path back to his apartment, ready to take a shower and then collapse into bed. Izuku flops down into his chair, instantly pressing his face into his crossed arms. He could hear a small chuckle, making him lift his head up to glare at his purple-haired friend who had a small, amused smirk on his face. Rough weekend. Izuku's groans are muffled as he puts his head down again. Why did I choose the fast food industry to work in? Tell me, Shinsu. Why am I making myself suffer? Because you need money. Shinsu trails off, answering Izuku's questions despite them most likely being rhetorical. Izuku sighs, right, right. Can't do underage prostitution, probably even worse. It's also pretty illegal, but that's not the main point, is it? That too. Anyway, Izuku sits up, rubbing his face. Talking about the sports festival? We weren't talking about the. Talking about the sports festival. Izuku sends a pointed look at Shinsu. Daring him to interrupt again, today marks the third day since I offered to find you a trainer. It is Monday, mid-April, and there is this week and the next left before the popular event was planned to occur. However, despite that time seeming to be slightly long, it is a short amount of time for anyone to begin any sort of training. I have to look for another cat after school, and I do have a shift tonight, but I'll try to keep an eye out for anyone who looks like they'd train you. Shinsu rubs the back of his head, looking to the side. You really don't have to go through the trouble of doing that. Well, to be honest, I don't want to go with the alternative of punching each other, so I think I'll give it one last look. Izuku pulls out a singed notebook, the cover damaged with burns all over it. 
on the front, in black, permanent marker, hero analysis for the future, was written, number 13, underlined below it. That notebook has history. Shinsu gives a low whistle, eyeing the brown marks that marred the journal. Wanna share? Just some bullying. No biggie, Izuku nonchalantly says. And Shinsu grimaces, pretty sure that problem's not as small as you're making it. Moving on, I decided to revamp my stalker tendencies and analyze your quirk. Izuku opens the charred notebook, flipping to around the middle, landing on a page with a large autograph on it, causing him to scowl a bit. He quickly moves onto the page he intended to go to, flipping past the obvious signature and to a page that had a bit of information already on it. Before he and Shinsu separated on Friday night, they had swapped phone numbers, and over the weekend, Izuku had gained a bit of information about the other's quirk, such as how it is used. At the bottom of the paper, Izuku had listed a handful of questions he had for Shinsu, who would hopefully be able to answer at least some of them. Shinsu peeks over at his page. Didn't think you'd write a whole page about my quirk. He looks on the left page. Or draw an okay picture of me. I know, I know. Izuku sarcastically draws, rolling his eyes. I'm such an amazing artist. Thank you for the compliment. You're so, very welcome. Izuku shakes his head, smiling, moving on. I have a few questions about your quirk. I'm gonna warn you now, I might not know the answer to some of them. Any time I'd use my quirk, I'd be called a villain, so I tried to avoid even mentioning it. Shinsu rubs the back of his neck, his eyes slightly downcast. Understood, Izuku hums. But this is some stuff that's probably important to know for the sports festival. When's the next time you're free after school? I'm never really busy, unless I need to do something for my mom or my dad comes home. Okay, so you're free tomorrow. Yeah, Shinsu nods. Should be. Izuku pulls out his phone, checking his calendar. I have some time before my shift tomorrow. He looks up at Shinsu. We could try testing out your quirk then, if you're comfortable with it. Shinsu averts his eyes in hesitance, looking down, are you sure you wanna? Shinsu, I'm not going to quit being your friend because of your quirk. I thought we already had our heart-to-heart -heart moment Friday. Did you just forget over the weekend? No, he weakly answers. Good, because that was probably that was the best thing I've ever said without messing up or sounding stupid. Shinsu stares at the smaller boy, before eventually giving an amused huff of air, not the eloquent type, I take it. Not at all, Izuku grins. Izuku gives a fake sympathetic expression to the woman tearing up, only feeling irritation and pity. This week was not going as well as he wanted, and it's only Monday. He uncrosses his legs, pulling out his phone to check the time to see that he only had three minutes left on his shift. He pushes himself off of the restroom sink, giving the woman one last look before commenting, You requested me to find Ren on Sunday, Mrs. Uchiyama. It's Monday. You can't expect me, a student with a part-time job, to find a cat in a city in less than two full days. He tries to amend, realizing how harsh he was sounding. I'm sorry, but that expectation is too high for anyone. Just give me more time, and I'll let you know if I find him or not. He pushes the door to the unisex restroom open, feeling exhausted. Have a good evening, ma'am. He walks back to the employee area, moving to stand beside Kawaguchi. Today was moving extra slow, most likely because of the villain attack that happened nearby. And there weren't many people coming inside to eat or order, meaning there wasn't much to clean. Izuku side eyes his co-worker. Has Fujiwara come in yet? This week's going so bad that I just want to go straight to bed and cry myself to sleep. Thought you always do that, Kawaguchi teases blowing up at a blonde strand of hair that strayed from his usual style. Izuku snorts, no, I only do that occasionally. It's you who does it every night, Kawaguchi. First of all, stop with that Kawaguchi bullcrap, I'm not used to it. Secondly, I'm in college for a history major. Yeah, Kawaguchi, but it's gonna be hard to get a job with a degree in history. You'll be crying every night because you'll still be working here, while I go off to college with a scholarship because I'm in UA. And you're not. Ouch, I'm crying right now. You can't tell, because they're too short to see, but there are tears streaming down my face. I'm bawling. Good. Cry, you giant. Fiveton baby, cry. Not my fault that a lot of Japanese people are shorter than Americans. You were born to be a pipsqueak. I will end you, Kawaguchi Michael. His English was accented, but it still carried the threat he was pushing into. I dare you, Midoriya Izuku. A new voice interrupts. Now, now. They both turn to the woman with blue hair. No need to get all worked up because I'm around. I wouldn't say that. Nakajima, Kawaguchi waves his hand, dismissing the older woman. Afraid you're not my type. Not sure about our hormonal teenager here though. He gives a grunt when an elbow is shoved into his stomach. Izuku glares, daring the other to say anything else. Being short means that I can easily make it to where you can't breed demonic spawns anymore. Kawaguchi places his hands in a placating gesture. Okay, okay. Jeez, Midoriya, don't you go to a hero school. Threatening people isn't very heroic. Izuku, and UA isn't just a hero school. Izuku grumbles, scowling. I'm in one degree Celsius, not 1B or the cursed 1A. 
Kawaguchi quickly realizes he's breached a sensitive subject and goes to apologize. But Nakajima cuts him off, changing the subject. Fujiwara said he's close, so you can go ahead and leave. It's going pretty slow today. No need to worry about anyone rushing in or anything. Izuku goes to protest. I will throw you out of this restaurant myself, Izuku. Go away, you loser. Fine. Izuku pouts, freckled cheeks puffed, and moves to head out. He gives a small goodbye to Akari, who gives him a smile before readying an order, and then he walks out the door, giving a final glare at Nakajima and Kawaguchi, who both waved with grins on their faces. He mutters an insult. And despite the two not being close enough to hear, it appeared that their beams widened. As he wanders down the sidewalk, he ponders over the option of taking his hair down or not, all while pulling out his phone to once again check the time. It was around 15 minutes past 9, and all Izuku wanted to do was collapse and screech, didn't matter where or when, he just felt like it. Every time he passed an alleyway, he'd quickly glance to see if there were any threats before rushing past, despite the fact that there were still groups of people out. It seems the hostage incident from yesterday had made him skittish around dark, creepy corners. Understandable, have a nice day. He finally makes it to the station, snatching his train pass out of his wallet and stands on the platform to wait for the train. He checks the time again, blanching when he sees it's past 9.35. Please 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 and doth a stone. He looks up to search for groups of people, slightly frantic as he hopes that he didn't miss the train. There's a bit of hope when he sees a good amount of people still at the station. He anxiously taps his foot as he waits for a train, heaving a breath of relief when he spies one coming with the exact identity number he sees almost every day. Thank you Awu. Izuku rubs his tired eyes, yawning. His mind felt a bit floaty and thick, and he stopped thinking about anything work or school related. Rather he was thinking about trivial things, such as how he could get away with murdering Kawaguchi or how hard Shinsu would punch him. He was a bit away from the station now and was about 20 minutes away from his crappy apartment complex, but he was in a less populated area, which was unwillingly making him a bit more skittish. His pace grew faster, almost to a speed walk but not quite, and a soft humming of a tune from an old game being reverberated as he does so. Now, time to tell them, don't take my dream. Hey, Izuku lets out a surprised yelp, spinning around to see Eraserhead's tall figure standing in front of the alley he just passed. Strangely, it was the same alleyway as the night before, and Izuku felt a shiver run down his spine as he took a deep breath. He places a hand on his chest, feeling his rushing heart. Is it just a normal thing for you to make my heart race every time we meet? You just like scaring teenagers for fun. Sarcasm was obviously flowing from his mouth as he calms himself down. Must be, unless I'm in love or something. He lets out an airy chuckle when he sees the drained expression on the hero's face. The raven shakes his head, muttering something that suspiciously sounded like, weird problem child. Then, oddly, he sticks his hands into his capture scarf, pulling out a medium-sized, white item. I believe he belongs to you. Izuku squints his eyes, visibly confused, before he has a sudden realization. Ren, the fluffy cat looks up when he hears his name being called, giving an adorable meow, which proves Izuku's realization correct. Izuku steps forward, coming closer to the ragdoll cat, and in turn, getting closer to the older male. He holds out a hand to let the feline sniff it, and he gets a small headbutt in return, Ren delightfully prompting him to give some affection. Izuku smiles and gives him a small scratch. So, Mr. I like to scare children for fun. What do you want in return for finding Ren? Izuku raises his eyebrow in question, glancing up at Eraserhead. I may be a drug dealer, doesn't mean I'm a successful one, but I'm sure I can do something. Find a cat, a dog, a life, actually, I wouldn't count on that last one. Not sure someone can find what they don't have. Eraserhead just sighs, carefully handing Ren to the green-haired boy. Repay me by going home, preferably before the curfew for minors. HM, that, I can do. Izuku peers at the cat, who is now in his arms, cooing, guess you're coming home with me tonight. He looks back up. Boo it. He drawls. You did my job for me. You should be paid in full. How kind of you. I know, I know. I'm the nicest person I know. Kid, just go home already. Nah, not until I think of something else I can do for you. The racer head sighs again. And for a long, long moment, he looks like he wants to pass out right there, which Izuku could relate to. Izuku racks his brain for another task he could do before a certain indigo-haired teen comes to mind. How about I pay you back in potential? The racer head doesn't answer. And Izuku takes that silence to continue. Sports festival's coming up, and I have a friend who needs some help training. The racer head stares at him. Is that friend you? Excuse me. Izuku gasps, reeling back in a dramatic form of hurt. I have friends, more like one friend, but still. Izuku shrugs. I don't care too much about the festival, considering I don't want to be a hero or anything. However, my friend does, and I've promised him that I'd help him. I assume your friend is probably in one degree Celsius. 
the racer head brings a hand to rub the bridge of his nose, presumably attempting to fight off an oncoming headache. Go to the teacher's lounge tomorrow during lunch. I'll decide whether or not to train your friend by then. But for now, go home, problem child. I, I, Captain. Izuku salutes with a free hand, making sure to hold Ren securely in his other. He turns and walks away, grinning and quietly singing a happier song to himself and Ren. He hadn't felt this amount of joy in a while. Not since his mother died, and there was almost a skip to his step. I'm just as real as, I'm just as dangerous, as you will soon find. He might have just saved himself from getting punched. Oh, and he might have helped Shinsu get a trainer. That too. Izuku's nose twitches when something soft brushes against it, and being too sleepy to move or open his eyes, he just scrunches it in hopes that the soft thing will not be able to touch him. However, the ticklish feeling returns, forcing him to turn his head away. But when he does so, he gets a face full of a warm body covered in fuss. He furrows his brows, absent-minded confusion filling his mind as he moves his head again. He cracks open his green eyes, white and gray colors filling his vision, and he blinks, trying to recall when he adopted a pet. Laying on his chest and neck is a fluffy cat, its head curled against his chin, giving a cute picture. Izuku couldn't help stop the upturns of his lips, moving a hand to carefully reach up to rub the snoozing cat. The ragdoll breed lets out a peal of purring, snuggling their head into his chin more and allowing their collar's tag be seen. Izuku mumbles the name he reads, Ren. Then he blanches in realization, the memories of last night fill his mind. With a newfound grin, he remembers Eraserhead's words, and he blindly reaches over with right arm to his bedside table, where his phone should be, charging. He quickly finds it, full of excitement, and he one-handedly yanks his charger out, the screen lighting up as he does so. He unlocks it, quickly pressing in his passcode and hurrying to his messaging app. Tuesday, 6.42 am. Lost in found. Shinsu. Shinsu. Shichu. Oops autocorrect. Purple insomniac. I definitely believe that. What? Lost in found. I found someone. E. Waity time. Aw shit. Purple insomniac is typing. Izuku drops his phone beside him, panic building. He had woken up late. The time being past 6.30 and class starts at 8.45. The train would take up a huge chunk of his remaining time, around 40 minutes, but he had to make it to said train, which would be arriving in less than an hour, and getting to the station would take around 15 minutes, including the morning foot traffic. He looks back down at Ren and groans. He mumbles, placing a hand under the cat, I know, it's some type of special rule to not move a cat while they're sleeping on you, but I have an education and a scary teacher to worry about, as well as a friend who will actually kill me if I don't go. He lifts the feline up, waking him up and places him to the side. He hastily rises from his bed, somehow getting tangled with his blue comforter and falling to the ground with a thud. From his place on the floor, he exhales, pressing his head to the floorboard. This week is gonna be the death of me. Ren meows, seeming to be in agreement, and he jumps down from the bed, flicking his tail at Izuku's face. Yes, yes, just give me a moment to regret every decision I've ever made. Ren stares at him with his blue eyes holding judgment. Oh, don't judge me. Izuku moves to untangle himself, standing. He goes about his morning routine, the main points being, he quickly makes some tea, a drink he had come to love due to the past quiet mornings with his mother in the past, putting it in a cup he could toss away or recycle when reaching the train station, brushing his teeth, attempting to tame his wild hair with a comb, before moving on with barely any difference and a deep sigh, changing into his school uniform, making sure to put on deodorant, along with other things. He carefully takes a sip of his drink, the time of his morning habits long enough for the tea bag to set, and he hastily makes his way over to his bag, which strangely looked to be bulkier, and was open. Suspicion built in his mind, and he peeks into the yellow eyesore, quickly finding his new feline friend looking up from his place on top of folders and books. He snorts, setting his cup down and reaching a hand to pick the ragdoll up, but stops when he is met with the cutest expression he's ever seen on a cat. He groans, averting his eyes. Stop, he whines. Don't give me your version of puppy dog eyes, kitty cat eyes. I don't know, just stop. When Ren doesn't stop, he reluctantly gives in. Fine, all right, you can come with me. You just have to stay quiet and out of view of anyone but me. Okay, okay, let's go. He moves the flap over the cat and the inside of the bag, not bothering to buckle it so Ren could breathe without any complication. He puts his backpack on, grabbing his tea and he gives a quick look over to make sure that all his lights were turned off. With a nod to himself, he sets out of his apartment, keeping his pace fast but not fast enough to jostle his new passenger. He sips his cup of tea along the way to the station, keeping along with groups of people on their way to work or teens and kids to school. He lived on the poorer side of the Musutafu, and since Shinsu got off on the same stop before their heart-to-heart, -heart, the male probably lived nearby. Only a few heroes patrol around the area, one of them apparently being the always exhausted Eraserhead, considering the fact that Izuku has seen him two nights in a row. 
Izuku yawns widely, his free hand covering his mouth. He had gotten home around 20 minutes before 11, spent 40 minutes making a small dinner for both him and Ren, took a shower that lasted around 10 minutes, and stressed over procrastinated work and assigned homework for almost two hours. After, he laid in bed, Ren rumbling like a motorboat by his side, and attempted to go to sleep. However, he gave up after 30 minutes of hyperactive thinking, deciding to scroll through social media for what he decided to be for 30 minutes. Then that 30 minutes turned 40. Then an hour, then an hour and a half, and finally, when it reached almost four in the morning, he forced himself to put his phone away and try to sleep again. It was no wonder he woke up late and was still exhausted. He makes a mental note to keep from burning out. It would be way more trouble than it's worth. He blinks away the small beads of tears that sprung to his eyes. He continues to walk down sidewalks with small crowds of people, sipping at his slowly cooling drink, until he finally sees the train station, gulping down the rest of the tea. He tosses his cup in a nearby trash can, heading inside of the station, where many people were going in for their early commute. He pulls out his train pass, going through the gate, and stands to wait for his train, releasing a sigh. He pulls out his phone to check the time, and in doing so, he finds that he had notifications of Shinsu messaging him. He unlocks his phone and presses one of the notifications, pulling up their conversation from when he woke up. Lost in found. I found some Oni. Waity time. Aw oh shit. Purple insomniac. What? Izuku. What do you mean? Tuesday, 7.26 am. Lost in found. Well sorry for leaving you without an explanation. Woke up late, had to hurry. Purple insomniac. Well, are you gonna explain? Lost in found. Okay so last night I was walking home. Like normal. Then suddenly a racer head pops out of an alley with a cat I've been looking. for. Purple insomniac. Wait 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 wadi. The racer head. Yeah, he gives me the cat and I being the nice person I am offered to do. Something for him. Boa he didn't really need. Anything like I do, with the pets and stuff. So I offered you up instead. Purple insomniac. You make it sound like I'm being sacrificed. Izuku looks up, hearing a train come in. With a quick look, he can tell that it's his train, so he shoots another text to his friend. Stuff. So I offered you up instead. Purple insomniac. You make it sound like I'm being sacrificed. Lost and found. One sec. Train's here. Purple insomniac. So is mine. Wait don't we ride the same train? Lost in found. Uh, I guess we do don't we? Wanna try and find each other. Purple insomniac. Don't see why not. Izuku quickly looks up, standing on tiptoe, searching through the mass of people for a lost, purple-haired boy by the height of over 170 centimeters. Oh, and he just happened to an obvious insomniac and a UA student. But that's not important for the search, is it? Seeing as how the train was already waiting for passengers to exit and board, he decides to send a text telling Shinsu to just wait until the train ride is over, where they could meet up before walking to school together, to which he receives a thumbs up. He gets onto the train after pocketing his phone, shouldering past other people getting on and off to get to a good spot, where he reaches up for a handle, grasping onto it. He carefully takes his bag off, moving it in front of him, where he slips on the straps. He takes a swift look around, making sure that no one was looking, before checking on Ren, lifting the unbuckled flap. A soft smile appears on his face as he looks down at Ren, who is curled up, sleeping. He gives a quick scratch before placing the replacing the bag's flap, covering the ragdoll kitty. He rolls his head to the side, pressing it against his arm, and he closes his eyes while letting out a sigh. He spends the boring train ride resting his eyes, occasionally switching arms and discreetly checking on Ren. When the train stops and the announcement of his stop sounds out, he makes his way off of the train and onto the platform, pulling out his phone and heading off to a less populated area. He first searches for Shinsu, but when he couldn't find him, he shoots a text to him, tell the purple-haired teen where he could find him. It takes a few minutes for his figure to appear, slipping past multiple people and moving to Izuku. He ruffles his fluffy hair, hey. Hey, Izuku greets, shouldering his bag properly. You good to go? Yeah, let's go. And, please, explain what you meant about offering me up to my favorite pro hero. Izuku snorts, I'll explain on the way. He motions his head towards the exit of the building. So, you know how I needed to find a trainer for you. Shinsu nods before deadpanning. Wait, wait, wait. Are you telling me that you asked a racer head to train me? Yeah, I am. You asked a pro to train me. Yeah, pretty sure, a racer head is a pro hero. Fuck, I'm screwed. Shinsu blanches, covering his face and groaning. Izuku holds a finger up, pausing Shinsu's suffering. To be fair, he hasn't agreed yet, so, like, chill. We'll find out his answer at lunch, which remember that we gotta go to the teacher's lounge. I'm gonna die. He's gonna kill me, I'm done for. If you're gonna die, die somewhere I'm not around. I don't wanna have to testify as a witness to your murder, I don't have time for that. Nice to know that my death could affect you. I'll be sure to die right beside you. 
You bastard. And then I'll haunt your ass. Now you're crossing the line, Shinsu. Only for you, Midoriya. Izuku huffs a laugh, shaking his head. Why are we so dumb? I've been asking that my whole life. Glad we have something in common. Izuku stretches his arms, yawning. He blinks back tiny tears, watching as the tall building of Yue comes closer as the two walk towards it. Suddenly, his eyes widen. Oh, yeah, I have something to show you. Shinsu raises an eyebrow. What? I'll show you once we get to the classroom. Izuku waves a hand, dismissing the other's curiosity. Whatever you say. They make it to the front gate. Their student IDs allowing them to walk through without triggering the mechanism that keeps everyone but students and teachers out. They walk past slower students, entering the school and going down hallways, tossing around random conversational topics as they do so. When they make it to the classroom, Shinsu opens the door, letting Izuku enter first, who nods and thanks. There aren't many people in the classroom yet, and Izuku carefully takes off and sets down his yellow backpack, sitting down in his seat. He waits until Shinsu has sat down in the seat next to him, and gives a quick glance across the room, before motioning the other to look over. So, last night, I got the cat, right? Shinsu nods. The thing is, by the time Eraserhead gave him to me, it was already too late to head over to the owner's place, meaning I had to take him home with me. I thought about giving the cat to the owner this morning, before school, but I woke up late. That explains why you suddenly stopped explaining earlier. Yeah. Anyway, he decided to curl up in my bag. He gave me his version of puppy dog eyes, and he's still there. Shinsu blinks. What? Instead of answering, Izuku lifts the flap of his bag, showing the male the cat in his back. He brought the cat to school, okay. Shinsu brings a hand near the cat's head, allowing Ren to sniff it. You are such a dumbass, Izuku. You're not wrong, Izuku agrees. His name is Ren, and he's gonna be here all day. Now that I'm saying it, this is such a bad idea. Shinsu, why did I do this? It seems you lost a battle against a cat's version of puppy dog eyes. From what you said, Shinsu scratches Ren behind one of his ears, and the feline purrs. Izuku sighs, I already regret this. Did you really have to bring your back? Well, I couldn't just leave him there, alone. Izuku reasons. He probably would have snuck away, and some teacher or student would find him. Then I would get in trouble right away, because my luck is terrible. It's, you're the one who brought him here. You should get in trouble. Shinsu shakes his head, huffing in amusement. I, I thought we were friends, starting to regret following you last Friday. How dare, you evil, evil child. Ah, uh, yes, I am, but aren't I older than you? Izuku gasps dramatically, placing a hand on his chest. Excuse me? Are you just saying that because you're taller than me? I'm not going to say that's why, but I might be implying it. Bastard. Izuku insults then asks, when's your birthday? July 1st, Shinsu answers as they turn a corner. July 15th, you're not that much older than I am, just got tall jeans. Shinsu raises a finger, then you have no right in calling me a child, child. Two can play at this game. Old man, you wound me. Shinsu clutches his chest, rolling his head back in faux pain. Anyway, we're almost there, and I'm getting nervous. I think I might die soon. Izuku grins, you're not gonna die, but it would be funny if he does kill you. Shinsu groans, rubbing the back of his neck. It'll be fine, quit worrying about it so much. If he does say no, his loss. He'd be a great underground hero. They make it to the door of the teacher's lounge before Shinsu could respond. And Izuku inhales. You ready? No, Shinsu answers, also taking a deep breath, and he nods, but let's do this. He raises a fist, giving a few quick knocks and getting a muffled. Come in, in return. Opening the door, he lets Izuku step in first before following him. Such a gentleman, wouldn't you agree, Eraserhead? Izuku tilts his head, giving a sardonic smile to the raven-haired man. I am here with the potential I told you about last night. Call me Aizawa while at school. The teacher sighs, bringing a stool over and placing it across from the green couch. He waves a hand towards the furniture, take a seat. Izuku and Shinsu move over the couch, sitting down. Izuku takes his bag off, putting it beside his feet gently. He knew that Ren was most likely hungry, but hopefully the cat is patient enough to wait. He smiles at Aizawa, you know, now that I can see you in some actual light, you don't look like someone who should be going on patrols. Aizawa was obviously injured, most likely due to the villain attack at USJ. He had bandages on his face, not covering it completely, but enough to signify that he had facial trauma. One of his hands is completely dressed in white, while the other almost matched. Izuku couldn't see any more skin or bandages, the rest being hidden by the hero's costume. The raven sighs, grumbling, you're not the first one to tell me that. I'm fine. He moves his eyes over to Shinsu. Why do you want to be a hero? Shinsu's posture straightens as he tenses under Aizawa's scrutiny. I I will. He takes a deep breath, attempting to calm his nerves. Ever since my quirk appeared, almost everyone told me that I'd be better off as a villain than a hero. A part of me wants to prove them wrong, but I know better. That's, that's not what I want. He pauses, but Aizawa doesn't rush him, rather letting him take his time. 
Izuku looks off into space, fiddling with his fingers, but still listening to the vulnerability of his friend. I, I want to be a hero to help people, to help those who are ostracized because of their quirk, or lack of quirk. Izuku smiles, closing his eyes and leaning back, to helping those who are being attacked by a villain. I want to be a hero to people. Aizawa stares at the student, seemingly in thought, before he simply says, Okay. Oh. Okay. Shinsu blinks and parrots, confused. I'll teach you some basics, something that will hopefully get you through to the third round. We don't have much time to prepare. Aizawa then inquires, What days are you free after school and weekends? Shinsu stammers, I, you, I'm free pre pretty much all this week and next. Aizawa nods before leaning over to snatch a file from off the coffee table, one that Izuku didn't notice when walking in. The teacher opens the file and pulls out a paper form. He hands it to Shinsu. Permission slip. Get it signed by a parent or guardian. Bring it back tomorrow. We'll train from 3.30 until 5.30 on school days and Saturday. Free days are Wednesday, Sunday. Tomorrow, if you bring back the form signed, I'll assess you and see what you need to work on and what you're good at. Then, he eyeballs Izuku, who raises an eyebrow in question. And you. I don't want to be a hero. Izuku shakes his head, denying the implied inquiry of training. I'm just helping him get through the festival, so he can join one of your heroics classes at some point. Considering your grades, I thought you'd be a lot smarter. Ouch. You wound me, Aizawa-sensei. I don't even know why you're insulting me. You want to help him get through the sports festival, right? Izuku nods. How do you plan getting through round one without a quirk and any training? Izuku's eye twitches in irritation, and he lets out a slow stream of air through his nose. Sure, you could make some type of plan, but how far will that get you and him? Izuku groans, okay, okay, I get it, I get it. Thing is, I'm not as free as him, busy on weekends, though your hours after school don't interfere with mine. We'll adjust then. Instead of next week's Wednesday being your free day and Saturday being a work day, switch them. This will leave both of you a day solo session each. The teens nods in understanding, and Aizawa brings another form out, giving it to Izuku. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you what to do with this. Izuku hums, right. Anyway, we done. Don't want to miss out on lunch. Lunch Rush's food is pretty good. Shinsu snorts, whispering. You sure that isn't just because of who's in your back? He grunts when Izuku jabs an elbow into his arm. Did you say something, Shinsu? Nope, not one word. Good. You two can leave. Aizawa dismisses the two, a tinge of amusement in his voice. They stand up from the couch. And Izuku goes to lift his bag up when it moves, the worn yellow flap rising. Out pops Ren with a curious trill. He jumps out of the back, trotting under the coffee table to circle around Aizawa's feet. Izuku grins. I guess I let the cat out the bag? Huh. The next two weeks were hell. Izuku had gotten his permission form signed by one of his foster guardians. He purposely targeted the male one since he was more of a pushover than his wife. He also doesn't bother asking questions. The next day, classes ran by smoothly. And after school, Aizawa assessed everything Izuku and Shinsu could do, including fighting offense and defense, as well as stamina and flexibility, and a few other things. It turns out that Shinsu enjoys bicycling, doing it almost every weekend. And the fact that most of the cases Izuku gets has him running around Musutafu for hours means that they're both relatively healthy, taking away from the fact that a lot of Izuku's dinners are fast food. Aizawa made a list containing the types of foods and meals that the boys should be eating, along with a list of some exercises they could do on their own. Izuku luckily had enough money to spend on groceries, and every night, he would do the listed exercises before showering and going to bed. Unfortunately, for him, he had returned Ren to his owner, so he was back to being alone. But the impulsive idea of adopting a cat kept circulating in his mind. The first week of training was full of soreness and bruises due to the fact that neither Izuku nor Shinsu ever really exercise on a normal basis and that they have never taken a self-defense class. Aizawa focused on stamina and flexibility. He made them stretch, run, and many other things that made Izuku groan as he massaged his aching muscles at night. A memorable moment Izuku had was when Aizawa scolded him for not resting enough. Izuku pants as he bends over, placing his hands on his knees. He brings one hand to rub at his face, wetting it with the sweat that dripped down his face. Shinsu had to leave a bit early, saying something about his father coming home after a long while. Midoriya. Izuku looks up at Aizawa with a grimace. How much rest have you been getting? Izuku straightens, taking in a deep breath before exhaling, Khan, cidering the fact that you're using that tone of voice with me, not enough. Correct. Did you forget about what I said? No, Izuku quickly answers, shaking his head. Unfortunately, I don't have a schedule that allows me to get that much rest. Then he simple adds, I have a part-time job. Aizawa crosses his arms, and Izuku continues, I work every shift I can, unless my co-workers force me to take a break. I need the money. He takes another deep breath, reaching a hand back to take down his curly hair. My foster guardians, the other kids, we need the money. He ruffles his hair, sighing. 
Sleep doesn't come easy either. Aizawa closes his eyes, breathing out. Let's work this out then. So they talked and planned, and in the end, Izuku was able to get more rest. Izuku was able to get some of his shifts covered, and his diet was adjusted to help him get even just a bit more sleep. It was the first time Izuku had felt like his teacher cared about him. The second week was full of soreness and bruises. They didn't have much time left, but Aizawa taught them what he could. They kept up with the exercises they started the week before, adding harder self-defense lessons with them. Luckily, both Izuku and Shinsu are fast learners, so by the end of the week, they knew weak points and how to at least punch well. On their last day of training, Aizawa stopped them before they left. Shinsu, don't bother coming tomorrow. I want the both of you to get all the rest you can. Shinsu nods, wiping his face with the bottom of his shirt. Got it. Izuku grunts, K, okay, and continues to finish up his cool down stretches. You both are at a disadvantage. Izuku stops stretching and stands straight, looking at the teacher. Shinsu's expression is flat, but there is an obvious bitterness shining within. You, Aizawa angles his head towards Shinsu. Have a mental quirk, and you, he angles his head at Izuku, have no quirk at all. Both cases are not ideal for the sports festival, along with the fact that you two have only had two weeks of training. While both hero courses have been training since the first week of school, you may not get far, much less win, but you tried. That is what's going to matter when I bring it up to the school board of teachers for a suggestion of a transfer. Izuku's eyes widen, and Shinsu sucks in a sharp inhale. Transfer. Shinsu's voice is small and breathy, on the brink of hopeful. The heroics entrance exam is irrational. Its bias towards physical quirks, leaving those with mental quirks, are none at all, stuck in general education. Life's unfair. But the choice to have potential students fight against robots isn't something that life controls. Aizawa's brow pinch in resigned disapproval, and his frown deepens. The educational board decides to waste money on expensive targets rather than considering another way to test whether or not a student should be in heroics. That's their choice, and it's wasting potential. So, Shinsu swallows, that there's a chance that. I can't promise anything, but there is a chance of transferal. Aizawa closes his eyes, sighing, before opening them once again. Shinsu, you can leave. I need to have a private discussion with Midoriya. Shinsu takes a moment, but he nods and moves to grab his bag that was left to the side. He leaves the training room, heading to the locker room. Izuku blinks at Aizawa, an eyebrow rising in confusion and curiosity. I think you should reconsider your decision of not becoming a pro hero. Izuku looks on in surprise, slowly taking in what Aizawa said. Then his expression dims, his eyes dimming to a dark color, and the corner of his lips turned downward into a small frown. What? A quirk is not needed to become a hero. Aizawa simply states, Midoriya, you are smart and a quick learner. That notebook you left with Shinsu when we worked solo on Saturday. While it needs some work, it was full of great quirk analysis. Izuku had tested Shinsu with his quirk during lunch, seeing how long he could control one person, eventually persuading random people to let Shinsu control to see how many he could do at a time, and finding out what drawbacks there were. He even wrote down ways Shinsu could improve his quirk use and other possible theories with the usage. He lent it to Shinsu so he and Aizawa could use it when working on Sarai. With that, and with more training, you could be an underground hero. I fight quirkless, Aizawa continues, my quirk only works two-thirds at a time, but I use support equipment. Izuku cuts in before he can carry on, you know how they say. Never try to meet your heroes. He closes his eyes, letting out a humorless huff of air. Mine, former, told me the exact opposite. Told me to be realistic. He takes down his hair, and gives Aizawa a bitter smile. Thank you for thinking I could be what I wanted to be since a kid, but, I don't want to be a hero anymore. I don't know what I'll be in the future. I do know that I won't be a pro hero. He averts his eyes, not wanting to see Aizawa's expression. He inhales and takes a step back. Thank you. I think I'll be going now. Izuku gives a quick nod before moving away. Heading over to his yellow bag, he grabs the strap of it and swings it onto his back, already going to the door and opening it. He leaves, going down the hallway to the locker room. When he enters, Shinsu is already gone, most likely on his way home. He ignores how his eyes sting, how his cheeks now seem wet. That night, when he laid in bed, hair still wet from his shower, he couldn't get Aizawa's words out of his head. Uai, who could have predicted this outcome when the trial began? Right now, the first person back in the stadium is that man, Midoriya Izuku. He's made a huge splash. This certainly isn't how Izuku planned for the first round to go. Izuku leans back in his chair, allowing Shinsu to work with his somewhat tamed hair, while he softly taps his finger to some random song playing through the only earbud in his ear. Boredom and slight anxiety filling his mind. Their classmates' chatter made a low hum. Many in their own groups are keeping to themselves. Only a small amount of the class were aiming to attempt winning this event so they could get into one of the heroic courses, which means more competition for Shinsu and, indirectly, Izuku. How is your hair so soft? 
You barely take care of it, Shinsu mumbles, almost finished with the bun. Izuku smiles, checking the time on his phone. No clue. My mom always had nice hair. He shrugs. Maybe it's genetic. He peers up at his standing friend. Your hair looks soft and fluffy. While I'm not too big on taking care of it properly, I probably still do more than you do. I'm not going to deny that. Shinsu finishes the hairstyle. Done. Hopefully, that'll hold until the first round is over, at least. Yeah, Izuku hums. Thanks. Mom has me do hers whenever her hands are full. Used to it. Shinsu supplies, dismissing Izuku's thanks. The two continue to swap subjects to talk about until the intercom comes on, cueing them to get ready to walk out into the stadium. Izuku quickly heads over to his locker, where he stuck his school uniform into, and opens, placing his phone with his wallet and keys. He turns and moves back to stand beside Shinsu, taking a deep breath to keep the butterflies in the stomach from unwillingly stirring. Hey, present Mike yells, hyping up the crowds of people attending. Pay attention, audience, swarm, mass media. Izuku scrunches his nose at the mention of the parasites. This year's high school rodeo of adolescents that you all love, the UA Sports Festival, is about to begin. Everybody, are you ready? Even from inside of the changing room, Izuku could hear the loud sounds of the audience cheering in excitement. It's time for the students to enter the first year stage. Izuku sighs, ready. Nope. Shinsu replies, rolling his shoulders back. Glad I'm not the only one. The whole of class 1 degrees Celsius walk through the dark tunnel leading out to field. The cheering and explosions of fireworks getting louder and louder, just a bit off of deafening. Izuku squints at the sudden burst of light, grimacing but looks around at the other students and the sea of people seated all around. He almost wants to cover his ears with his hands. The UA Sports Festival, the huge battle where fledgling heroes sharpen their swords once a year. Izuku frowns, glaring. Anyway, these are the guys, right? The miraculous new stars who overcame enemy attacks with their hearts of steel. Hero course, class 1A, right? The crowds erupt in noise, and Izuku flinches back, feeling an oncoming headache. He rubs his temples. Do they have to be that loud? Present Mike continues to introduce the next class. They haven't been getting as much airtime, but this class is also full of talent. Hero Course, Class 1B. He rushes through the rest. Next up, General Studies, Classes C, D, and E. Support Course, Classes F, G, and H are here too. And Business Course, Classes I, J, and K. All of UA. As first years are here now. One of Izuku and Shinsu's classmates speaks up. We're just here to make these guys look better, huh? I'm not really feeling it. A girl says, frowning. They're not wrong, Izuku groans, and there, he motions towards the audience, too loud. Shinsu, I'm starting to regret this. Damn, hero class. Shinsu grumbles, face blank but irritation shining in his eyes. There was also a flame of determination, growing brighter and brighter. Time for the player pledge. Izuku moves his eyes forward and he huffs in surprise and amusement. They chose an R-rated hero to umpire a sports meet for minors. Smartest decision ever. Maybe the perverted ones will get distracted, like that one in one Aizawa mentioned. Shinsu snorts, the less competition, the better. Quiet, everyone. Midnight swings her whip, quieting those making a racket about her in. Representing the students is Bakugu Katsuki from Class 1A. Izuku smirks, I can almost bet what he's gonna say. That guy did finish first in the entrance exam. The girl from before sighs loudly, exasperatedly looking over to who said that, in the hero course. Bakugu takes his sweet time walking over to where Midnight stood, going up each step at a normal walking speed. Stepping up to the mic, his hands shoved in his pockets, he take a moment, everyone watching quietly in anticipation, before starting. I pledge. Izuku doesn't even try to hide his smile, that I'll be number one. Instantly, the blonde is met with vehement opposition and booing. Shinsu releases a heavy sigh almost scowling, while Izuku chuckles, fully knowing that his former bully wasn't playing around. One of Bakugu's classmates, someone who reminded Izuku of a certain pro hero, yells at the blonde, attempting to reprimand him while his arm goes up and down in a chopping motion. Bakugu turns, bringing his arm up in a thumbs down, looking calmly over the boisterous students, at least become a nice bouncy step for me to jump off of. How overconfident can you get? I'll crush you. Izuku hums in quiet disagreement. He's certainly changed since middle school. That wasn't his usual style of confidence. His eyes follow the teen as he walks back down to his class. Have you met your match? Back you go. Now, let's get started right away. Midnight takes control again. The first game is what you'd call a qualifier. Every year, many drink their tears here. Izuku leans over to Shinsu, whispering, yummy, just what I like. He smiles when the other snorts. Now, here is the fateful first game. Midnight brings her whip out with a flourish as the digital wheel spins. This year, it's this, an obstacle course race. Izuku mumbles, pressing his right thumb on his lip in thought. Midnight goes on to explain. 
All 11 classes will participate in this race. The course will be the outer circumference of this stadium, about 4 kilometers. Our school's selling point is freedom. She seductively lips her lips, looking from the side. As long as you stay on the course, it doesn't matter what you do. Now, take your places everyone. The student body moves hastily to the starting line. Izuku and Shinsu included. Izuku makes sure to keep Shinsu from getting too far in the wave of students. You don't want to get stuck. Shinsu nods in agreement. You got a plan. Shinsu stays silent, pondering for a seconds before nodding again. Yeah, pretty sure I can do this round by myself. You good? Of course. Izuku grins. Shinsu looks up at the three green lights. Good luck. You too. One by one, the lights blink off, until, finally, the last one. Start. Instantly, it was chaos. Everyone rushed forward, ramming into each other as they tried to get through the limited space in the gate. Izuku let the people push him forward, not bothering to try to snake around anyone due to the crampedness, and he also tunes out present Mike and his unwilling guest. He lost Shinsu within seconds, but he wasn't worried about the mail. He trusted that the other knew what he was doing. Izuku grunts when an elbow hits him in the face. Feeling his nose ache, he continues to get pushed around, and he tries to keep his head up away from flailing limbs when a freezing chill enters the tunnel. He follows his gut feeling to jump onto the back of the guy in front of him, and his gut is proven right when the people around him gets their feet frozen. He sympathetically pats the guy on the shoulder that's got a sting. He moves himself more up the guy, ignoring his annoyed shouts and hands trying to get him off, making it onto his shoulders. He carefully hops onto the shoulders or backs on people with an apology, trying to keep his landing soft to prevent any bruising, until he gets to a part of the crowd where the ground can be seen. There is ice is covering it, and Izuku stumbles on the slippery element as he gets down. He waddles forward, experimentally sliding around at a good enough pace, before coming to uncovered ground, where he takes off running at a faster speed. He goes past many other people, even some he recognized from the well-known hero class, until he stops, watching a small purple figure soar through the air, yelling at the producer of ice confidently, until he is swatted away, and Izuku can't hold back a sudden huff of laughter. It dies away when he looks up at the towering appearance of robots, their bright red eyes focusing on the many students who made it past the ice. Izuku takes a small step back, eye twitching. This is what they had to fight in the entrance exam. Good thing I didn't even try taking it. Target found. Lots. Obstacles have shown up suddenly. Present Mike narrates way too excitedly. Starting with. The first barrier. Robo Inferno. I don't know what these robots can do, and there isn't a safe way past them. Izuku narrows his eyes in thought. Gonna have to wait until someone takes them out before trying to go forward. The zero-point villain in the middle strikes first. But the ice guy in the lead is quick to use his quirk. He swings his right arm forward. And ice instantly appears, freezing the menacing machines. He doesn't waste any time already running in between their legs, which a lot of student notice. Izuku doesn't move, taking a couple steps back, not trusting the frozen figures. His distrust is proven correct when he could hear the muffled warning coming from the Elsa wannabe, telling them not to follow. The robots fall towards the students, landing onto the ground with a giant crash, bringing a dirt cloud to make Izuku close his eyes, not wanting anything to get in them. Todoroki from Class 1A. He attacked and defended in one hit. How elegant. Amazing. Present Mike is quick to compliment. He's the first one through. It's, you know, practically unfair. His actions are logical and strategic. Aizawa is simple and to the point, an obvious difference from his friend, as expected of someone who got in through recommendations. He'd never fought them before, but those robo-infernos couldn't get past his elite moves. Izuku clicks his tongue when the fallen robots reveal a new wave of unfrozen ones, all coming closer with intention to hold the competitors off. I have to get past these robots while also paying attention to the obstacles around me. Come one, think. Izuku puts on a strained smirk, mind racing. Now what? Hey, someone's trapped underneath. Wouldn't that kill them? Someone yells. Izuku bites the inside of his cheek, slightly worried. Suddenly, some ice begins to break, coming from the inside, and out busts a redhead with a shout, like I'd die. Kirishima from class 1 was underneath. That's crazy. Kirishima growls. That bastard, Todoroki. He timed it on purpose so it'd be right when they fell. He keeps on yelling, as if the other could still hear him. If it hadn't been me, someone would have died. Then, another part of the ice breaks, that class A. And out comes the loud one from class 1B, really is filled with bastards. Tetsu Tetsu from class B was also underneath. That's crazy. Present Mike yells. Tetsu Tetsu unknowingly copies Kirishima's line. Then the two start running. Wait, you little. Izuku sighs in annoyance, looking over when a student from 1B suggests that everyone work together to advance, when abrupt explosions steal his, and everyone else's, attention. He looks up to see Bakugu making his way up and over, almost gracefully doing so without getting hit like that one purple guy. Class 1A's Bakugu. 
since the bottom's blocked, he goes overhead. Clever. However, the blonde's classmates are quick to follow, strategically using their quirks to go over as well, all while the audience cheers. Other Wana students continue forward, all using their quirks and many other students, including Izuku. He runs forward, jumping out of the way when he is attacked. He notices a piece of armor from one of the robots, most likely when that Elsa guy froze them and he snatches it. That robot will lock onto the target, tracking it. Izuku watches behind with his peripheral eyesight. I'll make it build up some momentum. And then, he swings the piece of metal forward, spinning around. It won't be able to stop. He breaks off the robot's arm, its fuses revealed. But he doesn't stop, continuing to keep going after finishing his spin. His mind is rushing through the possibilities and advantages of keeping the scrap with him. Surely, it'll be useful for something. He slows down when he sees a group of robots and people, stopping, and then watches as a lot of the robots come falling down with a loud bang. He looks over to see a ravenet with a whole cannon, her shirt wide open, and he can't help but wonder what her quirk is. She sprints forward, and Izuku returns his focus forward, not wanting to lose the chance of the clear pathway. He goes at a fast speed, trying to ignore how the metal piece was digging into his arm, and how his lungs were already burning for air. Hey, hey, the first barrier's a piece of cake. Izuku's eye twitches in high annoyance, wondering when to start blocking his homeroom teacher's excitement out. Then what about the second? Izuku groans when he sees the tightropes leading across a deep cavern, sucking in gulps of air as he slows. If you fall, you're out. If you don't want to fall then crawl. The hero's voice is definitely full of way too much energy. Did someone let him have a lot of sugar? It's the fall. One green-haired female keeps going, crawling across the rope with ease. Another girl starts muttering loudly, here it is. Here's my chance to show off. She's covered in gadgets of all sorts, making Izuku assume that she's in one of the support courses. It's time for my babies to be in the limelight. She brings her arms out, showing herself off. Look, all you support companies across the country. She lists off the qualities of her babies, and Izuku moves his attention back to the situation at hand, even as she hurls herself off the cliff. He swiftly ties the scrap metal onto his back, chooses a rope, and gains a tight grasp, making himself flip over, upside down. He shimmies across, attempting to go as fast as he can as he watches other students go ahead. Should have made Aizawa sensei work more on balance or something. This is both terrifying and annoying at once. He finally gets across, climbing up onto the ledge and untying the armor, starting to run while placing it in his arms again. He grits his teeth as he hears that first place was already to the next obstacle before furrowing his brows, wondering when he started to care about winning. He didn't want to be a hero after all, this was for Shinsu. He makes to the third obstacle and he is quick to notice that it's explosive mines. He could see Bakugu and one of his classmates up ahead, and he taps his foot in impatience, tossing and crossing out ideas mentally. Then he stuffs the piece of metal into the ground, an idea circulating his brain and being put into process. He experimentally digs up a mine with caution, and once he finds that nothing happens, he hastily goes for more. Landmines used for games. Beads of sweat fall down his cheeks, the type with fuses that go off if you step on them. They're not that powerful, but if I lose my balance and set off a bunch of them, I'll lose a lot of time and look stupid in the process. His heart was racing in anticipation, and adrenaline raced through his veins. If I take injuries and stamina into account, it'd be better to slow down and avoid them. Those who can jump can't do so carelessly either, and the further ahead you are, the more landmines you'll have to avoid. No one can probably go very fast with the risk of setting one off. He brings a hand to wipe at his cheek, feeling the flushed skin. Everyone was more cautious at the beginning, meaning there are a lot of mines left to use. Gotta make sure not to be impatient, or I'll accidentally blow one up. This better work, damn it. He looks down at the pile of mines, deeming the amount enough. He wraps the black strap around his hand, making sure it were tight enough to not slip away. And he brings the metal out of the dirt, making sure it was completely in front of him, before doing the second most stupidest thing in his life. He recklessly jumps forward onto a group of mines, creating a large pink explosion. There's a huge explosion at the back. Present Mike incredulously cries out. What's with that force? Izuku resists the urge to scream out in fear or an adrenaline-caused giddiness, trying to keeping the now-flying vessel from tilting forward, his grip making his knuckles turn white. Was it an accident? Or did he do it on purpose? Gen at 1 degrees Celsius Midoriya is in hot pursuit with that blast. Izuku's loose strands of hair blew wildly in the wind as he flew above everyone who was ahead of him. Actually, he's taken the lead. What? Izuku blinks away the stinging tears that came from his dry eyes, and he looks down, meeting the eyes of Elsa and Bakugu, both looking extremely angry. Damn, there's so much force. Shit, shit, shit. How the hell am I gonna land? D.A.K.U. He could hear Bakugu screech. Don't go ahead of me. Too late for that. The two formerly in the lead have stopped trying to slow each other down and are chasing Midori. Now that they have a common enemy, 
They've stopped fighting. Izuku grounds. The fight's not over yet though. Izuku watches as both the ground and the two students get closer. And at this rate, he was heading head first into the ground if he doesn't think of something quick. He could feel panic erupt within his entire being. And the first idea that comes to mind is the one executed. He tightened his grip on the strap, pulling the metal it was attached to down, in between the two other males, hitting the landmines underneath. The reaction is instantaneous, and another explosion is set off, sending Izuku forward with gritted teeth into a slightly clumsy roll that allows him to get back onto his feet with speed. He just keeps running forward, as quick as he can, blocking out every other sound. He could tell that the other two were gaining up on him. But as he raced through the exit tunnel, he kept going, chest and legs burning, the light at the end shining into his eyes as he runs into it. Luai, who could have predicted this outcome when the trial began. Right now, the first person back in the stadium is that man, Midoriya Izuku. He's made a huge splash. This certainly isn't how Izuku planned for the first round to go. Izuku pants like a dog, strands of hair falling into his face as sweat drips down it. He looks around, dazedly watching confetti fall and the faceless crows of people cheering cheering for him. He didn't mean to get first place, only to get in the passing group of students, only doing this for Shinsu. How did I get first place? He turns around, planning to watch for Shinsu to come through the exit gate, when his eyes meet turquoise and grey. The owner of the heterochromatic eyes was Elsa, and boy did he look pissed. They stare at each other before Elsa walks off, and Izuku takes a deep breath, returning to his plan. He watches until he sees a head of purple hair, quickly recognizing it as Shinsu's. He rushes over to him. Hey, he calls out, making Shinsu look at him. He is met with a look, the other's brow rising. What? He doesn't say anything. I didn't mean to get first place. I don't even know what happened. Shinsu snorts. Sure, mister I don't want to be a hero. Izuku groans loudly, covering his face with his hands. He and Shinsu make their way over to a less crowded area, all while he pats down some of his hair that went out of place during the race, making sure the hairstyle his friend put it in was still holding strong. He ignores any lingering stares coming from all around him, people most likely scrutinizing him due to the fact that he, a student in the general studies course, had won first place without using his quirk. He asks Shinsu how he had gotten through, and that's how the two spend the waiting time. Finally, midnight returns. The first game of the first year stage is finally over. Now, take a look at the results. The screens all around the stadium show off each placement, starting at number 1 with Izuku. Elsa, or Todoroki Shouto as the screen said, didn't look too pleased and neither did Bakugu, despite the fact that both got a high placement. Izuku didn't bother to try and memorize each of the placement's owners, only taking time to remember Todoroki's name since he'll probably try and kill him sometime soon. He already knew Bakugu's name. The top 42 made it through to the next round. It's unfortunate, but don't worry even if you didn't make it. The pro licks her lips. We've prepared other chances for you to shine. The real competition begins next. The press cavalry will be all over it. Give it your all. She cracks her whip upward, showing off the wheel once again. Now then, here is the second game. I already know what it is, but what could it be? What could it be? She slips down her red glasses and raises an arm up to show off the result. I just said it, and now here it is. The screen read, Cavalry Battle. Izuku peeks over at Shinsu, leaning in. Guess we'll be working together during this. That is, if they allow for us to pick and choose. Shinsu nods. Let me explain. Midnight turns around looking at the screen, which changes to a picture of All Might being lifted up by present Mike in 13. The participants can form teams of two to four people as they wish. She looks over her shoulder. It's basically the same as a regular cavalry battle, but the one thing that's different is the pause is for dramatic effect, though it only makes Izuku yawn. Based on the results of the last game, each person has been assigned a point value. Already, some classmates and one are discussing it, and Midnight swings her whip at them, gaining their attention. You guys don't hold back even though I'm talking, huh? She continues, yes, that's right. And the points assigned go up by 5 starting from the bottom. The screen shows how many points each place earned. So 42nd place gets 5 points, and 41st gets 10 points. And the point value assigned to 1st place is 10 million. Izuku blanches, 10 million. Instantly, he could feel targeting stares aimed at him, and he tenses, wishing for some high being to smite him down and end his suffering. That's right. It's survival of the fittest, with a chance for those at the bottom to overthrow the top. Is it too late to run away? Izuku raises his hand, face fully serious, can I drop out? Midnight looks slightly stunned before laughing. That depends on why, Midoriya. She smirks, peeking up to the booth where present Mike and Eraserhead were. Though I doubt he will allow it. I didn't mean to get first place, and I don't even want to be a pro hero. Izuku trails off, hearing the rumbling that erupted in the crowds of people. Shinsu places his hand on his shoulder, and Izuku is reminded of the reason he's here. Uh, Midoriya, put your hand down. 
Izuku's eye twitches, right, sorry, never mind, continue Midnight Sensei. He rubs the back of his neck, feeling the stares, which act like daggers, piercing him. He couldn't stop himself from hunching his shoulders, subconsciously attempting to shrink right where he stood. He lets out an aggravated sigh, anxiety and annoyance making him irritated. It felt like junior high in the years before that. The stares, the mumbling, the judgment. What even is his quirk? Not sure, he didn't seem to use it in the first round. He looks so weak. How did he even make first place? I'm surprised he's from Gen Ed and not from one of the hero courses. The worst part is that they didn't know he was quirkless yet. Now then, I will explain the rules of the cavalry battle. Midnight is quick to take back attention, swinging her arm outward, whip following. The screen she was showcasing changed, showing a picture of All Might being lifted by three people. The time limit is 15 minutes. Each team is worth the total of its members' points, and the riders will wear a headband with that number on their forehead. A large 50 appears on screen, showing the total points added together. Teams will try to grab each other's headbands until time runs out and try to keep as many points as they can. Stolen headbands must be worn from the neck up. The screen then shows All Might wearing the headbands as an example. So the more you steal, the harder it'll be to manage them. And the most important thing is that even if your headband gets stolen, or if your team falls, you're not out. The pro hero points her whip at the students, grinning. Izuku peeks over at Shinsu, who also looks at him and they both nod. Midnight continues. During the game, it'll be a cruel fight where you can use your quirks, but it is still a cavalry battle. You'll get a red card for attacks that are trying to make people fall on purpose. You'll get removed immediately. Now, you have 15 minutes to build your teams. The screen turns into a timer, showing 15 minutes. Start. Izuku quickly turns to Shinsu. Okay, he starts. We need at least one other person to join our group. I'm not sure who would be willing to join, considering it seems we're the only general studies students that made it past the first round. All students in both hero courses were able to pass, but there's one spot for someone outside of the courses and us. Maybe we should try to find them and see if they'll join or not. Just as Shinsu opens his mouth to respond, a random voice butts into the conversation. No need to search. Both boys startle at the random appearance of a pink-haired girl with a huge grin. Team up with me, first place. Izuku blinks. Who? I'm Hatsume, from the support course. She raises a hand to her goggles, lifting them onto her head to show her yellow eyes. She confidently puts her hands on her waist. I don't know you, but let me use your position. Izuku goes to looks at Shinsu but leans back when Hatsume gets into his face. If I team up with you, then I'll inevitably become part of the team everyone's watching most, right? She leans in closer, her eyes bright and wide. If that happens, then my super cute babies will inevitably be seen by the big companies. She leans in again, and Shinsu has to place a hand on Izuku's back to keep him from falling. That means, in other words, that those big companies will see my babies. Duh. Vice. Okay. Shinsu mumbles, brows knitting together in bewilderment as he watches Hatsume gush about how much her babies would help them. And I think you guys will also benefit. Hatsume opens up a box, showing off her loving equipment with exuberance and pride. The support course develops equipment that helps heroes deal with their quirks. I have a ton of babies, so I'm sure you'll be able to find one that you like. Izuku goes to say something when the girl continues. Oh, has this one caught your eye? She lifts one of her creations, carefully holding it up as to make sure it doesn't fall. I made this based on a certain hero's backpack adding my own original twist to it. Izuku's eyes light up slightly in realization. You talking about Air Jet? Hatsum giggles in response, affirming his guess. The green-haired teen turns to Shinsu. It's up to you if we take her or not. I'm not sure that many people would want to join our team though. Shinsu shrugs, placing a hand on the back of his neck. No point in not letting her join. Good thing it isn't just us. I doubt we'd get far with my quirk and your brain. Brain? Izuku gives a lazy grin. I'm afraid that things ran off a long time ago. I'm a certified dumbass working on stupidity at the moment. Then I guess we're screwed. Shinsu snorts, shutting his tired eyes in amusement for a long second. Excuse me. The group of three turned to the new voice. I was wondering if you'd be willing to have me on your team. Now then, it's about time to get started. The alarm blares, and Midnight stretches her arm over her chest, the separated handcuffs jingling on her wrists. After 15 minutes to form teams and talk strategy, present Mike exclaims, 12 cavalry teams are lined up on the field. Aizawa's tired voice comes over the stadium as he comments, there are some interesting teams out there. Now, raise those battle cries. It's time for UA. S bloody battle. Light the signal fire. Izuku rolls his eyes, shifting to get a better hold. He looks up to Shinsu, who is placing the team's point count of 10,270,000 around his neck. Then he looks over to his two other teammates. He takes a deep breath, cooling the nerves that randomly appeared in the pit of his stomach, and exhales, humming slightly. You know everyone's gonna come after us, right? Shinsu snorts, and whose fault is that? 
Last I checked, I only had 80 points, Mr. 10 million. Oh, piss off. I didn't mean to get first place. I was just focusing on getting through to the next round so that I can help you. Technically, this is your fault. Izuku looks off to the side, definitely not pouting. Thanks a lot, Shinsu. Hatsum beams, giggling. Thanks to Shinsu, my babies will get the recognition they deserve. Maybe I should have chosen a less energetic team. Takoyami shuts his eyes. Dark shadow curling out excitedly in front of him. Can't go back now. Takoyami, Izuku smirks, chuckling darkly. You're stuck with us until the next round. Shinsu finishes, letting his teeth bared smile appear on his face. Takoyami sighs. What madness. All right. You've made your teams, right? I'm not gonna ask if you're ready or not. The audience cheers loudly as the pro starts the match. Now, let's go. Counting down to the brutal battle royal. 3. Izuku narrows his eyes. You ready? Hell no, Shinsu responds. 2. This is weird to say, but we can do this, guys. 1. Hatsum grins wildly, while Takoyami nods. Aw, oh, he cares. Shut up. Midnight finishes, cracking her whip with a yell. Start. Team Shinsu stays in place, watching as herds of teams came running. An attack without delay, ha. Huh. Takoyami muses. The fate of the pursued. Make your choice, Shinsu. Midoriya. Shinsu looks down at Izuku, a bead of sweat dripping down his face. Midoriya. We gotta get to somewhere less populated. Too many teams like this isn't good for the plan. Midoriya narrows his eyes, though they widen in surprise when the ground beneath him becomes soft. Crap. I won't let you. The silver guy from earlier shouts, eyes full of determination. Izuku clicks his tongue. We're sinking. He racks his brain for a coherent idea, eyes moving all over the place until they land on Shinsu's back. Shinsu, the jet pack, get into the air and fly to somewhere that isn't dangerous. The rules didn't say anything about riders getting into the air. Right. Shinsu brings the button upward. Then he orders, turn your heads. The jet pack comes to life, and Shinsu goes up into the air with the grace of a newborn fawn, nearing turning upside down when he has to avoid multiple green vines. Izuku forces himself to bring his eyes back down to the team closest to them. He shouts to them, our points are in the air, away from us. No point in sticking around. He'll have to come back sometime. One of them yells back, though Izuku doesn't know their name. He could tell the team was made up of 1B students, seeing as how 1B has a weird grudge against 1A, but he didn't recognize any of them. Izuku puts on a smug look. He has enough fuel to stay in the air the whole round. You'd just be wasting your time. Why not go after another team? Like one of 1As, he bluffs and uses the rivalry against the classes, hoping that it'd be enough to get them to go away. Some of the teams that had charged towards them earlier had already backed off, while some looked on, tense and ready to strike if needed. The team talks to each other, voices quiet enough to not be able to understand most of the conversation, before reaching a decision. Fine, let's go. Izuku releases a sigh of relief, watching the team back off. The teams who had stayed seemed hesitant to even still be there, and a few more moved on, perhaps to go after Shinsu or other teams. I'm surprised that worked. V, my babies are amazing. But you know it doesn't have unlimited fuel, right? Hatsum asks, looking over to Izuku. Yeah, which is why we need to get out of here and over to Shinsu. Can't waste too much. Never know when we might need him to go off again. Izuku tries to lift his leg out of quicksand-like ground only to be met with resistance. You think your rocket shoes could get me out? Hatsum nods, her dreadlocks flying every which way, of course. Izuku feels the shoes turn on, and he slowly inches upward until he shoots up out of the ground, some of it splashing around due to the force. He drops down on normal ground and makes his way over to Takoyami. He stops in front of him. You guys don't have the shoes. Can Dark Shadow get you guys out? The Dark Teen puts on a thoughtful expression, perhaps. Dark Shadow. Right. The sentient being wraps their shadowy arms around their master and pulls. Takoyami gradually rises out of the dirt and is placed on the hard ground. He praises his guardian before telling them to get Hatsum out as well. They quickly pull Hatsum out, and the Izuku quickly looking into the sky to search for Shinsu. There, he points, he's on the far side, and there's a bunch of teams under him. We gotta go. The team hastily make their way to their rider, dodging other teams fighting and anywhere that the ground was messed with. Soon enough, they make it to the edge of the small crowd of teams under Shinsu. Said purple-haired teen was carrying a slightly nervous expression, which makes sense, considering how he constantly had to move away from oncoming air attacks. Izuku takes in the situation, eyes looking over the hero students aiming to get their points. He turns to his group. Okay, okay, we, uh. He looks back to Shinsu before shaking his head. Sorry. Okay, we should probably get away from these teams. Sorry, probably should have thought of this faster. We'll get Shinsu to come back to us, and Dark Shadow can make sure he doesn't die, but to make sure no teams intercept him, we need to move away. Understood, Takoyami says, nodding. Hatsum coos. Isn't my baby amazing? Keeping him in the air for so long. Very, Izuku chuckles. Let's go then. 
The team moves away to a less populated area before Izuku shouts to his friend, Shinsu. Shinsu looks over to Izuku, quickly finding the head of green curls and, soon after, his other teammates. Izuku taps around his neck, making sure the other can see the motion. Shinsu's face twists in slight confusion before it turns smooth with realization. He tugs the headband off and holds it out like he's offering a toy to a pet, to which the groups under him eyeball accordingly. He gives a teeth-bearing grin and releases the high point value, letting the slight wind carry it away. W-O-A-H, W-O-A-H, W-O-A-H. Getting rid of their points. What is Team Shinsu doing? Clearly, they have a plan. Eraserhead simple states. Shinsu flies over to his team, but he hovers over them, not knowing how to get down. Izuku looks over to Takoyami, and the bird-headed male nods, so he yells again, Turn the jetpack off. We'll get you, but you have to turn it off. Shinsu looks at him like he's crazy for a split second. He takes a deep breath, mutters something, and hesitantly presses the button that turns the support item off. Then, he is falling, limbs flailing, while Dark Shadow goes to catch him. Shinsu lands in the sentient being's arms and is brought back down to the those on the ground, who are already in proper formation again. Shinsu lets out a puff of air, holy sh, I do not recommend that. Fuck, 0 out of 10. Would not do that shit again. There are children around, Shinsu, language. Shut the fuck up, Midoriya. What do we do now? Thought that was obvious. Izuku looks up at him, grinning, time to show off that wonderful quirk of yours. Shinsu secures another headband around his neck as his team quickly scurries away from the one they stole from. He calls back, you might want to give him a little shove. Izuku chuckles as he hears one of the blondes scream at them in displeasure. Super glad we have Takoyami and Hatsum on our team, or you definitely would have gotten K by one of those long-range quirks. Happy to be here. Hatsum beams, elated to have the chance to present her beautiful babies. Before Takoyami can get a word out, someone screeches, D-E-K-U. Izuku flinches, his smile stiff. I really should have expected this. He hangs his head and sighs, looking defeated, before looking over to the voice. Bakugou. Hey, man. It's been a while, how have you been? He watches for a full second as Bakugou gets close. We may wanna start getting away. This probably isn't gonna move. Izuku pulls on Shinsu's arm, bringing him down into the side, as Bakugou suddenly reaches a hand towards their headbands with a shout. The blonde is brought backwards, a white tape-looking rope wrapped around him, and Izuku releases Shinsu quickly ordering, Shinsu, use her quirk. We need to get away. And Dark Shadow isn't good with Bakugou's quirk, so we don't have a good defense. Shinsu pushes himself back up and turns, yelling, Hey, Mr. McBlasty, have a... Bakugou growls, what you just... His face smooths out, his eyes blank. It is certainly a strange sight to see. Bakugou, Bakugou, suddenly... There are multiple explosions, and Izuku peeks back before turning back, his eyes wide. Oh my god, go. Class is too simple-minded. He got us. What do you say, bastard? One of 1B's teams had snagged Bakugou's points, and Izuku didn't want his team to be next. Team Shinsu managed to get some distance away from the fight happening behind them when a wall of sharp ice juts out in front of them. Izuku mutters, crap. Before them stood another team, and the one leading them was the guy Izuku recognized to be the one he has been calling Elsa in his head. Around Elsa's head was the original point value Shinsu had around his neck. We're gonna have a hard time getting out of this one, guys. Shinsu sucks in a deep breath. Wow, I am not at all surprised that someone from Wana has the 10 million points. He glares, slightly bitter. All the better that it's Endeavor's amazing spawn. Elsa's eyes narrow and his frown deepens, but he doesn't utter one word. What? Not gonna talk to someone from 1 degrees Celsius? Are we too low class for you to say anything? Izuku also frowns but he knows his friend is trying to rile the other up into speaking. He goes onto the balls of his feet in order to get as close to Shinsu's ear as he can. I don't know how we're gonna get out of this, considering we have less than half of the original time left, but if anything, make sure to stay on his left side. He hasn't been using the other half of his quirk. Of course that fact makes him a bit angry, but he's not gonna think about that right now. Elsa's eyes lock onto him. He must have heard Izuku's observation. There is the sound of feet hitting the ground, which makes everyone look behind Elsa's team. There are multiple groups of people running towards them, most likely after Elsa's points. Izuku groans. This just so much worse. Ada, Elsa commands, leaning slightly forward, forward. The teen, Ada, in the front activates his quirk, which looked to be engines in his calves, right. Elsa continues to order his teammates, and Izuku can't ignore the mention of electricity. He quickly looks over at the guy on Elsa's left and deduces that he's the one with the electric quirk. They're gonna shock. 1.3 million volts. Dark Shadow reaches out in front of the group as bolts of lightning strikes the multiple team. Izuku scrunches his eyes closed, the electricity being too bright. And he could feel the tiny hairs on his arms rising from the slight voltage that made it past Dark Shadow. 
His hair is going to be a frizzy mess once this was over and done with. The bright attack finishes, and Elsa tosses the blanket he used to keep safe and leaves a huge trail of ice, leaving those teams stuck. What? What he do? Present Mike questions, his voice loud. Todoroki took care of that crowd of teams in an instant. He froze them after Kaminari's shock stopped them. I guess it should be expected, but he took into account how a lot of people avoided it in the obstacle course. Don't we love a smart boy? Izuku asks rhetorically, panting and wishing he was at home instead of dealing with this. Him and his teammates were currently running away, while Shinsu kept an eye from behind, watching as Elsa's team stole points after points and leaving an ice wall to keep the teams from getting to them and to keep their team from going so far. He growls as the other group kept getting closer and closer. If only Hatsum's shoes were faster, said Girl Wines, I wanted to, but I didn't have enough time. Shoot, turn around, we can't get away. The teams makes a quick U-turn, the rocket shoes still keeping them moving, and Dark Shadow gets ready to defend in front of them. Midoriya, what do we do? Izuku's mind goes blank and he struggles utter any good or bad idea. Hi, hi, I don't know. I'll restrain them. Takoyami shouts, and Dark Shadow goes forward, reaching out towards the approaching team with a sentient claw. Yeyarazu, Elsa raises an arm, making sure to protect the headband. The girl, Yeyarazu, on his right instantly creates something to bar the attack. The metal item is discarded to the ground. Dark Shadow is sent back. Takoyami scowls, while Yeyarazu proudly smiles. Izuku notes, that girl, Yeyarazu's, quirk is too hard to deal with. No, Takoyami denies. Kaminari is worse. He quickly explains, with that level of armor, if it had been sunlight, Dark Shadow would have been ripped apart. Lovely, Shinsu groans, remembering Dark Shadow's weakness. With your quirk, it'd be best to devote yourself to defense, rather than offense. Izuku muses aloud. He was carefully putting on his pair of rocket shoes, while Hatsune was helping Shinsu put on the jetpack. Takoyami nods, indeed. My quirk's offensive ability increases the darker it is, but it becomes fierce and difficult to control. It continues. On the other hand, under sunlight, it becomes possible to control, but its offense becomes below average. He closes his red eyes before opening them, lowering his chin a bit. It's a very odd choice, under the circumstances of not being able to attack with my quirk, but please try using me. K. Okay. Izuku simply says and stands, brushing off any dirt that may have clung to his pants. Your quirk's pretty interesting to me, and I'm sure having Dark Shadow's defense will be good for us. Back good with you, Shinsu. Shinsu grunts, giving a thumbs up as he straightens his posture. As long as he keeps discharging electricity, attacking will be difficult. Takoyami looks at his partner, who had a scared expression. Dark Shadow will become timid. I'm against violence. Dark Shadow sniffs. The team suddenly ceases to move as they realize they've reached the border. Izuku stares at the oncoming team. Do they? Do they know about the decreased offense? Takoyami shakes his head. The only person I've told about this weakness is Koda, USJ, and he is a man of few words. Our only option is to bluff then. Izuku shares a short look with the dark team. If they don't know about it, then we can use it to hold them back. He narrows his eyes as he looks at the large scoreboard. We have enough points to make it to the next round, but if we lose any headbands, we're screwed. One minute. Present Mike continues to say more but Izuku ignores him, only listening to the important information. One minute's left. Dark Shadow stands guard before them, seeming to get ready to attack. Izuku looks at Elsa and ponders. He's purposely not using his left side. But why? The scar on the other's face is most likely a large clue. It has to have something to do with that. What happened to you, Elsa? He taps on Shinsu's leg to get his attention. He tells him as quiet as he can with Shinsu still hearing, stay on his left side, so right for us, stay right. Shinsu nods and passes the message on to Takoyami, while Izuku gives it to Hatsume. The team inches slowly to the right, keeping on Elsa's left, which the male quickly notices and glares. Eda says something to his team before kneeling slightly. Fire abruptly spews out of his engines as he shouts, make sure you get it, Todoroki. Torque over, the team shoots forward, and Izuku stares with wide eyes, stun, reciper burst. What? Izuku looks up and his eyes widen even more. They took our points. Shinsu scowls, after them. As long as they have Kaminari, we'll be at a disadvantage if we attack. Takoyami protests, and Dark Shadow shakes his head. Won't it be safer to try for other points right now? Hatsum nervously smiles, looking to both Izuku and Shinsu. Izuku objects, no. We don't have time in the ice blocks any way out. There are only chance. Go. Shinsu orders, and no one disagrees this time. They race over to Elsa's team, getting closer and closer before. Boy. Elsa turns his gaze towards Izuku. Why aren't you using your left side? It really pisses me off that you're only using half your quirk. People who half-ass like you don't deserve to become heroes. Elsa glares, his eyes piercing. Shinsu catches on to what Izuku is trying to do. Endeavors spawn. I bet you get anything you want. 
Perfect quirk, perfect life. Everything's perfect, isn't it? Don't act like. Got him, Shinsu pants, and his team rushes forward, not letting a second be wasted. Elsa's team tries to back up but Shinsu is able to grab onto a few headbands. He tears them off, accidentally jolting Elsa and making his left side flare up in flames as a reaction. However the purple-haired boy's team is already running away with their prize. Shinsu looks down, and shakily grins, Hello, old friend. It was the 10,270 points. After a slight moment of hesitation, Elsa yells, After them. Time's just about up. Start with the countdown. 10 seconds left. Kaminari. 9 seconds. Dark Shadow. 8 seconds. Half and half bastard. 7 more to go. Shinsu, six more, right, only half left, Geyarazu, four, damn Deku, three, two, one, time's up, Shinsu carefully steps off of his teammate's hands, in his hand, which is clenched tightly into a fist, is the band that has the numbers 10,270,000 on it, he lets his fist relax, he looks at Izuku, who lazily smiles, slightly trembling as the adrenaline rush slows, and grins, I, I don't even know what to say right now, don't say anything then, Izuku shrugs, chuckling, now, let's take a look at the top four teams right away. Present Mike excitedly shouts. In first place once again, Team Shinsu. Izuku zones out after hearing their team's placement, letting out a relieved sigh. He rolls his shoulders back, trying to get rid of the stress from those last few seconds. The anticipation made his heart race. The organ thumping in his chest, and now he feels the crash of the adrenaline high that had raced through his body. He kind of wants to go home. He sneaks a glance over to where Bakugu screams into the ground and lets out a snicker. Of course, he makes sure to be hidden mostly behind Shinsu. He doesn't want to die just yet. Izuku leans back against the white wall, wishing that the hallway that Elsa dragged him to was more shaded, at least where they stood. He lets out a yawn, covering his mouth politely, and raises an eyebrow. Well, he prompts, wanting to speed this up. The next event starts after lunch, and he wants to snack on something. I was overpowered. So much so that I broke my pledge. Elsa stares at him before looking down at his hand. Your team. Only one of you are from the hero course. Glad to know you know who's in your class. Izuku snarks, slightly defensive. If Elsa starts to talk shit about his teammates, he was in for the best verbal lashing Izuku could give, that's a promise. And pledge. What is he talking about? You made me use his quirk. Ah, so that's what he means. Elsa's hand clenches into a tight fist and Izuku crosses his arms. I'm pretty sure none of us made you use your quirk. Yeah, it may have been a reflex, but we didn't make you do anything. Izuku sighs. Can we get to the point? I have a feeling that's not all you want to talk about. Endeavors my old man. Izuku didn't like where this is going. I'm sure you know that he's been stuck as the number two hero for forever. Izuku breathes in through his nose as Elsa, or rather Todoroki, was going on about his father, and he averts his eyes, staring at the line where the sunshine could reach. He has a bad feeling curling up in the pit of his stomach. My old man has a strong desire to rise in the world. As a hero, he won a name for himself with crushing force. Because of that, the living legend, All Might, Izuku scrunches his nose, is a great eyesore to him. Since he couldn't surpass All Might, he moved on to his next plan. Izuku moves his attention back onto the teen across from him, green eyes slightly widening as they meet gray and blue. You, you've heard of quirk marriages, right? Oh, he definitely didn't like where this is going. Okay, hold on. Izuku raises a hand, interrupting the other. I'm just gonna assume that this is gonna take a horrible twist, so are you sure you wanna share this with a stranger? Like, if you're about to talk about childhood trauma, I'm not sure I'm the best person to talk to. He rubs the back of his head, fingers meeting the short ponytail there. Honestly, this is so random. I'm not trying to like. Dismiss. We'll go with that, dismiss what you're trying to tell me. Or at least what I think you're trying to tell me, but, uh, I'm literally just a random person. Todoroki looks at Izuku, quiet and with his mouth set in a straight line, before he says, you weren't using your quirk. Oh, oh, that's why he's here. How funny. I noticed that you never used your quirk, despite getting first place in both the first and second round. Izuku stays silent, his entire body feeling off. He wouldn't be to explain how, it just is. Todoroki continues. Quirk marriages. They were a problem for the second and third generation after superpowers appeared. Choosing a spouse based only on strengthening your own quirk and passing it on to your children, forcing people into marriage. The old-fashioned way of thinking brought about by a lack of ethics. He, Endeavor, that slimy bastard, is a man with both accomplishments and money. He won over my mother's relatives and got a hold of my mother's quirk. He is trying to fulfill his own desire by raising me to be a hero to surpass all might. Todoroki scowls deeply, face dark. He almost growls, eyes blazing, I won't become the tool of scum like that. Izuku can't push down the surge of empathy for the teen across from him. In my memories, my mother is always crying. Todoroki takes his hand out of his pocket, 
bringing it to the left side of his face, to his scar. Your left side is unsightly, is what my mother said as she poured boiling water on me. Izuku sucks in a sharp breath and his stomach twists, heat flashes and chills running up and down his body. He could tell that he was paling, he feels sick. I'll telling this specifically to you because you didn't use your quirk. RR. Izuku clears his throat, body slightly trembling. His voice is uncontrollably weak and small, something that he hasn't had happen in a while. Are you trying to say we're the same? I don't ever want to use my old man's quirk. No, I'll reject him completely by winning first place without using it. Todoroki looks at him, and Izuku stares at the ground in thought. The icy teen turns and walks out of the hallway. But Izuku is quickly grab his attention again. We are not the same, Todoroki. Izuku takes a deep breath before going to meet the other's eyes once again. I, I've gone through things you don't know about, and you've gone through things that I don't know about. I'm so sorry for all the shit you've been through, but if you think not using the other half of your quirk is gonna help anything, you're wrong. Todoroki glares, excuse me, your quirk is fire and ice, Endeavors is just fire. Hell, it has a different name from yours, I'm sure. It's not like you have two quirks, you only have one, and considering it includes ice and Endeavors doesn't, you're wrong to say that your fire side belongs to that pathetic excuse of a hero. Todoroki doesn't utter one word, and Izuku continues, Endeavor doesn't have control over how you use your quirk, but if you don't use it completely, he does have influence over it, whether you deny or accept it. Don't become a hero of spite. That's not what a hero is. Plus, Izuku clenches his fists, smiling sardonically, frustration swimming internally. It kinda pisses me off seeing you not use it to its full potential. Isn't it hypocritical of you to say that? Todoroki's face is stormy. He probably doesn't want to believe what Izuku said. Izuku humorlessly chuckles, you can't use what you don't have. Todoroki's eyes widen with quick realization. You're quirkless. Ding, ding, ding. Izuku walks out of the hallway and past the boy who stands frozen in place. His chest is tight, and his pace is fast. He needs to get out of here. Izuku is glad that Shinsu didn't ask anything when he sat down at the table, placed his head in arms, and groaned. He does, however, force him to sit up and eat some rice. Izuku couldn't ask for a better friend. Now that lunch is over, it's finally time to reveal the last game. But before that, there's good news for all of you who didn't make it to the finals. This is just a sports festival, so we've prepared recreational games that everyone can participate in too. We've even brought real cheerleaders from America to line things up. Huh, what are they doing? Izuku scrunches up his nose in distaste, watching as the two assholes who tricked the poor girls give each other thumbs up. Disgusting perverts. Honestly, Shinsu furrows his brows as he averts his eyes from the group of teenagers dressed in orange cheerleader uniforms. Maita, Kaminari, you tricked us, didn't you? Hey, Izuku's face holds realization. Is Maita the name of that guy that Aizawa sensei is gonna move out of his class? Shinsu acts disinterested, but Izuku knows better, pretty sure, yeah. Izuku hums and gives his full attention to present Mike. All right, everyone, let's have fun competing in the recreational games. The multiple TV. S that were in view of the huge audience change from their default screen to a screen showing off a pillar. When that's over, the 16 from the four teams that made it to the final round will duke it out tournament style, one-on-one. -on -one. For the usual, of course, Izuku tilts his head, smiling. Midnight holds up a yellow box with the word, lots, on it. Now, let's draw lots to determine the bracket. Once the bracket is determined, we'll have the recreational games and then start. The 16 finalists can decide whether or not they want to participate in the recreation. I'm sure some of you want to rest or save your strength. Now, from the first place team, excuse me, I would like to withdraw. Izuku, with a brow raised, looks over to where class B was, specifically at the male who was raising his hand. I believe that my place should go to someone on team Kendu. His classmates try to dissuade his decision, but he shakes his head. Everyone on Kendu's team has worked hard and I feel like I barely did anything to help my team. He looks up at Midnight, shrugging. It just doesn't feel right. Midnight stares down at the student before raising her whip. Youthful talk like that is something. She swings it, is what I like. Awais, I accept your withdrawal. Izuku leans closer to Shinsu, huffing through his nose like laughter, you can really tell she's into it. In that case, we'll have to move up one person from the 5th place cavalry battle team, Team Kendu. Are you sure? Honestly, our team didn't do much. Away smiles, giving a thumbs up, I'm sure. Izuku zones out with a tired sigh, ignoring as the team works out who's going to take the away guy's place. He yawns and leans his head against Shinsu's arm, resting his eyes. Shinsu tenses at first but relaxes, letting out an amused sound. A few minutes pass before the team gives their answer and Midnight takes the stage again. And so, Kendu has moved up to make 16. Midnight grins as she swings her red whip once again. This is the bracket based on the results of the drawing. Izuku keeps his head on his friend's arm but watches as the placeholders under each spot of the beginning brackets change and names take their places. 
Izuku's eyes widen, his posture straightening. Before he clicks his tongue, of course they'd want to set the two general studies students against each other. Shinsu crinkles his face in a glare but says nothing. Round 1. Midoriya Izuku vs. Shinsu Hitoshi. Siro Hanta vs. Todoroki Shouto. Shizaki Ibarra vs. Denki Kaminari. Hatsume vs. Ida Tenya. Honnaki Juzo vs. Ashido Mina. Yeyarazu Momo vs. Takoyami Fumikage. Hiroshima Ainjiro vs. Tetsu 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 Tetsu. Bakugu Katsuki vs. Kendu Itsuka. Izuku turns to Shinsu. I have a small feeling that this was on purpose, but who knows. What we do know is that the next round is gonna be hard to get through. He focuses his attention on the second pair of names under his and Shinsu's. Siro Hanta vs. Todoroki Shouto. I know I'm not looking forward to it. And, the first round. Shinsu looks to the side, frowning deeply. Izuku waves his hand. It'll be fine. We'll just... He shrugs, put on a show, really. I, right. Hey, Izuku moves in front of Shinsu's view, smiling. We'll get you through. Put on a little fight before showing off your quirks and more without giving away the trigger of course. And there won't be any hard feelings from me. I'm not trying to get into the hero course, you are. Shinsu nods but it doesn't seem like he feels any better. Izuku could feel his smile strain and he stays quiet. A strange feeling of guilt appears, and he assumes it because he doesn't like being the reason that his friend is feeling that way, but he squashes it down. Shinsu feel bad because both he and Izuku are in general studies, and why would two students not in the hero course try so hard in the sport festival? To get into the hero course, only one student will get to go through to the next round, to have the chance to get in, except Izuku doesn't want to get in, he doesn't want to be hero. Alright, let's leave the tournament for a momentary interlude. Let's have fun with the recreation. Izuku rolls his shoulders, shaking off any lingering nervousness. This was going to be his biggest performance he's ever done, topping the time where he had to lie his way out of a parent-teacher conference. He could hear the audience cheering in the crowd as present Mike announces both his and Shinsu's names. The first match of the first round of the finals tournament. Izuku steps out of the hallway, keeping his posture relaxed and his face disinterested. The gen and student who has been in first place from the last two rounds, it's Midori Izuku. Versus, across from his, Shinsu walks forward. He looks slightly nervous, not that those who are watching would notice, but he also looks determined. Also from general studies and the first placing team from the second round, Shinsu Hitoshi. Both of the students make their way up the stairs to the arena, half listening to the pro stating the rules. Izuku smirks at Shinsu, and Shinsu replicates the expression, bringing his hands out from his pockets. So how are we going to do this? I don't want this battle to be easy, the rest aren't going to be. Of course, Izuku brushes back a stray curl out from his face. We could just spar. Aizawa-sensei only taught us for two weeks but we still learned a few basic moves, did we not? Be a shame if we didn't show off what most generic gen ed students don't know. He tilts his head, giving a small smile. Let's have fun with it. This is probably the last time I'm ever going to be in the spotlight, so I might as well go out with a bang. Can't promise it'll be too large of a bang. Start. And so they sparred. Yes, they may not have known much yet, and boy, were they sloppy, but they were having fun. Izuku could help but grin, adrenaline pumping and heart racing, as he dodges Shinsu's fist. He kept his mouth shut, wanting to get a bit of fighting in before allowing Shinsu's quirk to come to play. Shinsu brings another fist forward, this time meeting Izuku's face. Izuku falls back onto the ground, a hand going to his face, but with a cheeky grin, he swings his leg, bringing Shinsu to the ground with him. Shinsu grunts in surprise, while Izuku pushes himself to his feet, taking a few steps away from the other, and chuckles. Guess I made you fall for me, he teases. Shinsu grins, getting back up, only for you, dear. Even though he had the chance, Shinsu didn't use his quirk on him, and they continue to fight each other, though the fight is borderline playful. Eventually, Izuku feels tired, and he could feel a warm trail of blood dripping from his nose, most likely from the punch. Shinsu fixes his posture, ready for the main act. Izuku pushes himself towards Shinsu, acting as if he is going to land an all-time powerful move. His grin widens, knowing full well what's going to happen next. Of course I am. Next thing he knows, he's standing past the border, the crowd quieting, and Midnight announcing, Midoriya, out of bounds. Shinsu advances to round two. The crowd erupts in noise. While he feels so elated that Shinsu is getting closer to his dream, he can't help but feel a small part of him starting to die. He lets out a breath of air and turns to Shinsu who is walking over to him. He smiles, GG. Dude, you did not just say that, Shinsu groans. People haven't used that in literal decades. Whatever you say, boomer. Shinsu harmlessly pushes Izuku, while the other snickers. In the finals, the first person to advance to the second round is Shinsu Hitoshi from Class C. Shinsu and Izuku walk towards the same exit, the green-haired male saying, you better win the next round for me. I didn't get a nosebleed for you to fail. Yeah, yeah, Shinsu rubs the back of his neck with his hand. 
Put all the pressure on me, it's fine. Suddenly, you were really cool, Shinsu. Midoriya. Good job. I was really surprised. You're the stars of general studies. You both showed everyone that we're more than the people who aren't in the hero's course. Izuku blinks. He looks at his classmates in surprise. And so does Shinsu. Besides, one of their classmates points at the pro heroes sitting behind them. That quirk would work quite well against villains. I wish I had it. Yue, that's not very smart if they're in general studies. Well, they've got a ton of people applying so some things can't be helped. Their classmate grins, you hear that? Guys, you're amazing. Izuku feels his throat close up a bit. He's never heard those words directed at him before. However, he quickly dismisses them. They don't know about his quirklessness. He peers over to Shinsu, who is still staring at them, the bright sun shining down. He smiles and moves forward, allowing Shinsu to bask in the moment. The purple-haired teen was going places, there's no doubt about it. He goes through the hallway and looks back to see Shinsu finally starting to follow. Suddenly, the temperature starts to rise, and Izuku instantly turns around to see the huge figure of the number two hero. He places a polite smile, the one he uses for those special costumers he has to deal with at Plus Ultra Food, and asks, Now, why would the number two hero be standing here when it isn't even your son's battle yet? Endeavor scowls. I know about you. I don't know how you cheated your way through this event, but, but, what? What's a pro hero gonna do to a quirkless freak like me? If anything, your reputation would get ruined. Better not let anyone else hear you say that, Mr. Endeavor. Izuku closes his eyes, smile widening and his body tensing. He is hoping that the bastard would go away before Shinsu made it, but his friend walks in, almost hesitant. He gets close to Izuku before whispering, What's the number one asshole doing here? As much as Izuku wants to chuckle, he simply states, I'm not quite sure. You, Endeavor growls, birds of a feather. How did a villain and a quirkless mistake even make it into Yue? Shinsu reels back, as if he was slapped. He mumbles to himself, villain. Ah, 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 Izuku tuts. He knows he has to get Shinsu away from situation. What did I just say, Mr. Endeavor? He also knows that he probably shouldn't be using such a condescending tone, but he could give less a shit. Did old age finally ruin your hearing? Does the number two need to retire so soon? Some weakling with a villainous quirk like his shouldn't expect to beat my masterpiece. Endeavor's eye twitches, but it seems he ignored Izuku's comment. Izuku could feel his blood start to boil. Man, I'm not even surprised. I've always expected that a flaming hot piece of garbage, like yourself, should be able to spew complete and utter shit from his mouth. He shakes his head, as if disappointed. He gently grabs Shinsu's wrist, not sure if the other would want anyone touching him but knowing they need to get out of here, and tugs him forward. If you'll excuse us, we have the next round to think about. They go fast, and Izuku isn't even sure where he ends up dragging Shinsu to, just somewhere quiet and without people. He carefully releases his grasp on Shinsu's wrist and takes a good look at him. Shinsu's face is pale, and the look in his eyes expresses anger and hurt. The TV that is on the wall announces that Todoroki Shouto continues on to the next round. Shinsu's face pinches, villain. He called me a villain, just like everyone else. Hey, Izuku softly calls. That's not true. Remember what our classmates said. What those pros said. Shinsu doesn't say anything. He leans against the wall and slides down, brows furrowed. He slightly curls up in a ball, placing a hand over his face. He grumbles, it's Todoroki next. How can I beat someone with such a powerful quirk like his? Why? His voice cracks. Why am I even trying anymore? A hero thinks I'm better off as a villain. Izuku crouches down next to him. Why are you even taking his opinion seriously? Shinsu stays silent once again. First of all, he's an absolute piece of shit, the worst. Second of all, just because he's the number two hero in society's eyes doesn't mean his opinion has to be considered valid. Why listen to the opinion of someone you know is an asshole over your favorite heroes? You randomly forget about Aizawa Sensei. Shinsu peeks over his hand, listening closely. Izuku smiles. Trust me when I say that even if you don't win against someone who has been forced to train for most of his life, this won't be the last chance for you. Aizawa Sensei will make sure of that. How are you so confident in saying that? Izuku grins. Because I'm talking about my friend. The one who challenged both of the hero courses. The one who found a cat and returned her with me. The one who's made it this far. The one who I can confidently say will become a wonderful hero, not a villain. Tha thank you, Midoriya, Shinsu chokes out. Izuku shakes his head. No need to thank me. Now, you want something to snack on. Drink. Gotta have energy for the next round. Where you're gonna do amazing, and things like these can be draining. Speaking from experience, a few more levels to go before you get to hear my tragic anime backstory, Shinsu. Izuku brings a foot up on his chair while he leans back, making sure he doesn't fall. He twirls a lock of loose hair and watches the round going on at the moment. He flinches back slightly at the sound of Bakugu's explosion, not being able to help himself, and his chair lands onto the ground with a clang. 
He narrows his eyes, keeping one on the orange-haired girl fight his former childhood friend. The girl, Kendu Itsuka, is from class 1B, and despite putting up a good fight, wasn't doing too well against Bakugu's painful quirk and amazing reflexes. Some pro hero starts booing Bakugu for not going easy on her, seeing as how she's just a frail girl, and Izuku scoffs. Sexist assholes, he mutters, glaring at the screen. He brings his attention to his friend, Eraserhead's voice scolding faintly in the background, and asks, How are you feeling? Shinsu takes a sip of his water before answering, Better. Still pretty anxious, huh? Izuku places his hand under his chin, holding up his head, peeking back up to the TV. He could see that the odds seemed to have turned toward Kendu. It's weird how well you can read me, Shinsu groans, running a hand through his messy hair. You're just a little more quiet than usual is all, Izuku chuckles, shaking his head. Been around you long enough to be able to tell, though it's not like you're loud or anything. Well, I guess we're best friends now, aren't we? BFF, S. Duh. Thought we already established this. My mistake, sorry. Better be. I got punched in the face for you, bestie. Shinsu rolls his eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He grabs the granola bar on the table and unwraps a part of it. Izuku goes back to watching the match, flinching every now and then with particularly loud bangs. Until finally Bakugo overpowers Kendu, the orange-haired girl falling to the ground after a good fight. He notices Shinsu glancing over when he reacts at Bakugo's quirk. And he curls into himself, bringing his other leg up onto the chair and wrapping his arms around both. Oh, Kendu. Present Mike trails off, disappointed. Oh yeah, Bakugo advances to the second round. If you're gonna do it, do it properly, Aizawa says with a sigh. Now let's pull ourselves together. Aizawa cuts it. You're really letting your personal feelings take over. The first round is all done. The blonde pro announces, and the audience cheers. Izuku peeks over at Shinsu when he hears a crinkle of plastic. Shinsu has the wrapper tight in his grasp, his knuckles turning white. Let's move on to the next round quickly after a short break. Izuku places his feet flat on the ground and stands. He looks down at Shinsu. We should probably start heading to the waiting room. It's a little ways away from here. Shinsu inhales deeply before nodding and getting up from his chair. They make their way out of the cafeteria, walking and turning down hallways until they reach Shinsu's waiting room. They don't bother going inside, seeing as how the second round is going to start soon. Shinsu turns to Izuku, digging into his pockets to give the other his phone. How the hell am I supposed to come close to beating Todoroki? He's probably gonna hit with me with a wall of ice before I can even say anything. I. Izuku looks at the ground after taking his phone. I'll be honest, I have no idea. If only we could have made or gotten a support item before applications were due, then maybe we'd have more to work with, but since you don't, I'm fucked. Love the optimism. Izuku curls a strand of hair around his finger before saying, just try your best. Like I said earlier, Aizawa sensei isn't gonna your potential go to waste, you know him. Dude loves that stuff almost as much as his sleeping bag. Shinsu rubs the back of his neck until he drops his arm. Right, now we've got everyone who's advancing to the second round. So, let's get started. Shinsu groans, moving towards the hall that will take him to the stadium. Before he opens it, Izuku calls out hesitantly. Hey, Shinsu turns back expectantly. You mind giving a message to Todoroki? You don't have to. Don't know how much I'll be able to say before I get frozen but sure. Izuku smiles. Tell him. Tell him that only he can decide what to do with his quirk, not endeavor. I can tell that's a loaded message but I'm not gonna ask. Shinsu raises a brow, takes a few seconds to look at Izuku, and then continues to walk down the hall. Izuku stares after him, a strange feeling welling in his chest. It's heavy, almost like a sense of loss. He shakes his head, wondering why his eyes were stinging slightly. With a sigh, he goes back through the hallways until he reaches a good place to watch the first battle of the second round in private. He didn't want to go up to his class section because it would be too loud up there and he didn't want a headache. He sits down, back against the wall, and looks up at the screen mounted on the wall, waiting. Thanks for waiting everybody. The first match of the second round is a big match. The man who won a huge victory in the first round and literally left the audience frozen, from the hero course, it's Todoroki Shouto. The cameras show the stoic teen walking up the stairs, his heterochromatic eyes narrowed slightly. Then, they switch to Shinsu, the purple-haired male looking calmly forward. On the other hand, this guy has won every challenge he's faced. What kind of fight will he show up this time? From the general studies course, Shinsu Hitoshi. Izuku could see Shinsu's mouth move and he assumes it's to pass on his message, seeing as how Todoroki's eyes widen slightly and then frowns, looking conflicted. At this sports festival, both have shown top-class performances. Let's hope they continue to put up a good fight. Now, the two students crouch slightly, getting ready to start, Shinsu vs. Todoroki. Start. Young Midoriya. Izuku freezes, his body stiff, while his blood turns cold. He keeps still for a few seconds before turning his head his eyes meeting electric blue eyes. He could hear the TV. 
making noise but he can't make out what it is. He can only hear the rushed beating of his heart in his ear. He shakily forces himself to stand, shuffling a few steps back. He mumbles, voice weak, All Might, All Might, in his skinny form, stands a few feet away from him. He has a surprised expression on his face, though there is also concern mixed with it. He moves forward a bit but stops when Izuku backs away even more. He falters slightly but tries a smile. Young Midoriya, it's been a while, my boy. Yeah, Izuku brings a hand to the strands of hair that framed his face, twirling them anxiously, it has. How have you been? I haven't seen you since. I I have to go, sorry. Izuku turns and runs in the opposite direction, ignore All Might's calls. He races down the halls, only focusing on getting away from the pro hero. By the time he even thinks of slowing down, his legs are burning and his chest aching. He stumbles to a halt after he starts hearing the presence of other people. The wall seems to be the only thing keeping him up as he pants for oxygen, sucking in as much air as he can at time. He keeps his eyes shut so his vision is dark, and he tries to focus on pacing his breathing so the side stitch will go away. He could tell that his body was trembling, concluding that it's probably from the sudden exertion and from. He shakes his head, straightening his posture and opening his eyes. He brings both of his hands to his chest, looking down at them as they shake. He forcibly pulls himself together, ignoring how his eyes smart and how his lips quiver. He reaches to the back of his head and carefully pulls the rubber band out of his slightly tangled hair. He brushes his hair so it hides his face, making sure his bangs cover his eyes. Once he knows that no one can easily read his face, he pushes forward to find a TV screen, one where there are only a few people nearby. He luckily stays unnoticed as he finds a good spot where there are only two other people. His arms are now wrapped around himself and he feels a pang of guilt when he sees that Shinsu's fight has ended, especially since he missed all of it, and that another one was already starting. He honestly feels like letting out a loud and long incoherent sound. He couldn't even tell Shinsu where to find him since his phone is with him. He rubs his temples, his head aching. He doesn't want to go back to the area where Shinsu's waiting room is, to where All Might could still be, but he really wants to meet up with his friend. Ah, uh, excuse me. Izuku jumps, startled. He slowly looks up to see a concerned brunette who is slightly shorter than him. She's holding two water bottles that are foggy and dripping with condensation, one in each hand. She has a small smile on her face. Are you okay? Izuku stares at her, a small sense of familiarity in his mind, before nodding, not trusting his voice to be strong enough. The girl doesn't seem to trust his answer, her eyebrows furrowing. Are you sure? I could get a teacher. And no, I'm fine. Okay, well, she holds out one of the water bottles, take this. I saw you looking nervous when I went to go get some water. I got two so I could give one to you. Whenever Izuku doesn't take it after a few seconds, keeping his eyes averted, she insists more. I promise I haven't opened, so please take it. Izuku peeks up at her face to see her inviting smile and pink cheeks. After a moment of thought, he carefully takes it, mumbling, thank you. The girl hums, her smile widening slightly. My name is Yuraka Achako, from 1A. What's your name? Midoriya Izuku. Izuku brushes back a strand of hair, feeling it poke his eye, one degree Celsius. He knows that he feels more calm because of Yuraka's cheery aura. She seems slightly pushy, but he thinks that because she's in the hero course, it's her way of being hero, checking on people who don't seem to be okay. And as long as she doesn't cross a line, Izuku doesn't mind. Plus, free water, he isn't complaining. Oh, she raises a finger, pointing at him with realization. You're the guy who got first place in the obstacle course, and you were in the first place team for the cavalry battle. You and the purple-haired guy were really cool in the first round too. She scratches her cheek with her finger, looking off to the side, slightly sheepish. I was honestly surprised when you lost. Izuku gives a slightly strained smile. Right, uh, I kinda need to. Oh, right. Yuraka nervously giggles. I guess you need to get back, huh? Izuku nods, and she takes a few steps back, waving. I'll see you later then. Izuku waves back, watching as she walks away, before glancing over at his hand and notices how wet it is. He wipes both his hands, one at a time, on his pant legs, fully knowing that they will only get wet again. He opens the water bottle and takes a few sips, feeling the coldness go down his throat. He takes a few deep breaths, forcing his shoulders to relax. He turns and walks to the hallway he remembers coming through. He builds as much courage as he can muster and walks forward. Let's hope that All Might knows how to take a clue. For the last time, stop saying sorry, Midoriya. I've been helping you this whole time and I missed the most crucial part of the festival. Of course I'm gonna feel like shit and apologize multiple times no matter what you say. Izuku traces a finger around the lid of the bottle, avoiding Shinsu's eyes. Shinsu sighs, rubbing the back of his neck before pulling on the collar of his new uniform. Todoroki had frozen him in ice, only melting it carefully with his fire when the round ended, leaving him soaked. He was then told to visit Recovery Girl to ensure his body temperature wasn't too low. The infirmary is where Izuku found his friend sitting on a chair, 
wrapped in a heated blanket and listlessly watching the next round. I know that you said I'm on a certain level or whatever, and I don't want to push, but something happened while I was gone. Izuku closes his eyes, squeezing them shut, as Shinsu continues. You don't have to tell me everything but could I have a hint? Or something. Izuku takes a deep breath. Right? Uh. He opens his eyes, peeking over at Shinsu, who waits patiently. I saw someone I've been avoiding and, uh, I ran away, which is why I didn't get to watch me lose to Todoroki. Shinsu finished for him, shaking his head as he looks back at the screen. See, it's not like you purposely didn't watch so stop with the apologies. Izuku goes to say something. Protest maybe, but he comes up with nothing. He rubs his face, his headache not subsiding, and he slumps in the chair he's sitting in. He heavily sighs, resigned. Right. He stares at his lap for a moment. I didn't get to watch you do your best. Shinsu hums, turning back to look at Izuku with his brow raised. Izuku repeats himself. I didn't just not get to watch you lose, I didn't get to watch you do your best. And that really pisses me off. For the past three weeks, I've been doing my best to help you because I want you to get into the hero course, and I'm angry at myself that I missed the last part of this journey thing. It's, it's. He covers his face with his hand, voice muffled as he finished. Frustrating. Shinsu averts his eyes, not knowing what to say. They sit in silence, the battle between a silver-haired guy from 1B and Takoyami happening in the background. Izuku cringes into himself from the awkward silence he has caused, bringing his hands down. He releases another sigh before standing and grabbing his water bottle. I, I'm gonna walk around. Shinsu grunts an acknowledgement, and Izuku walks out of the infirmary as fast as he can without making it seem like he was running away. His heart hurts, his head hurts, and his brain hurts. He wishes he could just stop thinking and stopping doing anything, to pause the world and resume when he's ready to continue. But he knows that he doesn't have the power to do that. So instead, he throws his empty water bottle into a nearby recycling bin and wanders around the halls, trying to replace his thoughts with song lyrics. Suddenly, he hears a familiar booming voice, and he instantly feels annoyance. He quietly gets closer to the wall and keeps next to it, peeking beyond the corner. He finds bright orange and his theory is proven correct. Endeavor is standing in front of his disinterested son, loudly scolding him. You need to stop this rebellious phase now. Acting like a child won't get you past all might. Izuku could see Todoroki roll his eyes, and honestly, he couldn't disagree. He takes a deep breath, rolling his shoulders back, and walks forward with artificial confidence. His chin is raised high enough, his hands in his pockets, and his stride steady. He is so done with today. Now, Endeavor, didn't we already have a talk today? You really need to stop letting all that trash come out of your mouth. You, Endeavor whirls around, growling. You stay out of this, you quirkless freak. Izuku raises his hand, waving it. Yeah, yeah, nothing I haven't heard before. Man, people really need to get more creative with their insults. I can't even count on my fingers how many times I've been called a freak. From the corner of his eye, he can see the younger Todoroki tense and look like he wants to step in. He widens his smile. Don't you know that only certain heroes can come over here? Last I heard, you don't work at UA. So you aren't permitted to be in this section. No one needs to know that was bullshit. Izuku doesn't even know where they are in the huge ass stadium. Yue really needs to stop spend so much money on things they don't need. Do we need to get security involved? Endeavor scowls deeply, eyes ablaze. But he clenches his hands into fists and stalks off with a We will talk more about this later, Shouto. Izuku doesn't drop his grin as the pro hero walks past him, making him stumble back with a grunt as the huge asshole purposely bumps into his arm. Izuku turns partly while rubbing his arm, watching Endeavor walk away. We have all this space and he can't go around me. Izuku jokingly rolls his eyes, being sarcastic. There's an awkward silence of where Todoroki was supposed to laugh. However, he goes, why did you do that? And that guy, your message. Izuku shrugs. I personally don't like seeing people getting verbally abused, probably just a thing from my job. And I'm sure you know what my message means. His voice goes quiet, like he is talking more to himself. Unless Shinsu said it weird, I don't know what exactly he said. Todoroki stares at him. He said it clearly, but he averts his eyes to the ground. I don't think I fully understand. That's okay, Izuku smiles. We got time before your next match. Do you want to talk about it? Please. Right. Let's walk around. The round between Bakugu and that other guy will probably take a while. And walking around would be nice instead of standing here, right? Izuku tilts his head a bit but flinches back when a strand of hair pokes his eye. Ah, uh, but first I need to pull my hair back. Good luck, Todoroki. Todoroki nods in thanks and goes off to fight his classmate. Izuku releases a sigh, letting his shoulders drop. He always have known that participating in the UA sports festival would include exhaustion. That was an easy observation he'd have when he used to watch the past years with his mother, but he was still washed in it. 
He honestly just wants to go home at this point but he doubt the heroes around here would let him leave without a note or something with permission to leave, especially because of the villain attack at USJ. Students are not allowed to leave school campus without a teacher's or guardian's permission as to keep account of every student who is present, don't want anyone getting kidnapped by villains, at least not under the school's watch. Izuku pulls out his phone to check the time but blinks in surprise when he sees he has a text message from Shinsu. Five minutes ago. Purple insomniac. Hey can we talk? Izuku twirls a loose curl that didn't make it into the half-up style he did earlier and unlocks his phone to reply with a, sure, where are you? Shinsu doesn't take long to respond with his location, the cafeteria, and Izuku forces himself to make his way there. He makes sure to look at any passing TV, as to catch glimpses of Todoroki's fight, and he quickly notices that the red and white-haired teen still isn't using his flames. Rome wasn't built in one day, or whatever the saying is. He's basically going through a huge mental process right now. Hopefully that talk still helped though. Maybe I should add an official therapist to the list of jobs I do. He could feel his stomach start to twist once he gets to the entrance of the cafeteria, and he takes a deep breath in an attempt to calm himself down. With one last exhale, he goes in and can instantly find Shinsu's head of indigo hair sitting at a table, mindlessly scrolling through his social media feed. Izuku walks over noticeably, not wanting to startle Shinsu, and takes a seat. Shinsu quickly powers off his phone and sets it down. He gives a small, unsure, hey, hi. Shinsu rubs the back of his neck. God, this is awkward already. Yeah, Izuku chuckles, giving a strained smile. Look, Shinsu averts his eyes. I just wanted to say sorry. For what? Izuku narrows his eyes and furrows his brows, confused. Shinsu stares at him for a second. You, you don't know. I mean, Izuku twirls a strand of hair nervously. I was the one who pissed you off and stuff. If anything, I should be apologizing. I did not expect you to be this type of person. Shinsu covers his face, sighing. You didn't do anything wrong. Don't try to deny it. It's the truth. Honestly, I wasn't even mad at you. I was mad at myself losing, and I took it out on you. I shouldn't have done that regardless, but I especially shouldn't have done that since you got spooked during my match. I should have gotten over myself and my bullshit, and I should have helped you like you did with me earlier. I'm sorry, Midoriya. Izuku's mouth is slightly agape as he struggles for something to say. He blinks. Uh, Midoriya. Still nothing. Did you? Did you malfunction? Or something? Izuku nods. Right? Okay. Um, I'll just. Shinsu lifts his phone, pressing his thumb onto the button to unlock it. Yeah. Izuku points his eyes to the table watching his tapping fingers in a daze. That was the first time he had gotten an apology in. A long time, and he honestly thought Shinsu was angry because he didn't watch his round, not because he lost. Maybe he's more oblivious than he thought he was. As he slowly came out of his daze, he kept an eye on the battle going on, Bakugou vs. Takoyami. As much as he hoped for Takoyami to win, he knew that Dark Shadow didn't have a good chance against the bright flashing of Bakugou's explosion. Hey, look at this. Izuku hums and turns to look at Shinsu's phone screen. Has there been another hero killer attack? Written by Haiskawa Sayori. In the Hasu Ward of Tokyo, there have been reports of an attack on a hero whose identity has yet to be released to the public. There is speculation that it has to do with the infamous hero killer who has been attacking and even killing pro heroes all over Tokyo. Read more. Izuku scrunches his nose. Dang. That's not good. Hope the hero wasn't killed like some of the others. Shinsu nods before flipping his phone back and continuing to scroll. Izuku goes back to watching the round before realizing it was over with Bakugu being the victor. He slightly sighs when he see the final round being Bakugu versus Todoroki. Maybe it's a good thing Todoroki hasn't used his fireside yet. There's no way Bakugu would settle if Todoroki had used them in one battle and then not theirs. Todoroki should go at his own pace. I wish, Izuku yawns midway, we could go home already. Shinsu nods, yeah, there isn't really a point in being here anymore. He rolls his eyes, his voice taking on a sarcastic tone. How inconsiderate of those villains to make it to where we have to stay and suffer through the rest of the sports festival despite losing already. So rude. Yep. At least there's only one match left before the award ceremony. Of course, it's Izuku looks at the screen for the results, Bakugu and Todoroki, so who knows how long that'll go. Izuku points out, leaning against his hand as he watches present Mike announce when the results and how soon the final round would take place. I think the only reason I would want to be in 1 over 1B would be because Aizawa sensei teaches it. Otherwise, Shinsu trails off, narrowing his eyes in a grimace. Izuku can't help but nod in agreement. The two sit there, Shinsu chilling on his phone while Izuku hums whatever random songs come to mind. Sometimes Shinsu will perk up recognizing the melody, and ask what song he's humming, maybe even commenting over the song if he actually does happen to have heard it. Eventually, the final battle starts, and both teens are watching it intensively. It's finally the last battle of the UA. High School Sports Festival. The top of the first years will be decided with this one match. The final, so to speak, 
The cameras pan first onto Todoroki as present Mike introduces him for the last time. His expression is calm and collected but there seems to be thought behind his eyes. From the hero course, Todoroki Shouto. Versus. Then they go on to the rabid blonde known as Bakugu. Also from the hero course, Bakugu Katsuki. True to the description, Bakugu has a huge sneer on his face. Present Mike dramatically pauses, letting anticipation build in those watching, before shouting, Now, start! Todoroki instantly leans down, pressing a hand to the ground and sending huge jagged walls of ice to cover Bakugu. Bakugu swiftly blasts chunks of ice away but it surrounds him, blocking him inside. Todoroki gets a blow in right away. Todoroki releases a puff of warm air, exhaling as he straightens his posture. Is he trying to avoid close combat with Bakugu? Has the winner been decided already? Shinsu breathes out in disbelief. Just what are they feeding those hero kids? Trauma probably. Everyone becomes alert when muffled explosions come from inside the confinement of ice, hearing the sound getting louder before finally the ice cracks and bursts forward, allowing Bakugu to get out like a mole coming from the ground. Todoroki jumps back to avoid any falling pieces of ice, getting into a position where he can easily defend himself. Bakugu uses his quirk to shoot himself forward. And Todoroki brings out a hand, getting ready to defend, but Bakugu stops his explosions last minute and snags a hand through the other's dual hair. Avoid Todoroki's right side. He shouts something, but Izuku cannot understand what, and throws Todoroki towards the outside of the boundary. Todoroki saves himself the loss by using his ice, sliding on it as he goes around, creating a huge wall as he goes. He avoids going out of bounds with a wall of ice. Looks like fun. Todoroki sends a spike at Bakugu, but Bakugu dodges, going under it, and races to attack Todoroki. He sets off an explosion once he gets close, but Todoroki grabs his arm, pushing it away with his left hand. Izuku leans in, not once looking away as he waits for Todoroki to decide whether to use his flames or not. It seems like Bakugu also hesitates slightly, and that gives Todoroki the upper hand, allowing him to throw Bakugu away. Bakugu lands, sliding into a crouch, while Todoroki does the same on the opposite side of the field. Bakugu comes to a stand, a dark scowl matched with a grin on his face as he brings an arm up, with the way he grabbed Todoroki's left side on purpose and times his explosions. He's been doing his research, Aizawa suddenly comments, actually doing his job. That kid's abilities shine every time he fights. Present Mike understands, I see. Todoroki's moving well too, but his attacks are too simple. He's lost his touch ever since the match with Shinsu. Izuku bites his bottom lip as Todoroki looks up, ice sticking to his right cheek. He's gonna get frostbite at this point. I know he might not be ready but, he stands, getting Shinsu's attention. But his purple-haired friend doesn't say anything, accepting the fact that Izuku has a bunch of things in his life that do not make sense to him. Izuku takes a small away from the table before making up his mind. He takes off, racing as fast as he can, thanking his luck that the stands for students were not far off from the cafeteria. He darts around other students, almost bumping into a few. He runs into a class section, not bothering to check what class, and goes down the stairs to the railing. Bakugu starts shouting at Todoroki, and Izuku can't name a time where he was more glad to hear what his former friend was saying than at this moment. Bastard, I'll show you what'll happen if you make a fool of me. I'll kill you. Izuku can't stop himself from cringing back at the crude words, but he forces himself to not thinking about the past, not right now. Todoroki looks up with wide eyes. I want an indisputable first place. I can't get that even if I beat scum that underestimates me. If you have no intention of winning, then don't stand in front of me. The blonde runs at his opponent, furious, while Todoroki stands in position. What are you standing here, damn it? Izuku instantly notices the ice quickly building on top of Todoroki's face and arm. Izuku's grip on the metal railing tighten anxiously, watching as Todoroki doesn't make a move to run or attack. Instead he seems to relax, almost like he's giving up. Izuku doesn't even realize what he's doing until after he's already yelled. Todoroki. Many people turn their heads towards him, but for once, he ignores them, focusing on the teen looking up at him, eyes wide in shock. Don't lose. Do your best. Todoroki tenses up, teeth gritting. Bakugu, still running, grins slightly while muttering something. He leaps into the air with the help of his quirk, heading straight for Todoroki. Todoroki seems to shake, but as Izuku leans closer over the railing he notices the ice evaporating as heat waves rise from the teen's body. Suddenly, with a great but hesitant flourish, flames erupt from Todoroki's left side, and Izuku can't help but grin in amazement, his eyes shining. Shouto. Izuku's grin slightly drops at the sound of Endeavor shouting. He shoots his sharpest glare despite knowing the hero wouldn't be able to see it. Have you finally accepted yourself? That's it. Good. The burly man walks down the stairs, his own flames burning brightly. Izuku wishes he had a bunch of extinguishers on hand. It all starts from here for you. With my blood, you will surpass me. 
you will fulfill my desire. Endeavor suddenly shouts encouragement, such a doting father, as Izuku brings his attention back to the younger Todoroki. He notices a bead of clear liquid fall down the right side of Todoroki's face, and he wonders if it's a tear or sweat. Bakugu, finally making it to Todoroki's side of the field shouts again, If you're gonna stand in front of me, then you should just concentrate on winning. Bakugu creates a vortex with himself in the center, while Todoroki brings his left arm out, beautiful flames rising from it. However, they abruptly die away, and Todoroki drops his arm, looking down. Bakugu keeps going. Howitzer. Impact. A rush of heated air is sent into the audience, and Izuku could feel stray curls being blown back. He added momentum and rotation to the huge blast he showed up in his fight with Kendu. He was like a human projectile. He could also hear ice breaking, and a giant cloud of dust and smoke covers the field, keeping it hidden. Izuku once again leans forward, squinting his eyes in hopes of seeing who won. It looks like Todoroki's flames weren't big enough, but the winner is. The cloud dissipates, expanding into the air and clearing, allowing Izuku to see Bakugu face down on the ground and Todoroki collapsed against his own ice, unconscious. Izuku gulps. Bakugu pushes himself up, trudging over to where Todoroki lays. Hey, he starts out before running. Hey, he grabs the collar of Todoroki's shirt, lifting him with one hand while the other was out. Stop screwing around. Didn't I tell you that there was no point, damn it, to get first place like this? Like this. Izuku's eyes widen with realization. Just how much has he changed since last year? He could feel himself shake slightly. He mumbles, how much have you changed without me? Midnight decided it was time to step in. Izuku watches as pink air surrounds Bakugu, making him fall forward, unconscious. Midnight raises an arm. Todoroki is out of bounds, which means Bakugu wins. Izuku steps back from the rail as those attending bursts into cheering. He turns and goes up the stairs, quickly getting out of the random class section. He walks all the way back to the cafeteria where Shinsu stands, waiting for him. Shinsu doesn't say anything, noticing Izuku's slightly shook-up demeanor. All he does is awkwardly pat him on the shoulder before mention. Present Mike said the award ceremony would start after they wake up and stuff, which apparently shouldn't be long. He also said all first years should go ahead and start heading to the field. Izuku nods, rubbing his face, exhaling. I am so done with today. Same, maybe we should summon that demon you were talking about that one time. You mean when you woke me up like three weeks ago? Izuku chuckles. I guess. Okay, bet. All of the first year events for this year's UA. Sports festival have been completed, and now, we will begin the award ceremony. Midnight raises a hand towards a huge screen. Cannons of confetti go off, and bits of colorful paper fall as the podium rises from the ground. Izuku deadpans when he sees Bakugu chained and muzzled thrashing around in first place. In second was Todoroki, calmly standing there with his arm wrapped in bandages, while Takoyami stood in thirds, his arms crossed as he watched Bakugu move wildly around. Midnight looks at the media vultures. In addition to Takoyami, there is also Ida in third place, but he left early for family reasons. Thank you for your understanding. Izuku sighs through his nose. He turns to Shinsu. I wonder if they realize how bad it looks with them chaining up a student like that. Shinsu rubs the bat of his neck, frowning. Really though, makes him seems like more like a criminal than a hero in training, but with how he's acting. Yeah, they weren't in the correct order of placements, but who would notice? Now, we will award the medals. Midnight once again brings out her arm. The presentation of the medals will, of course, be by this man. Izuku looks up before instantly looking back down at the sight of All Might's figure. I have brought the medals here. Our very own hero, All Might. It's quiet for a few seconds before Midnight claps her hands together in apology. I talked over you. Midnight grabs the three medals, sheepishly continuing. Now then, All Might, please present the medals, starting with third place. Izuku reluctantly watches as All Might gives Takoyami and Todoroki their medals and a hug. He does sigh, a little uncomfortable watching the hero trying to force the first place medal over Bakugu's head before settling with it hanging from his mouth. Is that really humane? All Might turns, well, they were the winners this time. But listen here, anyone here could have ended up on these podiums. It's just as you saw, competing improving each other, and climbing even further. The next generation of heroes is definitely sprouting. So I have just one more thing to say. All Might points a finger into the air, bring the other hand to his chest. Everyone, please say it with me. Ready go. Izuku watches as almost everyone lifts a fist into the air, shouting, plus ultra. Thanks for your hard work. He can't stop the snort that escapes. The crowds of people starting booing harmlessly, lightheartedly scolding All Might without really meaning it. Izuku rolls his shoulders back, sighing tiredly. He mindlessly listens to the rest of the spiel the heroes give until they finally start dismissing students to go back to the main building. 
He and Shinsu talk about random things, such as the weird thing Izuku has done to the amount of cats that have come up to Shinsu at his favorite cat cafe, all the way back to their class locker room, where they change back into their normal school uniforms. Then, the class of 1 degrees Celsius goes back to their classroom and wait for their homeroom teachers, present Mike's loud arrival. Great work, everyone, he shouts, slamming the door open. He saunters over to the podium, grinning excitedly. You all did amazing out there, especially Shinsu and Midoriya. You guys really showed 1 degrees Celsius isn't a class to mess with. Both Izuku and Shinsu stiffen with the attention thrown their way, awkwardly looking around the room, not knowing what to do. Thankfully, present Mike moves on to tell the class other information. You lucky listeners have no school tomorrow or the day after, so make sure to not show up. Sleep in and maybe take the time to finish those late English assignments. He jokingly eyes some students who smile or laugh sheepishly. Make sure you rest well and come back to school energized. Boo. He raises his arms into the air. Class dismissed. Students start to stir, standing from their desk. But present Mike abruptly points his fingers. Shinsu and Midoriya, please stay behind. A certain someone needs to speak with you. Izuku looks over to Shinsu, meeting his eyes. They both nod, using the weird type of telepathy that friends have. Probably Aizawa Sensei. Izuku ignores any inquiring glances he and Shinsu gained and instead makes sure his bag is in order, slowly rummaging through it to stall from getting up. Eventually, most of his classmates are gone, and he stands, along with Shinsu who noticed him getting up. They go up to present Mike, who is still at the podium, waiting for them. His grin seems to grow even more somehow. I just want to say that I'm super proud of the both of you. You really showed the world that there's potential everywhere, even in the general studies course, and I don't just mean with becoming a hero. The pro gives a knowing glance at Izuku. Now, we better not keep that grump waiting. Chop, chop, out of my classroom. He places a hand on each of their shoulder, guiding them towards the door. He quickly takes them down the hall into the teacher's lounge, where Aizawa is expecting them. They go inside. Well, Izuku and Shinsu do. Present Mike just greets Aizawa, throwing in a teasing joke in a sing-song voice. Someone's getting soft. Shut up and go away already. Present Mike laughs, moving his hand in a goodbye before shutting the door behind him. Aizawa waves his towards the couch. Sit. Izuku and Shinsu sit down, Shinsu already nervously bouncing his leg a bit, as anxious energy slightly creeps into Izuku. And Izuku can feel his stomach tightening into a small knot. You two did good today, besides your question from earlier, Midoriya. Oh, you know, Izuku smiles, just wanted to lighten the mood a bit. For myself, I was terrified. I don't understand why you made first place in the first round when you don't want to be a hero, Aizawa sighs, and Izuku freezes, smile dropping. Izuku shrugs, just got too into it, I guess. Aizawa only sighs again. I'll come back to you later. Shinsu, Sensei, you did well today. Getting to the second match of the third round shows that you have potential. And it will work in your favor as I try to get you transferred into the hero course. If this does work out, you will most likely end up in my troublesome class, seeing as how there is already one spot open. Aizawa grumbles to himself. Hopefully that will become two. Right. Shinsu nods in understanding. Also, the transfer will be slightly sudden, that is if it happens, and we will still meet up to train so you can catch up and work on any support items and costume ideas you have. Shinsu nods again. You can now leave. I still need to talk to the problem child sitting next to you. Shinsu peeks over at Izuku who smiles. This day just doesn't want to end, does it? Guess not for you. Good luck, Shinsu says, grabbing his bag and leaving the room, softly shutting the door. Let me guess what this is about. You still want me to become a hero. You're right, Aizawa answers, not bothering to hide his motive. I think you have potential, potential that you are going to waste by not trying. Izuku sighs, look, I did this all for Shinsu, not because I want to be a hero. Shinsu does, I don't. I'm not a little kid dreaming of becoming All Might anymore. You realize that if Shinsu gets in, he's not going to be able to spend a lot of time with you, with training and school getting in the way. From what I've heard from present Mike, you two are each other's only friends in that class. Now, Shinsu is going to get swept up by all the energetic students I have and easily become friends with them. But you, it wouldn't be the first time I've been alone, Aizawa Sensei. Izuku narrows his eyes. I don't get why you don't understand this, I can't become a hero. Even with a quirk, I'm not sure I'd be willing to work under a system that is so discriminatory and ungreedy. Then change it. The system is heavily flawed. And many have and are still trying to fix it, but it won't be easily done. It'd have to be completely reconstructed. And with you campaigning for it as pro, a lot would most likely be done. Like anyone would care what I'd have to say. Aizawa shakes his head. They'd care exactly what you would say. You've lived through discrimination. And no one is better to change it than someone who has experienced it. You, Izuku exhales heavily, leaning forward to rub his face before saying, And quirkless, I'd be at too bad of a disadvantage, one I can't ignore. 
He feels his eyes sting but he blinks it away. I don't want to be a hero. That dream is gone. I don't think it is. Aizawa meets his eyes. There's nothing crueler than letting a dream end midway. Izuku stands, snatching his old bag off of the ground. Thank you for the training and thank you for helping me get Shinzu through the sports festival. I think it's time I get home now. He nods and hastily walks to the door. Aizawa says nothing as he watches Izuku step out into the hallway, leaving the door open. Izuku can feel his eyes still smarting and he sniffles. I think it's time to go home now. That's been a day, that's for sure. Izuku looks down at the little girl who looks nervously up at him. She is holding onto the hem of his shirt, shyly glancing at him and then to the ground with golden eyes. She has short silver hair that goes past her chin, curling inward, and her skin is pale. She is dressed in a white shirt with a dark blue heart in the middle, and she wears a skirt that goes above her knees and a pair of shoes the same shade of blue. Izuku patiently waits for her to speak, drying his hands with a paper towel. He had just taken a five-minute break to use the unisex restroom and redo his hair. When he felt a small tug on his shirt, the girl takes a deep breath. Are you the detective who finds lost animals? The the one who found Hina's dog. I wouldn't go as far as to call myself a detective, Izuku smiles. But yeah, I try and find lost pets for people. Are you missing one? Yes, the girl exclaims, nodding her head before she realizes how loud she was. Her face turns red, a bright color on such a pale face. She drops her grip on Izuku's shirt and fiddles with her fingers instead. My my cat, a key, is my missing. He he, the last time I saw him wa was last thir Thursday. Her voice turns thick with worry, and her eyes become watery. It is obvious that Aki's disappearance is affecting her. Izuku crouches down so he can look her in the eyes, and he gives the best comforting expression he can. Hey, hey, it's okay. Is it okay if I lift you up to put you on the counter? You can calm down and clean yourself up. She nods, and Izuku realizes that he doesn't have her name. While bringing her into his arms and placing her down on the counter by the sinks, he asks her, First off, what's your name? Mine's Izuku. Mount Natsuki. She answers, rubbing her eyes. Nice to meet you, Natsuki. He tries to take on a light tone, one that he uses mostly on children, while getting a paper towel. You know, Aki isn't what you typically name a male cat. Natsuki giggles a bit, and takes the paper towel when Izuku hands it to her. We we thought he was a girl at first. She wipes her eyes, sniffing. I'm not sure why though, but I'm the one who named him. It's great name regardless. Now, I need some information about Aki, like what color is his fur, his size, if he's a long-haired cat or a short-haired one. Things like that. A picture would be great if you have one. Aki is an orange and white cat, and, um, his fur is long and fluffy. We've only had him for less than two years, since he was a kitten, but he's around the size of our other cat, Yuri. She's really heavy, and sometimes it's hard to pick her up. Natsuki looks to the side, thinking, before her face brightens. She reaches into the pocket of her skirt, pulling out a folded paper. I, I asked my mom if she could get me a paper version of a picture of Aki. I though thought that it might help you. She looks down, almost like she thought Izuku would belittle her for trying to help. Izuku grins. Smart girl, he praises, and Natsuki flourishes, a pink flush making its place on her face again. He takes the picture and unfolds it, allowing him to see the picture of an orange feline with a beautiful blonde tail. I'm gonna keep this if that's okay with you. She nods. Okay, I'll try to find a key for you. I can't promise that I will, but I do promise that I'll try all that I can. Natsuki looks visibly happy and full of relief, and she shoves her hand in her pocket again, bringing out a fist of coins. Izuku intervenes before she holds it out to him. Hey, don't worry about payment. It's on the house. She goes to protest but stops when she sees the look on his face. She nods, putting the money back into her pocket. Okay, Izuku helps the girl get down lifting her by her armpits and setting her onto the tiled floor. Now, how about you go back to your guardian? I'm sure they're getting worried by now. Natsuki nods, thank you. She scampers out of the restroom, most likely heading to where her guardian is. Izuku looks back down at the picture of Aki, making sure to commit the orange and white fur and amber eyes to memory. For some strange reason, he feels an urge to help Natsuki, one that is different than his past clients. He has been feeling off since the sports festival. Three days ago, and Aizawa's words keep coming to mind when he isn't busy, he had no idea why. He flips the picture around and finds a phone number, labeled Mom's. He huffs in amusement and impressment, folding up the picture to fit in his pocket, and repeats to himself, Smart girl. Hey, Izuku greets Shinsu, heading to his desk. Shinsu replies, tired eyes looking up from the papers on his desk for a quick second before returning, Yo. Izuku puts his old bag down and sits in his seat, brushing a slightly wet lock of green hair behind his ear. Rain claimed the week, from the day before, to now, on Thursday, and there is more to be expected tomorrow. It is almost like the grey sky is morning. As Shinsu finishes up his internship application for next week, 
Izuku checks out his schedule on his phone. Since his training with Aizawa is over, seeing as how the sports festival has passed, he made plans to continue his normal work shifts. He called in on Tuesday. And now the rest of his week, and the so many ones after it, were sealed, at least in his mind and calendar. He makes notes to ensure that he has time to search for Natsuki's cat. And eventually homeroom starts with present Mike striding inside with the bell. The green-haired teen puts away his phone and listens to the excited speech produced by the blonde pro keeping his class. Homeroom passes by, as does the classes after it. The day seems to go by in days. And Izuku believes that he hasn't retained any information that his teachers taught. He is stuck in his head with his thoughts, and he unusually keeps to himself, his sentences being short when Shinsu spoke to him. Shinsu quickly notices his distant behavior, and instead of bluntly asking what was on his mind, he decides to wait for Izuku to tell him himself, that is if he wanted to. He isn't going to push unless he felt he really needs to. Eventually, the rain in the school day ends, and Izuku looks around for Aki after changing out of his uniform. He looks in his usual locations, mostly alleyways and parks, but comes up completely empty. He goes back to his apartment and changes into his other uniform, heading into his work shift with still a cloudy mind. Again, Aizawa's word circulates, despite his mental protest that denies them obstinately. And the thought of Natsuki and Aki just won't leave. The topics alternate with each other, switching back and forth, back and forth. Unfortunately, the manager, Imezaki Ayamu, is supervising the evening shifts the rest of that week, so Izuku's muddled brain is not welcome. He does his best to not make it obvious that he is absent-minded. But there are a few times where Yamezaki has to scold him, such as when he accidentally burns some of the food or when he got an order wrong twice. A headache joins the party, and Izuku keeps hoping that he won't get a pay cut or worse. When his shift ends and the other guy comes in to replace him, he forces up the courage and motivation to head over to Yamezaki and have a chat with them. Yamezaki looks in his direction when they see him come over. Midoriya. Rough evening. Izuku sighs, eyes heavy. More like rough week. I'm sorry for all the stuff that happened today. I'm just really busy with school and... Yue. Right. I get it. They reassure, giving a polite smile before shortly dropping it. However, I afraid I can't let this slide. It's almost summer. And there are many applicants hoping to get a part-time job here. Shit. Izuku bites his lip. Brows knitting together in worry. Is. Is there anything I can do to make it up to you? I really need this job. Yamazaki stays quiet for a second, thinking, before their eyes take a glow. You do know how the building and the others around it are facing an internet issue that most likely won't be fixed until over a week from now, correct? Izuku nods, remembering how he was briefed by Akari. Next week just happens to be same week we need to send reports to another plus ultra food building in Hasu. I'll be willing to dismiss your minor mistakes if you hand deliver the paper documents by Tuesday, next week. I'll be willing to get you a note to give to the school for your absence if needed. I'll do it. Izuku holds back his sigh of relief, keeping it for after he leaves. Good. Imezaki nods. The papers should be finished by tomorrow. You should get them then. They then turn away, going back to their supervising, while Izuku sped walks out of the building. Once he could feel the fresh warm air, he lets out one of the hugest sighs of relief he's ever had. He lazily, but carefully, pulls the scrunchy Shinsu had given him out of his hair, and he rubs his eyes. He walks down the sidewalk, exhaustion weighing heavy on his shoulders. He makes his way to the station, where he arrives a bit early and waits a few minutes for his train to come. He decides to be selfish and flop down on one of the seats instead of standing, body slow and minds whirling slowing down. Every now and then, he pinches his arm and bounces his leg to keep from dozing off, not bothering to bring out his phone to entertain himself. Eventually, the train makes it to the station and he lethargically stands and gets off, making sure he has all his stuff on him. He walks out of the building and makes his way to his apartment, yawning multiple times on the way. Once he's there, he opens the door and kicks off his shoes, not bothering to leave them in a neat form. He's already pulling off his blue shirt by the time he's walking into his room, tossing it into his basket of dirty laundry. He grabs some clothing to sleep in from his closet and drawer, purposely choosing the ones that will comfort him the most. Then, he goes straight into his tiny bathroom to start the shower and let the water warm up a bit. By the time steam is rising from the constant stream, he's already fully undressed and getting in. At first, he just stands there, letting the warm water soothe his body into relaxation before he starts washing himself. When he brushes a hand against his hair, he feels the slightly greasy texture of it and quickly decides to wash it. After his washing routine, he finishes up his shower and turns off the water. He reaches outside of the shower to grab a towel and dries himself off. Once he's gotten the majority of moisture off his bare skin, he steps out onto the thin mat he has on the floor. He makes sure his body is completely dry before slipping on his pajamas. He places a smaller towel over his shoulder to make sure his dripping hair doesn't get his shirt wet. 
He grabs his comb and starts going through his slightly wavy locks, trying his best to gently detangle any knots in his hair without breakage. Unfortunately, there are green strands that end up in the teeth of the comb, but luckily it doesn't take long to finish up, even though his hair looks like a complete mess. He does all he can to make sure it doesn't actually become one. Soon, he's flopping onto his bed, crawling under his comforter. He curls up, feeling warm and clean, his hair in a neat and damp braid. He shuts his eyes and breathes. Izuku flips onto his right side with a frustrated sigh. He doesn't even want to look at time. Knowing that it's only getting closer and closer to his alarm, and keeping his eyes shut and controlling his breathing, using the 478 method, to relax his body is all he knows to do. He only has one more tea bag, which he wants to save for before he leaves for school, and even if he does want to drink it now, it would only energize him with the caffeine within it, not get him to sleep. With another sigh, he tries the other side again, pulling up his comforter to cover up to his shoulders. For a long moment, he lays there, trying to keep his mind clear and body relaxed, trying to fall asleep. However, sleep does not claim him, and all he feels is drained and bitter. His brain can't keep quiet for too long, and soon he's thinking without meaning to. Thoughts of past week come back to him. All the things he'd been lost in thought over today, the mental arguments he had with himself. He thought he had killed the dream, the hope of becoming a hero, but the indecisiveness proves that he is wrong. He doesn't know why it is so hard to want to become something else, to think more realistically. He hadn't felt this way ever since he moved in with his foster family. Ever since his mom died, ever since things in his life completely changed. He hates feeling this way again. Hates it. He hates how he knows there isn't a quick way to get rid of these feelings. And that they aren't going to be going away anytime soon. Izuku slides down in his chair, averting his eyes from Shinsu's empty desk. A background thought of, it's kinda weird not talking to someone, pass in his mind before he blows a stream of air through his mouth, lifting any stray hairs that fall in his face, and denies, actually, it's not. This friendship with Shinsu has me spoiled, gonna have to get used to being alone again. He ignores how his heart is a bit heavier than it was a minute before. He instead thinks about his trip on Wednesday, how tired he's most likely going to be as the rule of trips is to always be exhausted by the time someone gets back home. He's going to spend his day dealing with school, seeing as how he doesn't want to spend a sick day on going to Hasu instead of actually being sick or mentally dead, and then going on a long train ride to Hasu, on a school night, of course, and find the plus ultra food place that's there. Then, he delivers the documents that can't be sent through email as the internet is still down for some reason and then get to the train station again to get back to Musutafu. Thinking about it is almost giving him a headache. Almost. If he doesn't smoothly deliver everything and get back home without any obstacles or distractions, he might scream. Or cry. Or both. Probably both. Izuku takes a long sip of his water as he pulls up a GPS to find Hasu's plus ultra food restaurant, leaning against a railing. The sun, starting to set, casts at rays that are starting to die onto his back, as he purposely chose to face away to avoid getting blinded. He's still in his UA. Uniform, something he wished he had time to amend before leaving but there wasn't time to change before the train left, and his yellow backpack holds his school work and the documents he's here to deliver. With a groan, he narrows his eyes in annoyance as he reads the 30-minute mark on the screen. He's tempted to get another ride but he doesn't want to spend too much money on a fare or ticket, so he resigns to his fate of walking. He places his water bottle in his bag and starts his journey through the city, occasionally glancing down at his phone for directions. He takes multiple turns and crosses quite a few streets before finally making it to the restaurant, the building being sandwiched by two different stores. He quickly goes in and drops off the papers to one of the workers, who said they would give them to their manager, and leaves, the moon already being strung in the sky. He knows he received some looks of recognition he has throughout the whole week due to the sports festival, and he wishes they would stop. He is just glad people haven't tried to talk to him yet. He lets out a sigh as he makes his way down a street before startling as he hears a giant crash and explosion. A flood of people come rushing into his direction, everyone looking scared and panicked, and he can't stop himself from running forward to see what happened. He freezes in his tracks once he reaches past the corner of a building, eyes widening in shock. What the hell? He watches as the, the things throw pro heroes back, a large fire reaching to the sky and overtaking a bus. He quickly concludes that the bus was turned onto its side within the attack and erupted into flames. What is this? There are two things. Izuku doesn't even know what to call them, both with their brains exposed. They didn't look human, nor do they seem to just have a complicated mutant quirk as they both looked way too similar to be a coincidence. Manual, put out the fire. Right. Izuku's attention is drawn over to a hero shouting at another, a huge stream of water shooting from a forcefully broken fire hydrant. The hero hesitantly runs over to the source of water, looking over his shoulder and shouting, Why did you choose a time like this to go off somewhere, Tenya? Izuku's eyes widen. Right, internships. He probably had a hero student with him. 
He also thinks back to the article he had read over the weekend about Ingenium being the one who was attacked by Stain. And a random thought pops into his head. Could they have ran off too? Hey, you're in the way. Get back. Izuku stumbles back, stammering a hasty apology to the hero in front of him. She takes a defensive position in front of him, ready to protect him. We'll hold him back here. Follow the police's evacuation instructions. Rai right. He takes another few steps back, watching as the pros fight again the things, before finally turning and running off to where he came from. However, instead of continuing down the street he had walked down not too long ago, he goes does another, one he hasn't been through. He doesn't know why he is peering down every alleyway he runs past, straining his eyes and ears for any more strange sights or noises. His lungs start to ache, sweat beating on his face, and his bag annoying bouncing with every step he takes. Despite feel physical strain, he keeps running as fast as he can, and he still doesn't even know why he's even bothering to try and find a hero student who could possibly be trying to fight a murderer. Up, up, what a great sign. Izuku forces himself to speed up, his legs burning. He frantically looks through the openings of alleys before he stops. Finally seeing two dark figures, one on the ground and the other standing before it, holding something. The moonlight reflecting off the object bring the realization that it's a sword, and his heart stops. He digs his phone out of his pocket, already taking steps to the alley, and hastily pulls up the first contact he sees, sending them his location. No matter what you say, you are the criminal who hurt my brother. Hey, the figure, Stain halts his movement, stopping himself from bringing down his blade. Izuku swears his heart stops for a second time as the other looks at him. He brings on an air of faux bravery and makes his nerves steely. He grins, though it's horribly strained. Pretty sure this isn't legal, so you might want to not do that. It gets harder to keep the fake smile when he sees a puddle of blood stemming from the teenager on the ground. He can't tell where exactly he was stabbed, but that amount of blood on the ground can't come from a simple cut or scratch. Stain had already stabbed him. And now he's ready to go for the kill, except Izuku couldn't stop his damn feet from running and looking down a ton of alleys until he found them. He can only hope he'll make it out alive. There's no way he's going to escape this without getting hurt. This has nothing to do with you. Go away. The guy whose head is below Stain's boot shouts, and Izuku can't help but feel slightly irked. I'm going to say you're not in your right mind, because who the hell would tell someone to go away when they're about to be killed? Izuku grumbles while scowling. Catching in the corner of his eye as Stain studies his appearance. Yue, another fake hero. Izuku is quick to deny that, shaking his head as he walks forward, keeping his hands visible and non-threatening. Quite the opposite, I threw that dream away a long time ago. However, I'm still a law-abiding citizen who knows what's illegal and what's not. And as I said earlier, I'm pretty sure what you're doing is quite illegal, hero killer. I'm only doing what's right, Stain says, raising his chin a bit higher. He pins a glare on Izuku. And Izuku can't help but feel his heart stop. I don't kill needlessly, but try to get in my way and I will strike you down. Right, uh. All Izuku can think is to stall. Stall until whoever he texted would hopefully come to help to send help. Preferably the latter, seeing as how his only contacts are his co-workers and people his age. He also has Aizawa's contact. The only pro hero he has, but he deleted the short conversation they had so Izuku wouldn't think of what he said every time he went to text someone. Which means there's a low chance he chose him. Time to try and use his old rambling habit to use. I I just been wondering. Uh, about? Um, I don't have time for this. Stain scoffs, turning his head back to the teen on the ground. He gets ready to bring down his blade for the killing blow, and Izuku panics. Wait. Izuku shouts and holds up a hand, hastily taking a step forward. Ko could you tell me why exactly you're gonna kill him? He's not even a pro yet. He's already been influenced by those adults playing hero in costumes. There's no hope for him. Izuku shakes his head. And he wishes he had put his hair up when wavy strands hit his face. He's still learning, isn't he? There's still time. Don't you get it? I'm the one who's going to kill him for taking everything away from my brother. This doesn't have anything to do with you, so get away. Before you get killed, Izuku sends another glare at the male, his clenched fist shaking. If he had any sense of preservation, he would listen and take off in the direction he came from, follow the police's orders of evacuation, eventually get back on a train to Musutafu. And think, yeah, some kid my age died all alone in an alleyway. But who was I to try and fight the hero killer, Stain? I'm a weak quirkless nobody after all. No sense in dying for someone I don't know. However, from the moment he was born, he has never thought once that he has had even the smallest sense of preservation. All he focused on was becoming a hero like All Might. Your friend, I have no idea who the hell this guy is. Only that his brother is ingenium, came to save you. That's a great line, isn't? Stain sneers down at the guy that Izuku is now dubbing idiot number two. Obviously, he's idiot number one, but I have a duty to kill you. So, Stain looks over at Izuku, and a surge of fear erupts into Izuku's entire being. What will you do? Oh, you fucking asshole. 
You know there's nothing I can do that I wouldn't have already. Izuku gulps, shakily narrowing his eyes as he searches his brain for anything. Clearly, this stalling thing isn't working. He doesn't want to waste time talking to me. It's not like I can fight. Aizawa-sensei didn't have much time to teach me or Shinsu much. Damn it, damn it. What do I do? What do I do? He brings his hand to grip at his backpack straps, digging his short nail into the material before an idea come to him. It's a stupid idea, of course, but it's all he has. He nervously clears his throat. Can I, uh, take this off? I've been wearing it for a few hours now and it's starting to hurt my shoulders. Can't think while in pain, you know. Bad tolerance. He lets out a humorless chuckle. He doesn't get an answer. I'm just gonna. Izuku slips off the right side first. Something he is normally for him to do since his right side is more dominant for him. As he brings his left hand to pull off the left strap, he attempts to take a subtle step forward. He also grabs the strap his right hand, so he is using both, and he says a little prayer to someone or something, before tossing the bag at the man with the sword in hand and running forward. As expected, the man slices the bag in two with his blade before it can reach him. But Izuku keeps running until he is forcibly running into Stain's abdomen, pushing the other back with a grunt. Then Izuku feels an abrupt pain in his side and he loses mobility not even a full second later. Stain carelessly lets him fall to the ground, not noticing something in Izuku's clenched fist, and lets out an amused huff. Izuku tries to move his limbs but scowls when they won't budge. He can feel his side flare in pain, as well as his uniform start to wet with what he assumes is blood. There's also a burn sensation on his left hand where a long cut starting to bleed onto his sleeve and the knife he impulsively stole out of Stain's back pocket. People who are all talk are a dime a dozen. Stain strides away, presumably back over to idiot number two, not even giving Izuku in passing glance. But since you tried to help this fake despite not training to become a hero, you are worth letting live, even if you did get in way. Izuku tries to strain his eyes back, not being able to turn his head to look over and see what was happening. He wasn't even sure he wanted to watch, especially since he can't get up. There's no way idiot number two isn't going to die. Neither of them can move, and the hero that Izuku has finally noticed, slumped against the wall, can't move either. It seems like whoever Izuku texted isn't going to come, and he's going to life his life, knowing all he did was listen to another teenager get killed for his emotional decision. He growls, shouting, wait, damn it. He can hear Stain's footsteps halt, and idiot number two's breath gets caught in his throat. Stop it. Izuku lays there waiting, feeling like throwing up. When there's a sudden rise of temperature, as well as an orange light, Stain appears in his vision again, having jumped over him to most likely avoid the attack. Izuku hopes he doesn't get the idea to take him hostage anytime soon. One after another, Stain grumbles. There are a lot of people getting in my way today. Midoriya, you need to give more details in times like this. You made me late. Idiot number two incredulously says, Todoroki, you too. Todoroki. Izuku still can't look over but he feels a small sense of relief of hearing the boy he talked to at the sport festival. Then he realizes why the temperature's hot and the alleyway is lit up in orange. You're using your left side. It took me a few seconds to figure out what you meant since you sent just your location info. We haven't known each other long, but you don't seem to be one to send that for no reason. Todoroki states before the orange light and heat disappears, and Izuku sees a huge path of ice form on the ground beside him, making Stain jump up to keep away from it. Then, he's being lifted up by ice, and he can see in the corner of his eye the injured hero also rising up. You meant that you were in trouble and to call for help, right? Izuku hears footsteps again. And seeing how Stain is still in the air, it's most likely Todoroki running forward. Don't worry, the pros will also get here in a few minutes. There's another fiery attack. And Izuku goes sliding down the ramp of melting ice, shutting his eyes to avoid tearing up from how hot the flames are. He does his best to make sure he doesn't lose his stolen weapon despite not being able to move. He had flipped the knife when he snatched it and pushed it into his sleeve, which is why the stinging cut was there. His loose fist held the hilt. Soon, he's on the ground beside idiot number two and the hero. Since he went backwards, he can finally see what the hell is happening. Watching as Todoroki stands in front of them, wielding his fire. I won't let you kill these guys, hero killer. Izuku manages to lift his chin up slightly so he can talk. Todoroki, don't let this guy get a hold of any blood. I don't know how he controls his opponents with it, but it seems to always be some time after he injures someone. It doesn't take much either. He sucks blood to keep people from moving. Are you Loki trying to call him a vampire? Izuku exhales anxiously, grimacing from the pain in his side. That's why he uses blades. Huh, I can keep my distance. Just as Todoroki readies himself into position, a knife is thrown at him, cutting his cheek as he barely dodges it. You have good friends, Ingenium. Stain states as he jumps forward, swinging another knife at Todoroki. Todoroki produces a wall of ice to block the blade, taking a step back before looking up and seeing Stain's katana falling from above. Izuku's eyes widen as he watched Stain grab Todoroki's collar, 
pulling him forward to reach the cut he made on his cheek with his long tongue. However, Todoroki releases a bout of flames, making Stain jump back to avoid getting burned. Izuku watches as Todoroki continues to battle Stain, all while getting slightly frustrated that he still isn't able to get up yet. At least we can all assume that Stain needs to ingest blood orally for his quirk to have effect. How disgusting. Why are you two? Izuku looks over to his left at idiot number two as he starts to speak. Why? Please stop. Izuku releases another exhale, getting even more irritated. I've inherited my brother's name. I have to do it. That guy's mine. Todoroki interrupts while using his left side. Not even bothering to look back, you inherited it. That's strange. He crouches down, placing his right hand on the ground and creating large jagged pieces of ice, making Stain continuously jump upward to avoid them. The ingenium I saw before didn't have that look on his face though. You've got a lot going on behind the scenes in your family too, huh? As idiot number two's breath gets caught, Izuku winces in pain, having somehow jostled the wound in his side. He instinctively tries to bring a hand down to put pressure, obviously getting stopped by the paralyzation stain has them under, but his hands twitch a bit more than he expects them to, making him light up with hope. Slowly but surely, he is able to move his hands and arms, and he turns his body slowly, his ability to move finally restored but the gash in his side protesting. He does try to push himself up just yet, not wanting Stain to notice or to take Todoroki's attention off of the killer. He's the only one here who has nothing to do with the hero course. He's a citizen who has only a stolen knife and a bunch of his schoolwork cut in half. He's lucky that the paperwork he had to deliver wasn't still in there, though he isn't completely sure whether he'll be able to go to his next shift or be carried out of this alleyway in a body bag. He also isn't sure if the school will replace everything and hold on any deadlines, considering all his work is getting stepped on and ripped. That's just another headache though. That is, if he gets out of this alive and slightly traumatized, he tears a sleeve of his uniform to make a makeshift bandage, hastily wrapping it tightly around his injured hand, ignoring the signals of pain it brings, before taking the knife with a tight grip in his other hand. He looks at the blade, thinking for a moment, before tearing another, larger, piece of his sleeve so he can cover the sharpness and stuff it into his pocket while avoiding it going through his clothing and into his skin. Before he can put it to use, his attention is drawn back to fight again when the recognizable sound of ice breaking fills his ears. He looks back over in time to see Todoroki bring out his flames again, only for his left arm to get punctured by two throwing knives, making him lose focus and look down to swiftly access the damage. Izuku's eyes widen as he sees Stain getting closer, gracefully falling from the sky to pierce the hero still on the ground. Without thinking, he pushes himself up, ignoring the screaming coming from wound, and hastily takes aim. With a slight moment of hesitation, he throws the knife before running to the hero, only with the stupid thought of, wonder if they have Wi-Fi in the afterlife, running through his mind. He dives onto the hero before a sudden sensation on his neck makes him shout in agony. Midoriya, Izuku's vision goes dark, his body going numb with shock before he feels a slightly cold object press against his throat. He blinks but for some reason his vision is still spotted with black, and he feels himself let out a confused sound. He hates the way he feels like he's out of his body, and he attempts to remember what happened just a moment before. Ori, my dot 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 ya, can, here, Midoriya, HN, Izuku sucks in a breath before chokily crying out, fuck, can you hear me? Izuku opens his eyes, which he had screwed shut in pain, and looks up to see Todoroki releasing a large amount of flames, most likely to fend off Stain. The boy keeps peeking down at him, his mismatched eyes holding concern and anger. Izuku lets out a short affirmation, his body cold, and he can feel the effects of lightheadedness from blood loss. He can feel the burning hot sensation of blood dripping from his throat and feels a surge of panic rise before autopilot takes hold. He takes a shallow breath and notices the two throwing knives that were in Todoroki's arm on the ground. He slowly sounds out a word, not wanting to move his jaw, cauterize. Fortunately, Todoroki instantly understands what Izuku means, and his face takes on a look of alarm and dismay. You want me to cauterize your wound? I've never done that before, I. He takes another look at Izuku's newest wound. It's not too deep, actually shallow, but there's still a lot of blood. Izuku ignores Todoroki's analysis and weakly points down at one of the discarded knives. Todoroki stares at him before sighing deeply and snatching up one of them. Still using his flames and keeping an eye on the serial killer jumping up the walls, he places the blade as far as he can without burning his right hand. He waits as long as he can before cutting off his flames and creating a huge wall of ice, hoping to stall Stain for a few seconds while he takes care of the matter at hand. Todoroki nervously looks back down at Izuku, 
brows furrowed, before gently turning the other's head and muttering, I'm sorry, this is going to hurt. The pain sends Izuku's vision to white. His heartbeat pounding intensely in his ears, and he thinks he loses consciousness for a few seconds before the horrible feeling of burning on his skin returns with a vengeance. The sickening sizzling and smell of his own flesh being melded together makes him feel ill, but he swallows down the acidic bile rising from his stomach to tries to focus on regaining movement. Stain must have used his quirk again and paralyzed him after cutting his neck. He lets out a low groan before taking the deepest breaths he can. He still feels lightheaded maybe even worse, and all he wants to do is fall asleep. However, there was a battle going on right beside him, and he had to see it until he or it ends. Sucking in another breath, he yells, his quirk. It, it has a time limit. His voice is slightly weak but it carries throughout the alley. He shuts his eyes, taking another second to breathe before thinking aloud. It's probably not by order, consid, considering I was the, the last one. Blood type, maybe? Or the amount of people make it more, I mean, less, yeah, less effective. Or amount, I don't know. That's, he groans when another surge of pain runs through his body. That's all I can think of right now. Really hard to use brain right now. Blood type. Mine is B. I'm type A. Izuku finally realizes that he had been moved off the hero after hearing two different voices. Wow, when did that happen? That's wild, I thought. Thought though, uh, I was still on that that one guy. I think I've lost a bit too much blood. He deliriously giggles, bringing a hand to cover his mouth. I'm so stupid. Wait. He looks down at his hand, turning it around clenching and unclenching it with confused eyes. Oh, oh, I can move again. How? How long has it been? He places his hand back down and uses his arm to push himself up a bit, pausing with a groan when both the wound in his side and neck flare in disagreement. After a moment of breathing, he cautiously continues his task, his body slow and weak. He looks over to the fight between Todoroki and Stain, taking note of how Todoroki was slightly struggling, seeing as how Stain keeps trying to get close to said hero student or to the two paralyzed men on the ground. It would be easier if Todoroki didn't have to keep protecting them. I should try and drag them out of here, or at least more away. Izuku somehow stands on shaky legs, stumbling slightly. He moves over first to the pro hero, bending carefully down to grab the guy's arms. He starts pulling going backwards, grunting, sorry. This probably isn't the most comfortable trip or whatever, but I need to get you guys out of here so Todoroki can focus. He notices how the man's eyes widen before flickering to his neck. You got that because of me. I'm sorry, you. You two should run, leave me in that kid in white armor. It'd be better if you ran away. Fuck no. Izuku shakes his head but quickly stops when there are signals of pain. I, I might not be a hero or anything, but I can't just leave, knowing that there's a murderer here. Now, shut up unless you have something useful to say. Izuku drops the hero's arms, having dragged him closer to the entryway of the alley. He decides that's good enough for now, and steps around the man, making his way back to get idiot number two and consequently back over to the flashing fight. As he crouches down next to idiot number two, he instantly remembers how the teen's arm is already injured, and he groans quietly. He hastily tries to think of another way to carry him without making his wound worse. However, just as goes to grab him, idiot number two pleads, please stop. I'm, already, Todoroki, who is standing in front of them, hears him and shouts, if you want us to stop, then stand up. The only words I can say to you are. The half and half teen switches from his fire to his ice, creating huge pieces to block off stain, but the hero killer cuts through them. Look properly at what you want to be. He brings his arm back to use his flames again. While Izuku gives a short breathy chuckle, how inspirational. He goes to try and drag the fallen teen but can't stop himself from falling onto the ground. Black dots in his vision and his body feeble. Crap. He tries to get back up again but can't, his body quivering too badly. He brings a hand to his abdomen, pressing it against the wound with a curse. His hand gets covered in warm blood, in his blood, and he blearily decides to take a small break, sucking in and exhaling as many breaths as he can with his head spinning. He opens his eyes, not realizing he had them closed, and watches as Stain rushes at Todoroki, dodging and slicing any ice that comes in his path. No one's ever told you. You're too focused on your quirk. You're being careless. Izuku's eyes widen, his mouth opening to yell. As Stain is able to get close enough to run past Todoroki, his sword coming down quickly despite Todoroki's flames. Todoroki. Recipro. Burst. Izuku lets out a shock sound, not realizing that idiot number two had gotten up and was using his quirk to speed over and kick away Stain's blade before it cuts Todoroki. He watches as idiot number two kicks again, forcing Stain to jump back to avoid it. Holy shit. What the fuck are they feeding you guys? You got free. Todoroki turns to idiot number two. That quirk isn't as great as I thought. Idiot number two stays hunched over, almost as if he's bowing. Todoroki, Midoriya, this has nothing to do with you two and I apologize. He straightens his posture, eyes narrowed. 
That's why I can't allow you two to bleed more than this. Stain scoffs, the hand holding his broken katana bleeding. It's no use trying to be reformed for appearance's sake. A person's essence does not change so easily. You will never be anything but a fake who prioritizes his own selfish desires. The killer growl, crimson eyes wide and almost bloodshot. You are a cancer to society that warps the idea of heroes. His eyes narrow, sending a figurative dagger at idiot number two. Someone must set you straight. Izuku flips his body, getting on his knees as Todoroki steps forward. He is ready to crawl away if he has to so that the other two can focus on Stain and not him. You're an anachronistic fundamentalist. Ada, wow, Izuku finally gets idiot number two's name. Don't listen to the logic of a murderer. No, he's right. I have no right to call myself a hero. Izuku grimaces but doesn't disagree. Ada has brought three other people, who had nothing to do with his impulsive decision, into this, and every single person in this alley is injured, one way or another. The teen had only just now come around to realizing that Stain was not something he could deal with by himself. He should have focused on getting the pro hero out of here before doing anything else. However, Izuku cannot put the full blame on him. Ada let his emotions for his brother take over instead of thinking logically. He's just a teenager, and every teenager makes mistakes that they learn from. They just have to be given the chance to learn from them, one that Stain isn't willing to give. Even so, I cannot give in. Izuku watches as Ida's clenches his fist, blood dripping off of one of them from the stab wound on his arm. If I give in, then Ingenium will die. Out of the question, Stain goes forward, and Todoroki pushes Ida back with one hand, using the other to produce fire. The villain has shoved one of his katanas into the wall, perching on it momentarily to avoid the flames reaching up to him. Todoroki narrows his eyes. Something clearly changed just now. He's flustered. Izuku decides he has stayed on his knees for way too long and takes a quick before making an attempt to stand. He makes it on his feet, head spinning for a few seconds, and his frown deepens. There's way of escaping. Stain isn't leaving any openings for him to get away safely. He glares, mumbling, damn it. Todoroki switches between his sides. Ada standing behind him, and Izuku feeling like he's in the way, especially since he can't do anything. There's a glint of light that catches his attention. And he looks down to see the second knife that was in Todoroki's arm not too long ago, stained slightly in red. He quickly picks it up, deciding to stuff it in his pocket like he wanted to do with the last knife he stole. This one was smaller though, so he isn't as worried about it stabbing him. Todoroki, can you regulate temperature? Ada asks, and Izuku quickly realizes that the air going out of his engines has stopped. Something must have broke when he kicked Stain. I'm not used to it with my left yet. Why? Freeze my legs. Todoroki looks over to Ada, still wielding his quirk, without plugging up the exhausts. Suddenly, Stain pops up, throwing another knife at Todoroki, shouting, You're in the way. Before it can reach Todoroki, Ada shoves him out of the way, taking the knife into his arm. Stain throws another blade at him, you too. It lands into his arm, bringing him to the ground. Todoroki extinguishes his flames, looking down at Ida. Ida, just do it. Hurry. Izuku stumbles over and drops to his knees, watching in the corner of his eyes as Todoroki freezes most of Ida's engine before going back to fending off Stain. He gives a weak smile to Ida, I'll just… Yeah. He takes hold of the hilt of the knife, places a hand carefully on part of Ida's arm, and braces himself before pulling it out, cringing at the feeling. He quickly backs up letting Ada stand and power up his quirk. Recipro. Extend. Izuku's eyes barely keep track of Ida as the teen shouts and jumps into the air. He does notice how he goes straight up to Stain, and with a half-baked plan, he pulls out the knife and runs a bit over to the side before taking aim and throwing the knife as hard as he can, dearly hoping he doesn't hit Ida. He watches with bated breath as Ida goes further up the wall, the knife also flying through the air. The knife gets there first somehow and slices Stain's cheek, making him look to the side with his eyes to see if there was an opponent. That slightly second of lost focus allows Ida smashes his knee into Stain's abdomen. Both Stain and Ida start to fall before Stain regains his senses and grabs his sword that falls with him, swiftly swinging at it. Fortunately, it only cuts strands of hair, and Ida yells with conviction, I will defeat you. This time, you, as a criminal, keep after him. Todoroki shouts, his flames taking height as Ida swinging his leg into Stain again. And I, as a hero... Todoroki's flames take to Stain before dying, leaving the serial killer with slight burns on his head. Todoroki uses his ice to catch Ida, bringing him back down, while Stain lands on a ledge, dangling limply. Ida lets out a groan as his head hits ice but quickly sits up as Todoroki warns, Stand up. He's still. Izuku stares at Stain's limp body with wide eyes, his heart pounding in his chest, before he lets out a long breath. He shuffles over to Todoroki and Ida, not taking his eyes off of Stain. Hey, he's probably knocked out after all that. Right. He scrunches up his nose, surely. Then, Todoroki lets out any air he was holding. Let's restrain him and get out to the street. 
Is there anything to tie him up with? Izuku rubs the back of his head, pulling back his hair. Pretty sure all my stuff is destroyed, so I got nothing except a feeling that I'm gonna have to use a lot of spending money on another bag. He sighs. Anyway, you should take all his weapons off of him. Just in case, you know. Good idea, Todoroki nods. He cautiously uses his quirk to bring the villain down, waiting a moment for any movement, before going forward and gathering any weapons that the man has on him still. Ida goes to pick up the weapons that lay on the ground, placing them beside the ones Todoroki discovers. Izuku doesn't bother to stand anymore and sits on the ground, letting out a huge sigh before groaning in pain. I really hope I don't get in trouble for getting involved with this. He looks down, grabbing the bottom of his shirt and lifting to assess the damage in his side. The wound isn't too deep, not to a life-threatening level, but it was still bleeding and screaming in pain. He might need stitches. I'm not even in the hero course, so this could be really bad. He suddenly hears footsteps get closer, and he quickly looks up to see the pro hero walking over. Oh, you can move. Yeah. The pro nods, smiling down at the team. I'm okay now. Are you? Uh. Izuku blinks, his vision starting to spin. I don't think things are supposed to spin like this, are they? Wait, who are you again? Soon, Izuku is on Native's back, the pro carrying him out of the alley while Todoroki ties stain with some rope he found in the dumpster. He lets out a sigh, slumping against the man's back. Thank you. That's my line, Native says, slightly sheepish. He carries Izuku, Ida and Todoroki following behind, before apologizing to the whole group of boys. I'm sorry, even though I'm a pro, I was just in the way. Izuku exhaustedly denies his statement. There wasn't anything you could do, at least not one-on-one -on -one with Stain's quirk. Asshole's too strong. Todoroki also adds on. Fighting three-on-one -on -one with the guy making mistakes himself, we still barely won. He was probably flustered and forgot about Midoriya's recovery time. I barely did anything. Izuku shakes his head. If anything, I was mostly in the way. I couldn't find a time to move away so you didn't have to focus on keeping me alive. He wouldn't have been distracted enough to let Ida complete his last reciproburst without you aiming that knife at him. Todoroki quickly contradicts. If Ida couldn't have done that, I doubt we'd be done fighting by now. Before Izuku can protest, Native stops at the end of the alleyway, turning to the two teens. Now, let's quickly get him to the police. It's around here. Endeavor told us there was a request for help here, but five heroes stop in front of the group, all looking confused as they take in the injured teenagers and hero. Children, those injuries look serious. And, one of them finally takes notice of the villain Todoroki has tied up on a leash. He hey, this is. Don't tell me. It's the hero killer. What? Call the police too. One of the heroes step away, phone in hand, calling the police most likely. Izuku motions for Native to set him down, as he notices another hero eyeing him. A hero in a yellow suit walks over to him and the other students, asking, Can you walk? Uh, Izuku has to stop himself from stumbling. Maybe. The guy stares at him for a few seconds before looking to Todoroki. And you. I only received minor injuries, but Midoriya has a wound on his neck, and it is. Todoroki trails off. The ambulance will be here soon. Until then. You too. Izuku and Todoroki turn back, finding Ida standing behind them with an ashamed expression. Suddenly, he bows. You were injured because of me. I am truly sorry. Izuku breathes in through his nose, giving the other teen the attention he needs. I couldn't see anything. Through my anger, Ada's voice is choked, and Izuku suspects he has tears in his eyes. His own eyes soften, a small smile making the corners of his lips rise. Todoroki however acts as indifferent as he almost always is. Pull yourself together. You're the class rep, right? Izuku has to hold back a surprised laugh, while Ida wipes his eyes with his arm, sniffing quietly. Yeah, hey. Todoroki holds out a phone, a few cracks running through the screen. Is this yours, Midoriya? Oh, wow, Izuku's eyes widen as he takes the damaged phone, looking it over. I thought this died with the rest of my stuff. He curiously presses the home button, grinning as the screen lights up. He freezes when he sees the time. It, that fight wasn't like an hour long. He blanches. What the actual hell? I, I mean it makes sense that it was short, but still. He sighs, closing his tired eyes and turning off his phone, ignoring the few missed messages most likely from Shinsu or his co-workers. He just wants to go home. Get down. What now? Everyone turns to the person who shouted, confused and on alert, before one turns back and looks up. A villain, Izuku grunts, dazedly watching as he goes into the air, taking a few seconds before pain in his sides registers, bringing him out of it. Midoriya. He lets out a shout, feeling talons dig into his injury. He turns his head, ignoring the wound there and the flying strands of hair that go to block his vision, and sees pale-colored wings. His mind is instantly reminding him of his childhood, specifically when he would follow Bakugou and his friends around. Tsubasa. The thing lets out a shriek as it suddenly stops moving, its wings ceasing at movement and its body sinking down. 
Izuku lets out a gasp as he sees a dark figure swiftly running from the small crowd, piercing red eyes seeming to shine dangerously. This society overgrown with fake heroes. Izuku's breath gets caught in his throat as he realizes the figure is stained, freed from his binding, holding a knife and swinging it, and the criminals who wave their power around idly. Before Izuku can think, the thing abruptly crashes the ground, sliding with the impact, creating a dust cloud that forces him to squeeze his eyes shut. Should all be purged. Izuku opens his eyes as soon as he thinks the cloud has cleared, moving to sit up but something keeps himself from doing so. He quickly becomes aware that it's Stain's hand, and he keeps his eyes on where Stain crouches on top of his catch. Stain's eyes don't even seem to have pupils or irises anymore. Izuku can only see white sclera as Stain grins wildly, spit dribbling from his mouth. This is all. He pulls his knife out, blood following due to the fast force, to create a more just society. He saved the boy. Idiot. He took a hostage. He killed someone with no hesitation. Anyway, get ready to fight for now. There are loud footsteps. Why are you all standing around in a group? The villain should have escaped this way. A new person is here, and from their voice, Izuku believes it's Endeavor. He doesn't think this will go well, not with Stain here. He flails his limbs a bit, struggling to get off the ground. He can feel beads of sweat dripping off his face, as well as warmth spreading from his sides, which he quickly deduces to be blood. How are things on your end? Things got a little rough. Endeavor answers and then pauses. But don't tell me that man is. Wet. Izuku sucks in a shallow breath, Stain holding it weight on top of him making it hard to breathe. Go. He just wants to go home. Is that too much to ask? Take a long, hot shower, maybe actually cook something for once, before dropping onto his bed and possibly skipping tomorrow or the rest of the week. It's called self-care, thank you. Izuku has to suppress a shiver from running down his spine when Stain utters with a hoarse voice, Endeavor. He can hear Endeavor shout, Hero Killer, and he really hopes that the number two hero won't burn him alive. That doesn't sound fun at all. His eyes widen when he catches a glimpse of Stain's actual face. The cloth that was tied around it giving away and falling to the ground as the man stands up, a crazed look in his red eyes. He can't take his eyes off him even though he wants to look away. Blood and spit drip from his face, it's scrunching up in deadly glare. His eyes are wide open. And the feature, or rather lack of, that catches Izuku's attention the most is that he doesn't have a nose. You fake. Izuku's entire being turns into ice, freezing him into place. He can't breathe, swallow, move, or even think. All he can feel is intense, paralyzing fear. I must make things right. He can barely see from his position, but Stain takes a step forward, towards the group of people watching, towards and never. Someone must be dyed in blood. This amount of dread, alarm, and apprehension is something Izuku has never felt before. There have been multiple occasions where he's been scared and, or anxious, but never to this degree. He never wants to feel this amount ever again. I must take back what it means to be a hero. He can't even flinch back when Stain stomps his foot in place, shouting to anyone listening daring to those who call themselves heroes. Come, try and get me, you fakes. The only one I'll let kill me is the true hero. Oh might. The feeling abruptly ceases when the sound of a blade hits the pavement. And Izuku, trembling, realizes that Stain's declarations to the world have stopped, his whole entire body seeming to be stuck in place. Haze. Endeavor lets out a small breath, stating, he's unconscious. It takes several seconds until Izuku can feel like he can breathe again. Ah, thank you. A shock blanket is wrapped around his shoulders as Izuku is helped over to one of the ambulances, and he pulls his closer, still shaking from the even before. The EMTs had gathered up everyone who is injured and provided medical care to what they can help with outside of a hospital. They'll take those injured to the hospital in a few minutes after they ensure they have everyone they need to take, as well as to swiftly decide who's going in which ambulance since only two have arrived. The hospital is currently stretched thin on how many they can send due to the other attacks in the city, as well as the amount of people who have gotten hurt or need a checkup from smoke inhalation. Stain is going in his own, seeing as apparently he has broken ribs, shackled tightly and clothing searched thoroughly more than once, with native tagging along since the other one is already pushing it with all three UA. Students, Izuku somehow has it a beat in the amount of injuries, but he won't admit it, ignoring Todoroki's stare and it is pushing to lay down and rest. He pulls out his phone, unlocks it, and goes to his conversation with Shinsu. Without reading any of the past messages, he goes to the photo option and brings his arm out, putting the camera in selfie mode. He can't stop the grimace when he sees his face. There's a bandage on his face from a cut he didn't know he had, as well as one over his throat, and his skin is lighter than usual, his Gucci eye bags looking a little darker. His hair is a frizzy mess, one he can't be bothered to fix right now, and it's pretty obvious that something happened, especially since there's quite a bit of blood on the collar of his white button-up shirt and grey blazer. He doesn't even want to think about how much it's going to cost to get another one. Hopefully, he will be able to play some pity points and get some stuff replaced for free. 
He takes the picture, throwing up a peace sign with his bandaged hand and a huge sarcastic grin, and sending it with, I might have done something stupid. With a deep sigh, he thinks back to his week, despite it only being halfway through, and wonders how it go to this point. When he can't find an answer then, he goes to the week before, going through his days until he finds the constant within it. God damn it, Aizawa sensei. He goes to his contacts and presses on one, choosing the call option. He puts the phone to his ear, listening to the dialing tone until it stops, alerting Izuku that the person has picked up. Problem child. I. Izuku takes a deep breath before relenting. Fuck it, I think I want to be a hero. And in the distance, he swears he can see a fluffy blonde tail, swatting the air gracefully as if nothing happened, as if Izuku's life didn't just change right then and there. 